Alrighty. Are we live? Uh, wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. But, ladies and gentlemen, we got big old Jerome Powell today uh, before Congress, about 30 minutes after the bell. And we're starting like a minute early because in about like 10 seconds or so, uh, I believe you are about to get Jerome Powell's written statement. So we're going to get a lot of that. There wasn't too much overseas, a lot of back and forth. I think China wasn't too hot. And uh, we're going to see, oh, whoa, whoa, no, that's ECB. I'm waiting for it. But right now it's all about Powell. A lot of people are expecting a lot of nothing, but doesn't mean that Powell does not hold uh, the key in his hands. I mean, the main point here is simply you have a lot of data following Powell. So most people are expecting that is going to do all of the signaling. However, Powell before Congress, it always has the opportunity to move thing. So Chad, it's going to be a wild one. I'm sure it's going to be exciting. It should take about two and a half hours uh, from about 10 a.m., 30 minutes after the bell. We do have a couple of data sets, uh, mortgage applications, and uh, I know that's tomorrow, wholesale inventories and consumer credit today. But other than that, it's going to be all about PAL, all about the levels we've been at, and can we continue four days of upside in a row? Chatadonia, find out on the next episode. But good morning, uh Oh, good morning. Is that written statement out? I don't know. Market moving like the written statement out, man. Oh, 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 oh. Hershey plant adds to Reese. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Oh, man. But good morning, baby. What's up, Lateral? What's up, Tim Whitman? Good morning, Dan Kingsley, Matthew Warman, Samuel K. Good morning, Danny. You ready to play, Danny? Good morning, baby. Good morning, Chattadonia. Mr. Malone, Martin Skelly, Wesley O'Neill. Good morning, baby. Gunner, Vincent Estrella, J. Max, Kurt McGirt, Lost One, Laker, J. I. Z. Destroyer, Shane McBride, Doug Forsett, Shane McBride again. There's always beautiful. Good morning. What's up, Data Junkie? J. Y'all, you ready to go, baby? Good morning. YouTube strong in the game. J. Samuels, he ready to play. Mr. Davila, he's bright and early. He's ahead of Powell. Oh, Lori, good morning. Rick's accountant, Shy, Riley, Mac, Holenberg, Nate McAllister, Mopar Maniac. Oh, good morning, man. What's up, Tyler Daly? What's up, man? What's up, Sunil? What's up, Sosa? Cap, how you living, man? It's a bright, it's a good morning to have a good morning. That's what I heard. That's what some guy told me before. Christopher. Oh, Johan Zande. Battleboard, K. Vandy, Adel, Inverse, King, Wookie, good morning. What's up, Hailstone? What's up, Payday Devo, Triple Three? Good morning, Mother Liquor, BDA, Cookie Monster, Louise. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. I hope so, man. I hope you got the love in your hearts. I hope you're ready for excitement. I mean, these next three weeks ain't going to disappoint. And we got it, man. We got it. We're ready to go. So good morning, Chatadonia. If I missed your name, I apologize. The Chad gets very, very hyped on Powell Day. So I hope you could understand. Oh, but at least we're here. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for this, uh, what's it called? This pre-written statement out here, too. So we'll give him a little bit of time. Uh, but you did get a little bit of movement as if it did come out. But we will find out in the meantime. Uh, let us get into the news. Are you ready, Chad? Uh, Jerome Powell's testimony will be scoured for views on the economic outlook, specifically inflation, wage pressure, and unemployment, as well as any clues on the Fed's rate path. Any dovishness may spark aggressive short covering and short-dated treasuries. The RBA delivered a dovish rate hike today of 25 basis points to 3.6 while signaling a pause in their 10-month tightening cycle that prompted a sell-off in the Aussie. U.S. futures, all oh, payday devil. Good morning, baby. U.S. futures ticked up as investors avoided large bets before Powell's testimony and Friday's job report, the 10-year yield remained below 4% and a dollar gauge uh, edged higher. WTI held near $80 a barrel while gold nudged lower. Uh, Joe Biden's budget will propose hiking payroll taxes on Americans making over 400000 per year and giving the government new power to negotiate drug prices to extend solvency of a key Medicare program for another quarter century. The budget to be released Thursday also proposes eliminating a loophole business owners and higher earners can exploit to avoid additional taxes. 
Uh, banks and broker dealers will add headcount and equities in electronic trading roles, uh, bucking the trend in other Wall Street businesses. More than half of the U.S. sell side firms plan to expand equity, electronic desk coverage over 18 months. A survey of 25 firms by Coalition Greenwich shows uh, they almost 30 percent aim to add headcount and execution and analytics consulting in a roughly quarter in algorithmic sales. Uh, Meta will lay off thousands of employees this week. People familiar said the move is driven by financial targets and is on top of 11,000 jobs slashed in November. The plan is being finalized before Mark Zuckerberg goes on parental leave for his third child, which may be imminent. Morgan Stanley's Michael Wilson still says he sees 20% downside on some big tech stocks and meme stocks without specifying which ones. <coughs> The 60-40 comeback uh, proved to be short-lived as stocks and box, uh, bonds are moving in lockstep. Mixed portfolios have been hit by the shift on Fed rates of a stubbornly high inflation. Until we get a sense of disinflationary pressure or evidence of a recession, I don't think you will see a meaningful divergence, said Brandywine's Jack McIntyre. Uh, traders are piling into SOFR options at a record clip as they clamor to hedge against uncertain Fed rate path. February saw the single largest month-on-month -month gain in open interest with inflows topping 13 million contracts. The CME said activity is also on the rise and exchanges prepare to convert euro dollar futures and option contracts to corresponding SOFR contracts on April 14th. Uh, hedging tactics that seem prudent during market mayhem may end up making things worse. That's a finding by ex-AQR quaint Ronnie Israelov, uh, who made waves with research arguing that cash is better stock hedging than buying puts. There are many flavors of protection, he said, stressing there's no panchea for all types of drawdowns. I feel my guy. I feel him. I feel him. Crypto, the risk of creating an easier way for retail investors to invest in crypto are at the heart of a court fight today between Grayscale and the SEC in June. The, regula the, regulator, uh, the regulator rejected Grayscale's plan to convert 14 billion Bitcoin into an ETF, saying crypto markets are too ripe for fraud and manipulation. Grayscale is asking an appeals court to overturn it, calling in an arbitrary decision. Uh, junior debt issued by banks, normally one of the riskiest types of fixed income in the U.S. and Europe, has become a haven to some investors amid a long inflation battle. Preferred securities issued predominantly by U.S. banks have returned 5.2% this year, while European banks' own flavor of deeply junior debt is 2.8, according to ICE Bank of America indexes. 10 a.m. Jerome Powell before Senate. 10 a.m. January wholesale inventories. 1 p.m. 40 billion of three-year notes. 3 p.m. January consumer credit. And then RBC Global Financial Institution Conference in New York. Earnings include uh, CrowdStrike and Dick Sporting Goods and CLTD. Uh, the prospect of a U.S. default isn't worrying markets and economists shrug off the risk of lawmakers failing to make a deal. But the X date, the date the U.S. won't be able to pay all of its bills, is just months away. The politics are shaping up to be more perilous than usual. It'll be an extraordinary and most acrimonious event this year, said Brandywine's Tracy Chen. Uh, the U.S. is moving closer to restricting TikTok access with Senior Intelligence Committee Chairman Mark Warner set to unveil a bail today. People familiar said it wouldn't pinpoint the company by name, but it would give the U.S. power to ban or prohibit foreign technologies or companies when necessary. Uh, the government is mulling more uh, to move or revive the practice of detaining migrant families who cross the border illegally. Officials fear an influx in May with the end of Title 42. Trudeau orders review of alleged Chinese election interference. U.S. payrolls have beaten 10 straight months. What's next? Uh, that's one of the largest records. Uh, Euro area consumer expectations for inflation in the next year dipped to 4.9 in January from 5% in December. According to monthly ECB survey, the view over the three years dropped to 2.5 from 3. ECB Paulo de Coast said Spain's core inflation will probably stay quick in the short term. Strikes across France disrupted transportation and blocked fuel deliveries for Total and Exxon refineries. LNG import terminals were also halted. Polls suggest still strong opposition to Emmanuel Macron's plan to raise the minimum retirement age. Uh, the Bank of England, Catherine Mann, said the pound may weaken further as the Fed and ECB are set to raise rates. There's more to go on the country's weakness that would feed through to inflation, Mann said. The terminal rate is still beyond forecast of horizon. Germany factory orders surprised with the 1% increase in January compared with predictions of a 0.7 drop. Capital goods, including vehicle engines and aircraft, were behind the jump. South Africa Central Bank adds more selling pressure on bonds. Uh, Slovak Prime Minister quits his party ahead of early elections. China exports fell 6.8% year-on-year in dollar terms in January and February. Growth in Japan's labor cash earnings slowed to 0.8 in January from a revised 4.1. Real wages slid 4.1. Taiwan's exports dropped for a six-month in February, declining 17% year-on-year. Philippines' February core inflation hit the fastest in 24 years, while Thailand's, Thailand's headline rate cooled to 38 
Indonesia's central bank saw a stronger take up for their new foreign exchange long term deposit facility, uh, received 21 million uh, up almost from 15 million it got during uh, last week's inaugural offer. China's foreign minister, Quinn Yang, uh, warned that the soaring U.S. China tensions. Is that pre written statement? No, we still haven't got that one. But up, 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 up. Uh, that the uh, U.S.-China tensions risk blowing past any guardrails in the relationship. Washington approach towards Beijing is a reckless gamble with the stakes being the fundamental interest of the two people and even the future of humanity. China's oil imports fell 1.3 year on year in January and February period that included the Lunar New Year. Uh, but purchases of oil products and soybeans double registered double digit increases and shipments of iron ore jumped 7.3. In the gold market, China boosted their reserves for a fourth month in February, adding 25 tons and taking in total, uh, buying over that more than 100 tons. A gas cartel, the UAE EU plans to create a buyer's group to start making joint purchases in April to limit energy costs. In other news, Morgan Stanley cut estimates for European gas now by more than a third to the equivalent of $37 megawatt per hour. Uh, WTI traded below $80 a barrel. Despite, despite concerns for a tight market, high supplies and lower demand may hold for now, City said. Precious and base metals were in the red. JP Morgan boosted their 2023 copper forecast by 10% with a primary focus on China demand recovery. Uh, BPEA EQT will merge its two Hong Kong-based services, Tricor and Vistra, in a deal valuing the company at $6.5 billion. Deutsche Bond selected Goldman and Morgan Stanley to advise on the potential sale of DB Schenker Logistics Unit. John Wood Group uh, rebuffed a fourth cash proposal from Apollo, saying it undervalued the firm uh, the 237p price-a-share approach equivalent to $1.64 billion. Uh, Bank of America, Brian Monahan, warned Wall Street has work to do before using popular technology such as ChatGBT, saying the inaccuracy and lack of data responses make the popular text generator a challenge. He also expects the Fed to raise rates to 5.2 to 5.5 and remain there for a long time. Nissan's credit rating was cut a not notch to junk uh, by the S&P. Guatin Adami and his family prepaid $900 million of borrowings backed by shares as the conglomerate seeks to pair all share back loans by the end of March. Uh, Castler Rig CEO to retire. Salesforce launches 250 million fund for generative AI startups. JP Morgan expects another busy year of deal making in India. Deutsche Bank uh, picks Goldman and Morgan Stanley for Schenker sale. JP Morgan names uh, Park names Park as Asia Pacific vice chairman. Walgreens to dispense MIFs prone where legally permissible, and Walgreens vows to sell abortion pills everywhere it legally can. Uh, Elon Musk will be the subject of a new documentary from Alex Gibney, the Oscar-winning director of Going Clear Scientology and the Prison of Belief. The Variety reported Gibney described the project already months into production as a definitive and unvarnished examination of Musk. Arnold Schwarzenegger waded into the fight against anti-Semitism, uh, calling those who preju with prejudice losers who will die miserably. In a YouTube video, he referenced his own father's Nazi past, telling view viewers, uh, hate is easy path. It's easier to make excuses that the Jewish people conspire to hold you back than it is to admit that you just needed to work harder. Arnold! Uh, the next victim of tech schools may be B schools. In recent years, the U.S. tech sector has absorbed about a fifth of the newly minted MBAs, more than any other industry consulting, and top schools of at least one leading tech company uh, typically rank among the largest individual recruiters. The inaugural tech of Japan's next generation rocket was aborted after takeoff, and the Aerospace Exploration Agency ordered it to self destruct and plunge into the ocean. It scrapped the mission after the H 3 rocket's second stage engine failed to ignite, a blow to Japan's hopes of rivaling SpaceX. Uh, blame game Coinbase denied responsibility for losses that stem from a security breach with an account holder that said they lost $96,000. Jared Ferguson of Staten Island claimed a lawsuit. He got a text from his mobile carrier describing a SIM change that he had in Maine when he restored service with a new card. Almost his entire life savings were gone from his Coinbase account. He said Coinbase's security procedure failed to flag obviously fraudulent and unauthorized transactions. And then on this day in history... The NASA Hubble snapped the first ever surface photos of Pluto in 1996. Astronomers could last directly see details of the dwarf planet for the first time since its discovery by American astronomer Clyde Tombaugh in 1930. The New Horizons spacecraft returned for the first close-up color image from its historic flyby in 2015. Wow, Hubble telescope today, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, Mannheim Index. Oh, 4.3 again? Oh, that's not good. That's not good, but it's Hubble Telescope Day. I think we could take that. I think we could take that. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. But Chattadonia.
that is your early news. Uh, we're still waiting on Powell. Have we gotten any of those pre-written statements? Did I miss them? I've been on the lookout for that. I guess we haven't, so that's good for now. Good for now, and it's arriving shortly. Uh, we got a little bit of time here still, too, so uh, let's go over some of the pre-market movers. Uh, Google rises 0.2 on course to extend its gains from seventh consecutive session, the longest winning streak since October 2019. Bluebird rises 1.8 after Bear initiated coverage with a recommendation of outperform. Uh, Kara Therapeutics drops 27% after the biotech company reported fourth quarter revenue that missed estimates and a wider than expected loss per share. Grinder shares are down 11% after the online dating company reported fourth quarter results and gave an outlook uh, for growth margin and EBITDA. Uh, Guideware Software, GWRE, analysts are positive on the company and reported second quarter revenue that beat expectation. Shares are up 2%. Key Corp falls 3% after the bank said that their 2023 net interest income is rising between 1% and 4%, less than their prior guidance of 6 to 9 uh, Meta Platforms rose 2.4 after Bloomberg reports that the owner of Facebook and Instagram is planning a fresh round of layoffs that will cut thousands of employees as soon as this week. Uh, Mineralis Therapeutics, MLYS, uh, shares look to set a gain after the U.S. biopharm company extended a slew of new positive ratings. Uh, the stock has risen 19% since it has IPO'd on March, March 10th? What do you mean? It's not even March 10th. Is that the last year? Uh, Nutrinix shares slumped 7% with analysts saying the delay of their 10Q filing amid an investigation into the use of third-party evaluation software has eclipsed the cloud-based providers' of strong preliminary results. Uh, Squarespace SQSP shares jumped 13% after the web hosting company reported fourth quarter results and revenue that beat the outlook for 2023. Thread up TDUP shares are up 17% after the clothing exchange and recycling company reported fourth quarter results that beat expectations. Uh, Trimble TRMB shares drop 1.7 after North Coast Research cut the recommendation from sell to neutral. And then Trip.com, TCOM, shares are up 3.3 after the Chinese firm says domestic travel demand has recovered strongly since COVID and with hotel bookings exceeding 2019 levels. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I think the biggest news today is Meta, hands down. Again, more job cuts at Meta. That has people good. Uh, even the Weight Watchers news, uh, we talked about that one yesterday. It's still up 20%, so I think they even had earnings as well. And then Google, biggest streak since 2019. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? But Chad... We still got a lot of time here, so I'm going to go to the bathroom. I hope you're ready for today. Uh, we are still waiting some uh, pre-written statements by Young Powell, so we haven't got those yet, but we'll see how those play out. We'll see how those play out. Oh, look at this. This is funny. You've been hearing about this all day. Retail has been piling into treasury and short-term cash. I'm proud of you, Chad. 6% year-to-date. Amen. I don't right want to take Follow the risk right here for an incremental Amen. you know, 2 to 3%. Uh, when I could easily have 10 to 15 percent downside, it's just not a good risk-adjusted return for me. Brian, Nick, would you take the other side of that? I wouldn't. I agree with Lisa that unfortunately, I think a lot of the gains uh, that we're going to see in 2023 may already be in on the equity side. On the fixed income side, if, if I'm looking at an alternative to equities, I'm probably not looking at cash or government bonds. I'm probably looking more at things like high yield, where you can get paid eight, nine percent for. Uh, a, you know, below investment grade exposure and fixed income trades more like equities, but at least you're getting the yield, which you're not getting provided with the equity market. And the economy holds up relatively well, but profit margins get squeezed, which I gather is sort of the Fed's goal here in bringing down inflation. That is possible you're going to see outperformance across fixed income compared to equities over the balance of this year. And Brian, with the spread of 390 on high yield, what do you make of that? Yeah, it, it, it's come down pretty aggressively. I think what we've seen, I think one thing in, we've seen in common between the stock market and the bond market this year is that recession risks have gotten priced out, at least imminent recession risks have gotten priced out pretty aggressively. So you've seen that yield curve even kind of uninvert a little bit for certain terms. You've certainly seen the 10-year a little bit better supported, and you've seen the stock market valuations better support. I think all that goes to the likelihood of a recession risk uh, you know, receding a bit, and that is also consistent with the the decline we've seen in uh, in spreads, but we still prefer less rate risk and the wider spread you're getting with high yield compared to the, the higher quality, but the, the lower spread and the more interest rate sensitivity with investment grade. Elisa, you said you didn't want to take on the downside risk in the equity market. What about the high yield market? You know, we've been cautious there as well. Um, you know, our sense is that those spreads are just too, too tight. We, we think that the canary in the coal mine is going to come in the credit markets. Um, you know, thus far, uh, markets have uh, held extraordinarily well. Um, cash flows have remained resilient, and we've been able to cover. Uh, but our best resilient. guess is that um, as I we're guess. starting to see these little, little 
uh, you know, pieces of news, um, you know, coming out. of Cash, baby. So, again, that has been something. It's funny since last week. Uh, I'm glad that we went into Bill and we've been talking about that one there. But there has been a record number of people uh, buying short term cash uh, ETFs, treasury bonds, and, uh, they're talking about the risk to reward. So it's good to see here. Good to see here. I think the fed's job is uh, getting accomplished there, but Chattadonia, we got a couple of minutes now. It is game time. I hope you're ready. I hope you're locked and loaded. I hope you're hungry and I hope you're excited because, uh, today should be a lot of fun, uh, or it could be a nothing event, but it'll still be fun. But Chattadonia, let's go, man. What's your first play of the day? Keep it serious. Keep it on track. Show me what you got. I can't wait to read them. What do we got? What do we got? What's the first play of the day, Chattadonia? Let's go. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. NVIDIA covered calls. Trick got news. Oh, it's always fun in here. Rivian puts. Holden AI puts. Short in Tesla still. Short MNQ. Spy puts. Short QQQ. Darth King's launching Sportsbook in Massachusetts. VIX. Snapshares. Watching Big Tech and Bonds. Watching Boyle. Snapshare. Snap call. SPXU call. Spy puts. 1030. VIX long. Netflix calls. NDX puts. Stack more. LINK. CRM. Buy banks. Troika again. Match shares. QQQ. So many puts. Snap calls. Spy puts. Calls on China. Defense. CRM. Snap puts. QQQ. Tesla calls. SP puts. Telecom. Dow Future long. Watching Bank of America. Uber. Tesla. Spy strangle. Crowd shares. Buy the day. MES short calls, Meta calls, short LMT, Tesla, Tesla calls, uh, waiting for Powell, cash, spy lottos, Tesla calls, PRVB, waiting for Powell, Tesla, Joanne, short because of the pricing in, open shorts during pre-market, 4057, holding short-term, spy puts, zero day, zero day, zero day, credit spread, spy 400, Volma get in, Roblox puts, Troika squeeze, scalping, long on Boyle, Veil calls for sure, long on Chad, Roblox short, long on the Chad, Amazon calls, zero day, cash, cash, cash. And Troika squeeze. A lot of Troikas out there. Sideline for now, coach. Microsoft call. Tech at the bottom. Cash again. Kashish. Is you on that Kashish? Kashish Volmageddon. Oh, man. Uh, they said it again. JP Morgan. Uh, they reiterated their Volmageddon claims last night. And, uh, last night. End phase short. VFC. Long chat. Zero days. American deli calls. And uh, sitting on my hands till Powell. Let's go. Wow, it's going to be a good one. I think a lot of people waited on Powell. I think that, I think that was your 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 calmest uh, first play of the day session. I think we saw a lot of small caps, a lot of Tesla, uh, a lot of snaps, surprisingly. But I think that's it. Uh, Troika. I mean, I just I think it's running, but I I think you know eventually people are going to get scammed on it. I mean, just watch out for the rug pull, GG until then, and then that's it. Uh, Goldman Solomon, uh, he's talking, but I got a couple of plays here today. Uh, let's see. We got a couple of minutes. I'm going to be watching Meta. Uh, like I said, I think that's the biggest piece of news, and they're already up there a lot. Um, everybody likes more job cuts. Uh, Weight Watchers, I really, really like that one, but it's just up a lot, so that's the only problem I have. Uh, but they bought a company that prescribes Ozempic pretty much. Uh, XLF in the banks, I'm feeling really good about those this week or next week. I think there will be a delayed factor, but other than that, I am liking it. Dick Sporting Goods, they're up 7%. Uh, that's kind of your first consumer stock that's done good here in the last couple of weeks. So I want to see how that plays out. CRM, I'm still eyeing it, especially uh, if Powell can, you know, kicks off any sort of rally or downside. And then uh, XLV and healthcare, I want to see kind of how they fare with the overall market. And then every other play that we have been holding and watching so far. So pretty simple. I think uh, I'm in the same boat as a lot of people in here too, pretty much watching meta and then uh, just waiting for Powell. That's what it's going to come down to, Chad. That's what it's going to come down to. So we got about four minutes. We are way ahead of schedule. I think we're very excited today. Is there any uh, pressing questions? We've talked about the demand here for cash in the morning. Uh, and uh, actually, I have a couple of things with Powell, uh, if you would like me to share those for you. So here are just a couple of questions that may come up with Powell. Uh, so make sure you like the video because I could be selling this. I could be selling this for big money. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that you're here. I'll give you early access. But since there's about 3,000 of you here now, I don't know. You know, I'm here to shame you for the 2,500 that have not hit the like on the on the video. I don't know. Well, what are you doing this morning? Wait, what's up? You just you woke up this morning just ready to take, take, take. You didn't want to show any love today? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Hit that like button. There you Why are you being so shy? It's, it takes you two seconds. God bless you. There you go. I'm just messing with you. We love you. Amen. But uh, here's what people in Bloomberg is expecting. Uh, Powell will provide his read on the latest uh, trove of economic data. So people want to see uh, potential questions that may come up is what is he going to say about all of the data going up and down, non-farms and everything else. And just keep in mind with the non-farms right around the corner as well as CPI. 
He shouldn't signal too much, but we'll see. Uh, Powell is most likely going to emphasize the most important takeaway is that taming inflation requires a sustained effort. So it's going to be stuff you've heard. And everything I'm reading to you now, uh, this is along the lines that Powell is probably not going to say anything new. Uh, Bloomberg is also expecting the Fed spectrometer uh, reading as Powell being more hawkish than not. So if possible, he may endorse the recent uptrend uh, towards the 5.5 terminal rate. So people are expecting him to be a little bit more excited uh, that the bond futures are pricing in 5.5. Uh, more likely that Powell will say policymakers still haven't determined determine the ultimate destination of rates consistent with what other Fed officials have said in recent months. And then February uh, non-farms and then CPI will confirm that. Uh, regarding speculation of 50 basis points at March, Powell is likely to say everything is on the table. So pretty much not rule it out, uh, but also not advocate for it. Uh, Republican lawmakers may question him on whether or not the Fed is behind the curve, citing the easing in financial conditions. Powell will likely push back on the idea that financial conditions have loosened, and he may argue, as in the monetary policy report, that financial conditions have tightened further since June. Uh, the monetary policy report cited various metrics showing tightened conditions, and Powell will probably discuss stuff with the bond market and responding to pricing. And then Powell's uh, press conference, uh, he's going to pretty much uh, go back to a lot of what he said in the press conference of conditions tightening amongst other things. So sadly, not much to expect here. Uh, I just just to prepare for Powell to balance back and forth between what he has already said. So it's going to be very interesting, Chad. That is the quick breakdown. You got 30 seconds. Any pressing questions in 30 seconds? I'm sure we're going to get over all of them. And again, 30 minutes after the bell, uh, that is when all of the action will start. So I hope you're ready. So chat, anything, anything? How can we watch it? We're going to have it here live on stream, uh, or I'm sure you could find it on Congress's website or YouTube. So this is a congressional meeting. This is before the government, before Congress. All righty, I think that's it. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you know what time it is. You know what time it is here at the chat before we do anything, before we try to chase a dollar, before we try to enrich ourselves, we must pay homage to a very special group of people who we love and appreciate and who have made a sacrifice that doesn't compare to a lot of what we have done here. And I'm talking about the veterans of the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. So on behalf of the cult, the people here, the people not here, we want to give a huge special shout out, all the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country, God bless you and thank you for your service. We hope you know you're appreciated. And the same shout out goes for all the families as well. And anybody out there man just giving back and helping out their community and doing a lot of work that oftentimes gets overlooked man so we want to give a huge special shout out to all the firefighters police officers doctors nurses teachers garbage men janitors anybody volunteering for nonprofits, helping out the old lady with the groceries you know who you are baby god bless you and thank you for doing what you have done ladies and gentlemen please rise place your right hand over your heart Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Ah. Senator Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Ah. Oh, or nah. Let's go, Chattadonia. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go. Are you ready? Oh, you're ready for some pal? Oh, Google. Google with the little, with the little chicle. Little Clifford into the low. Oh, Chattadonia. It's game time. Hey, man. Good morning. I hope your Tuesday morning is bright and early. I hope you're feeling blessed. Get ready. It's going to be exciting. It is going to be exciting. I wonder. Powell has the opportunity to say absolutely nothing, or maybe he just says the wrong word. That's always the beauty with these. You know, one word could change a lot. That's word to Raphael Bostic. So we'll see. Yeah, Meta did announce more layoffs uh, to meet financial targets, uh, which is very good news. I mean, unless you work for them. Uh, but it's showing that, uh, again, more cost cutting. And last time they announced cost cutting, they were up like 20%. So this is all on top of the 11,000 jobs that they cut prior. So we will see. We will see. Power clappeth and giveth. We shall see. Mm-hmm. One word can't change it all. 
And that's pretty much why we're going to be listening. Uh, but I hope everybody's under the impression here, though, that, you know, it's a it's a very, very tight rope of, of which he could say. You know, there's only so much he could bring up unless he really wants to change anything. And then the fact of the matter is, no matter what Powell says, all of it could be either confirmed or denied by the jobs report and then the CPI that follow. So this is just the first of the event. And remember, we have Powell tomorrow as well, too. So, Chad... Thank you for liking that video. I see my call to action inspired some of y'all. Some of y'all lazy 3,000 people just sitting there not liking the video. I'm just messing with you. It's okay. Shh. It's okay. Come here. Come here. But now we only have 30 seconds, Chad. So call out any place. Like the video. And let's have some fun. Good morning. I can't. It's only, dude, it's already 630. That's crazy. I see. Oh, you all got to add? Oh, dude, they hate you. Oh, they hate you. You have 20 seconds. Oh, you have 20 seconds. Oh, man. Oh, man. Chad Adonia, get ready for it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Round 1. Fight. Oh, wow. Spy already closed. Is already negative? Damn, Spy was green there not too long ago. So let's see here. It looks like Dow Jones is the only thing in the green. Utilities, healthcare, and industrials are leading. Everything else is red. Oh, no, 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 no. Everything's still moving. I'll take a check on that in a little bit here. <clears throat> Amazonian, they're actually up. We'll see if Apple holds. Spy is barely red right now. Uh, everything's about 0 0.05, 0 0.06. Very interesting. And we have yet to get the pre-written statement from Powell, which is quite interesting because I think we're going to uh, probably get it right before he starts talking. Snap and meta on the high. Meta is still going up. I think our old Meta shares might be back. AM Dizzle, JWN. Uh, where's the other one? Weight Watchers. Ah, uh, yeah, man. Weight Watchers, five bucks. That's already up a ton. The bonds sold. Yeah, bonds are up even a quarter, huh? Uh, Microsoft's on the low. Spy's even on the low. Apple is uh, barely in the red. And then Amazon, uh, Google, and uh, Meta are the ones holding. Actually, Google's red. DraftKings, 3% off of the low. The Weight Watchers is up 31% most since March 2020. Uh, DKS, so Dick Sporting Goods, they had good earnings. They were up 7, and now they're back up to 6. That was a 2% candle right there. Let's see. Healthcare is actually up decent. So communications and healthcare are number 1 and 2. Everything else is red. Energy is the worst on the day, and then financials are coming in at number 3 on the decline. SC, do they have earnings? Yeah, they're up 7% too. Dix and SE. I thought SE was after the bell. Mm. Yeah, Dix Sporting Goods at a record high. Manu's up. Mm -mm. Meta. Again, Meta above 190 just gets crazy. MRK, remember from yesterday. That one is still moving. Damn, the ES. Bro, the ES was positive. He was very, very positive. So now you're coming back to yesterday's low. So watch out here. This could get a little bit more ugly. You open at 4048, which is one of those levels, but uh, anything below here, I do have some of the levels. So 4048, March 6th, and 4045, and then pretty much 4037 to 4028. We'll see how this plays out. And then Powell here in about 30 or 28 minutes. JD dump. Dick Sporting Goods still running up there. Google pop. Uh, JD is on the low. Uh, Google's moving Coinbase is up here too. And then Amazon might go negative. Not all your big tech is actually working up here. So you're barely down, though. And then Dow looks to be the best performer. Tesla. Tesla, yeah, even down another. Tesla's outpacing to the downside. And then watch the chip makers. Remember yesterday, AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Broadcom, they all kind of had their moment. Volume is tweaking. <clears throat> CLF on the high. DoorDash, Roblo again. Uber. I think wasn't the dollar up today too? Yeah, dollars up a quarter percent. Snapaholics, Airbnb, Tcom had earnings. They did good. Yeah, Snap is up another four percent. There is going to be a TikTok bill presented today. It's not going to mention the words TikTok, but uh, it will mention uh, the government's ability to ban anything off of a government phone. So interesting because Meta's news, Meta's up on on firing people. Snapchat's been doing two days here with Google and Meta. Roku, Snapchat again, or Google's up the, towards the highs. 
This is Google's biggest streak since 2019. Oh, oh you know who has a better streak than Google? I can't make this up. Bradley Frizzle and the Peach, baby. It's here. Peach Nation, get your ass up. Horn <laughs> Oh, that's how we wake up, man. Good morning. I need to stand up. I'm sorry. I need to stand up for the Peach. Good morning. God bless you, Bradley Frizzle. Makes Google streak look like nothing. Makes him look like nothing. Oh, good morning. Wayfair's on the high. Oh, let's see if Weight Watchers is still up there. Roku is at the high. Little cheek lay on the market. Uh, Dollar is getting some volume here, too. Even Meta might start turning down. Walmart's on the low. Sherwin, we're almost on the high. Sherwin Williams, SEC, or SE is going. That's post earning. Damn, that's 4% now. My goodness. Yeah, SE has just moved up 4% since the last time we had it on the screen. Uh, NASDAQ went green by 0.06. SPY is struggling a little bit. Uh, Microsoft's actually straight up here, too. AVCTQ live auction. What's that? Is that a, is that a real auction or is that are you pumping a penny stock? No, I don't know. Speaking of which, Troika, that thing's still holding up good. Rita just not even moving. Costco on the high. Tesla pop. Yes, he's doing good. Tesla's still down. Tesla two days in a row lagging. Here we get bubbles. We'll get them in a little bit. I would I would see till uh, at least Powell's statement comes out. So until we either get Powell's written statement or he starts talking, I mean I don't I don't even think anything in the market matters because a lot of people are pulling back ahead of Powell and then a lot of people are waiting for Powell to start uh, piling in on any direction. So right now this is all just like you're pretty much in like the weird purgatory from yesterday. This is just my opinion, but. I think it makes sense with a lot of how the market's moving, the prices and all that. Amazonian. Amazonian. But watch out. Amazonian's a trip, man. He'll Amazonian will just sell it off. Weight Watchers is a WW. It's already up a lot. I wanted to play it at 420 yesterday, and now it's already at 5. I think that's up way too much, but it's good news for them. I mean, you could even look at Novartis. I mean, they're the ones that make Ozempic, but they definitely – I think it's a great pickup by uh, – by Weight Watchers for cheap too. UAL 52 week high. Uh, Powell is going to be in about 24 minutes. So we've only been here for what? Six minutes. <clears throat> Expedia and travel is on the high. Mm. Powell will take questions from uh, congressmen uh, and women, but not a, uh, you know, there's not going to be any reporters there asking him questions. So the questions are going to be very broad in terms of his job, what he's doing, what he's accomplished, uh, what he feel, you know, whether or not they think he's lagging behind. So it's, it's just going to be, you know, and then one guy's going to, that one weird dude or the guy who asks him a bunch of crazy questions. So it should be fun. Should be fun. Airbnb, Amazon, Roblo's up there. Let's see if Airbnb gets to 130 this time around. And then DKS and then SE. SE still going 12 percent, bro. Every time I put this thing up, that's another two percent. And then Google's still holding pretty good. Uh, Meta's actually staying kind of pins from the earlier gains, and Microsoft's catching up. Spy is now break even, so that's decent. Yeah, DoorDash is up to Square. I think Square and PayPal got something the other day. SE again. I'm keeping that one in the bottom right. That one's doing very good. It's actually insane for like an early morning rip. Bro, that went 6 to 13% in seven minutes. Solomon says, so far the Fed seems to be doing good. That's Goldman Sachs. Uh, where are the banks? Banks are one of the worst on the day, actually. They're not looking too hot. Watch Melly. And then communications and tech are number two, number one and two. Okta on the high again. There you go. And Snap is still up 6% for some reason. Take-Two might have just confirmed a GTA 6 release. Really? That would be huge. Netflix green. I see user interest rising, but I don't see anything else. Yeah, our Netflix shares are up. That's actually crazy. That could be good. Usually uh, GTA announcements and Take-Two 
Uh, it's actually a positive stock event. It's a, or a positive stock event. Believe it or not, CRM on the high, Apple, a lot of things are running now. And no pre-written statement just yet. About 22 minutes till Powell. And now you're right where we closed. I mean, we were up a lot more pre-market. Again, futures were near, what, 40, 60? So you're about 12 points higher on the futures uh, pre-market. And then take two, still kind of moving here. AMD. What is SC? Uh, what In what context? Patrick Bacotti. Good morning, baby. Uber. Uber's up. DoorDash is outpacing. Even Travel's doing good. CRM once again. Uh, 185. That's actually cheaper. I think uh, that's near the lows here. I think CRM we confirm with Powell. That could be a decent play. Exxon has stepped back from Europe investing in U.S., CEO says. Mm -hmm. Hit the like. Is he changing his speech again? Well, nothing has happened ahead of time, so we'll, I don't know. Solomon says chances of soft landing is meaningfully higher. That's uh, Goldman Sachs CEO. He's made, I think there's a financial conference going on today, so we might get a couple of those. When they're going down, uh, Baba and the China names are kind of all in the middle. JD's doing a little worse. Shopify's on the high. Amazon again. So Amazon, I just get worried about it because we've seen this thing move 1% every 30 minutes yesterday. And then Google's kind of chilling out. Google's barely green. Meta, they're 2%, but they're going into the lows. And then Microsoft has been just straight up from the morning. And then uh, Apple is uh, right at break even. So Apple and the SPY hand-in-hand. Hand. NASDAQ is up a quarter of a percent. Where is uh, energy? Energy's down 0 0.07. Staples are barely green, 0 0.02. Industrials, 0 0.06. Tech is up a quarter. Consumer discretionary up a third. And then communications are up uh, 0.4. Adobe on the high. We saw that one going crazy yesterday. MDB and now Airbnb back to uh, 130 or right below. Mongob up 2%. QOT halted. QUOT, quote. Quotient, and I'm up 17. Rita's chilling. NVIDIA is up above 238 again. I think Powell is going to be a mix of dovish and hawkish. I'm, I really don't think he's going to say much. I just don't think, uh, I don't think Powell is going to leave his bag today. I think he has a nice little set of, uh, you know, I feel like Powell reminds me of Woody, you know, Toy Story. So I feel like you pull the string and Powell is just going to say a couple of the phrases. So that's what, uh, and he shouldn't say anything else. But pretty much he's going to, I think he's going to acknowledge the 5.5 on the terminal rate. And I think he's going to be excited about that because he is more hawkish. I could agree with Bloomberg on that one. Uh, but other than that, I just think everything is going to be borderline, uh, just say every response that you've said in the last three months here. Try not to make it sound too dovish, but even if it does, it's fine. Uh, simply because whatever happens, uh, it's going to be confirmed by CPI and jobs report. So I don't think he's going to say too much, but I think he will acknowledge some new developments. I think he's going to give info, but it's all like I don't think he's going to confirm half a basis point or not. I don't think he's going to say where the rates will end up, and he's going to stick to the whole uh, we got a lot more work to do. So we'll find out. There's inflation in my boot. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's a good one. I like it. Costco, yeah, 495 from 460 the other day. Uh, Grayscale, Grayscale uh, SEC court case uh, is happening right now. And then Spy just came right back down here. So first opening candle, you literally sold off pre-market, hit the low of the day. Bounced right back up here to kind of where futures opened up, and now you are hitting another low. You're about to. Low is 444.12. You're at 444.79. So here it is. Whoop. MPC on the high. Uh, even uh, oil plays came down. Apple staying somewhat pinned. Like, this could be oil. Energy's down. Again, energy materials, and then uh, even financials are killing us. It boils down the non-farm and CPI. Yes, and the the big takeaway you could get from the watch list to apply towards today uh, is just the event risk. 
and and watching as that goes away. So really, we're going to be listening to see if event risk increases or if it dissipates. And if, you know, by the end of this two and a half hour speech, that's usually how long it takes uh, between the questioning, you know, two and a half hours later, if Powell really does stay in line with everything we've said, that event risk is going to drop drop dramatically as people are going to kind of now overlook that and then give them, you know, three more days to, to trade until we get the data or another set of Powell. Is that meta on the low? Take two moon. That Grand Theft Auto 6, bro. Yeah, there it is. Good call on that one, Danny. So that one's already up 3% from that news. Spot UNC is up 40 again. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one's actually running still. So I still have those. Don't know where it's at, though. It's doing good. 88%. The testimony, the testimony is short, but the whole thing should take about two and a half hours. It's not guaranteed. It could take longer, but that's usually how long it is. Quotient technology exploring a sale. Well, Danny called that one out too. Q-U-O-T. They were already halted, but they are exploring a sale. SC's back on the high. Airbnb. Still rocking the EBS play, Yes. Uh, source, uh, Danny posted it earlier. Exxon says significant downside to scope three carbon measures. Dude, SC is killing it. 15. CRM got news. I think they just said like 200 million for like some AI shit. They're doing good. I would play them, but I want to wait till Powell. But that 183 this morning, that was near the low. So, quote is unhalted, Q-U-O-T. They are exploring a sale. So, they jumped 17% after report. There you go. That first candle just gave you a discount if you wanted it. Mm. And the spy kind of bouncing up. I'm kind of down with them. All right, I grabbed 100 shares of Quote, 390, 300 bucks. Very small there, but it seems like they have a lot of upside. I don't have any other details on the deal, uh, but it seems like a today if we get any small caps and anything else, 15%, I'm assuming they're going to get a bid for more than that, but keeping it small just in case. They had like weird debt or something. That's what I'm saying. I think that could get in the way. I just like the news headline. It's cheap. And then 100 shares, decent risk for 300 bucks. Mm -mm. And then Goldman, David Solomon, he keeps making statements and the dollar keeps climbing. Again, dollar is uh, been on fire all day today. That's one thing to keep in mind. Airbnb now making another push to 130. You had telecom. That was the earnings, the other earnings today. And then UNCY is looking good. Troika still up. SE again. That one's going to be wild all day. If that one comes down, we could take advantage of it. But I think you already missed that from the morning. Dude, what is Snapchat doing? Is this a new high? Yeah, what the hell? Bro, Snapchat at 1260? Is this real? So this is the highest Snapchat's been since like... August 2020 or like even the lows of uh, June. <clears throat> Snap crackled and popped. It did. Hmm. Let me see. I have an idea.
And then spy popping big over there. No news. Mm. Bank of America. I'm going to ride that out for the next couple of weeks. I've already been holding it for a while. The city went up and then Bank of America went down, but I'm feeling pretty confident on the banks. CRM breathing. Honeywell. I need to load up the long term. I want to see snap. EV stocks tanking, and we just made that quote play. Microsoft's holding decent. Where's Meta? Okta's moving up again, too. Spy just hit a high? What the hell was that? Spy's still red, but you just wicked up into the high after wicking into another low. And then how much time? Oh, you got 10 minutes, man. 10 minutes. You were going to sell covered calls? Oh, you know me too well. It sucks because they're pretty much like the same price they were at at the beginning of the year, but... I think it's a decent price here if we really wanted to because now there's no earnings and then we're going to have to wait. Yeah, because we've already made most of our money. We get like we get so much less than we did last time. But, you know, I can't be too opposed to it. Yeah, and then the one account we're positive on Snap now again at this price. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'd get two hundred fifty bucks. Kind of shit. Kind of shit. I'm going to wait. I wanted to. I thought, I don't know. I thought it, I thought it was going to be like 500. I'm tripping. I just did bad math. It's decent. It's decent on the snap covered calls. I'd want to wait a little bit more. Today's my birthday. All visuals by Vlad. Happy birthday, baby. On Pal Day. God bless you, man. I hope you have a wonderful birthday. And I hope that you make sure you get that long term. Because he's with you, man. He's with you. <clears throat> But snap covered calls are tempting. I wish uh, I wish I could get a little bit more money for them. Unless I want to sell 2025s. Uh, the written statement has not came out yet, which I think is quite odd. It might just happen like right before. Oh, actually, we even got some reads on it here, too. Let me see one more covered call, but I have some analyst comments already for you. Those are June 22s. Yeah, you can't sell anything good. It's my birthday, 45. Let's go. All these birthdays on Powell Day. Y'all are special. Y'all are, are going crazy here. That's amazing. Happy birthday, bro. Enjoy it too. Again, same thing for the long term. So we'll see. I'm going to give it a little bit on snap. If we could get another pop there, I'm already down to, uh, I'm down to sell the covered call since we have so many shares, but we'll just see how it plays from here. And then where's Tessie? Tessie's still in the gutter about to break 190. Uh, Powell should be in about six minutes. So I'm actually going to get you the live feed up here right now. They're already in Congress. Everybody's getting ready for it. Mm. 
So whenever he comes on live, we'll have it. And then you're right at open for the most part. I've not gotten any written statement or anything yet, but I'm sure once it does, uh, we'll be we'll be in the game. Domino's on the high. Domino's back to 318. Yeah, Airbnb's had two days of this. We'll see if it actually holds up. Uh, UNCY's still working up there. Then QUOT. That one hasn't moved at all. Tesla near the bottom. Uh, chip makers are holding up. They started off pretty slow. Where's uh, SE? They have to be responding to SE. Am I moving here? This is just VWAP. Uh, I don't know. Just the normal uh, <clears throat> E-Trade VWAP. Going to come out like a bull. Well, he has five minutes. Five minutes, no pre-written statement. So crazy. Wife's contracting baby boy today. Maybe listening in the birthing room. Good luck, man. Bro, we got mad birthdays today. You about to have, I mean, your child's going to have his first birthday today. That's amazing. God bless the chat. This is a, I guess this is a very special pal day. And happy birthday to all the birthdays out there. Shout out all the new Chad links. Hopefully you got your kids those long terms. Amen. 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 All right. 404. Well, they're not even seated right now. They got four and a half minutes. You should be able to see Powell on screen or the congressional meeting. So there's a couple of statements. They're saying the hearing will provide a spotlight for the panel's top Republican, Tom Tim Scott of South Carolina, who has been touring states uh, like Iowa ahead of a possible run for president. On Friday, Scott joined other Republicans on the banking committee, uh, and they wrote the Fed that they were worried about the potential for increased capital requirements at banks, which Scott wrote appears unfounded as banks subject to the current regulatory capital regime seem to have weathered all of the real-life stress that COVID has said. Uh, Scott is the only black Republican senator, and he has pitched a sunnier version of conservatism than former President Donald Trump and was a key force behind Opportunity Zone, uh, the tax incentives that helped uh, out Trump. Expect Republicans to try to engage Powell on Biden's uh, budget coming up tomorrow and, in their view, excessive spending, making his job harder and leading interest rates higher. Typically, Powell refuses to engage in such criticism of fiscal policy, though when pressed sometimes notes the long-term trajectory that the debt is unsustainable. Premium jacked on both sides. Yeah, people, that's that's that event risk. So we'll quickly, you'll quickly watch, depending on what is said and how this plays out, you know, premiums will either run really big in one direction or we might watch both sides deflate. Oh, he did it again, Edgar. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Father Edgar. We're going to call you Father Edgar. Like Father Charlie, you're like a priest of the Chad. Because as you just sunning him out here, Edgar. Edgar just giving gifts to everybody. Day in and day out, baby. God bless you. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Honestly, Edgar. Edgar just, Edgar... Just, Edgar just became a blessing out of nowhere, man. Edgar just every day just blessing us out of nowhere. Nobody asked him to do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what was done to cause Edgar's beautiful behavior. But thank you, Edgar. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. So get ready, man. I think that's good vibes. I think that's good vibes for Powell. Uh, market check. S&P is flat while the NASDAQ is up a quarter uh, before the 10 a.m. in New York. And the treasury yields on the 10-year are at 3.95. Mm-mm-mm. Let's see. Edgar, yalla. Tesla's on the low now. Apple's break even. Tesla's flush in 190. That's no good. <clears throat> Another subject sure to come up is the debt limit. Uh, Powell and the White House have been insistent that Congress must raise it. There are various break glass scenarios that would involve Powell, like Treasury minting trillion dollar platinum coins and placing them at the Fed. But generally, leaders have tried not to entertain them. Edgar, stock traded. Let's go. <coughs> Good morning, baby. I hope you feel the energy. It's Powell Day. It's either going to be a huge event or absolutely nothing. 
Honestly, there's only this that one guy who asked the crazy questions. You guys see him? He's the guy. He's always like, yo, he always like, he says like cocaine. He says a bunch of shit. He's the only one up there. Sam, good morning, baby. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Let's go. Yeah, but he's the, he's ready to go, bro. He's going to be funny as hell today. Bro, I could already tell. The fact that he's the first person in there. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Another <laughs> why? <laughs> Yo, they running up the ass on y'all today, huh? Hey, man. Oh, there's Powell. You're missing it. Powell is seated there. Look at all these. Look at him. Look at all of them. Oh, man. They're all taking pictures. This is it. The Powell picture presser. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at He's the first one to greet him. Oh, battle boy. Nah. Amen. Amen. Uh, January wholesale inventories just came out. So hold on. You got some data right here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, wholesale trade sales came in at 1% month over month. Estimate was uh, supposed to be 0.4. But hold on. I'm checking if this was a Powell state. Wholesale inventories just came in hot. Oh, no. Powell, Powell, Powell. Powell pre-written statement. Latest economic data has been stronger than expected. Economy strength to exist peak rate will be higher than previously anticipated. Inflation is moderated, but progress is likely to be bumpy. January hiring, spending, and inflation data have reversed earlier softening trends. Some reversal of uh, recent softening could reflect warmer weather. Breadth of revisions, revisions to previous quarters suggest inflation is running higher than expected. Fed will make policy decisions meeting by meeting. Fed will increase uh, rates as slowing demand in rate-sensitive sectors. It will take time for full effects to influence broader conditions. So he said inflation is moderated, but progress likely bumpy. Honestly, I think it's the one on, uh, uh, what's it called? He said economic data has been stronger, and then peak rates will be higher than previously expected. That's it. I think that's the problem here. We're already down half a percent. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I didn't like it. No, I think that I think Fed futures. I mean, I don't know if that means anything for 50. Uh, but what Powell said there, it seems like uh, Powell is really OK with raising terminal rates right now. So let's see if we have any audio right now. But I think uh, watch Fed futures. But first statements seem to be bearish. Other than that, though, it seems uh, it's let's see how he answers the questions. I feel like when he talks it, it'll sound different, but. In writing, that sounds pretty hawkish. Fed futures at 30%. 29.9. Uh, uh, yesterday, they were at 28, so they haven't even moved. Watch the Zaza. Uh, that did move down decisively. Banks should do well. So wait for the first pop, and then we're going to see... This is your big flush for the day. We're going to come back to the low levels here over the last couple of days. You're back to 40, 28. You've already broken every single level like it was nothing. And then watch for the first bounce. And then if that bounce fails, I think it's over. But it all also depends on what Powell's saying. Not everything's moving in tandem. Damn, Tesla flushed two bucks. It sounded very hawkish just on the peak rate. That's it. But then again, the market is already priced there. Powell says prepared to increase pace of rate hikes if needed. So it's again, it's borderline what he said every time, but in writing, that sounds very, order. very Welcome hawkish. Sarah Powell, thank you for uh, doing your duty and seeming to enjoy when you come to our committee. Thank you. Uh, the ES, I'll probably get it on the. I'll Today get out on the first the bounce. Today we examine the Fed's actions to combat inflation. Whether these actions are okay, here it is. working, including how those actions Dollar is going American nuts. Jobs and their paychecks. Prices are still too high across many parts of the economy. We know that. Who feels it the most when the cost of rent and groceries go up? It's not the economic pundits and politicians who lecture us about discipline and stability. It's not the corporate executives who pretend they're making tough choices about prices. Again, Powell says ultimate rate, rate peak likely to be higher than expected. Quarter, Bro, that statement was hawkish. Doing more and more stock buybacks. So you so need Powell to come in sounding like a dove. Otherwise... Meet. It's it seems pretty negative so far. Social Security. It's everyone who gets their income from a paycheck each month, not an investment portfolio. It's those same Americans 
who stand to lose the most at the Fed's actions. And then currencies have made some of the biggest moves reacting to Powell. No matter what goes wrong in our economy, a global pandemic, a war in Eastern Europe, weather disasters, profits somehow always manage to go up. So 4017 is the price. next level As if you, you fail this. Chair Powell, the Fed's tools are only one element in our fight against inflation. It's a complex problem. Interest rates are a single, we know, blunt tool. Raising interest rates can't rebuild our supply chains and fix demand imbalances from the pandemic. Raising interest rates won't end Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. Raising interest rates won't prevent avian flu from devastating one-third of our egg supply or weather disasters from destroying key crops. And raising interest rates certainly won't stop big corporations from exploiting all of these crises to jack up prices far beyond the increase in their costs. Last year, corporate profits hit a record high. Corporate PR chiefs assure us that these companies just have to raise prices. Their costs are going up. The workers just want to be paid too much. They have no other choice, they tell us. Yet when you look at their profits and their executive salaries and their stock buyback plans, it sure doesn't look like corporations have exhausted every available alternative. It's so brazen. Even global bankers called on the Fed to identify this profiteering is one of the biggest drivers of inflation. Paul Donovan, chief economist of global wealth management at UBS, wrote, the Fed should make clear that raising profit margins are spurring inflation. Companies have passed higher costs on to consumers, but they've also taken advantage of circumstances to expand profit margins. The broadening of inflation beyond commodity prices is more profit margin expansion than wage cost pressures. Think about that. From a chief economist at UBS, I'll say it again, they've taken advantage these companies have taken advantage of circumstances to, pro to expand profit margins. The broadening of inflation beyond commodity prices is more profit margin expansion than wage cost pressures, unquote. The Fed, understandably, the Fed can't force corporations to change their ways or rewrite the Wall Street business model on its own. But the Fed can talk about it. High interest rates, falling wages, increasing unemployment are all hallmarks of failed policies that end up helping Wall Street, the largest corporations in the country, the wealthiest people in the country. Because let's be clear what we're talking about. Peak rate has went above 5.6 right now. That can cloud this conversation. So cool. very initial hawkish read. He hasn't workers. spoke yet. Lowering demand means workers get fewer raises. Of course there are times when the Fed must act. We can't allow inflation to become entrenched. We've seen encouraging trends that is that that isn't happening. And there are other ways we can bring prices down instead of lowering demand. Again, making people poor, laying people off, denying worker raises. We can speed up and strengthen our supply chains. We can bring critical manufacturing back to the U.S. We can rebuild our infrastructure. It's what we're doing with the CHIPS Act, with the Inflation Reduction Act, with the bipartisan infrastructure bill. For the first time in decades, we're finally recognizing the damage that I and many of my colleagues warned corporate of the, the corporate offshoring would do to our Okay, get ready for 417. Palestine, Ohio, this is back to the gulag of last Senator week. Vance and I have visited a number of times recently. America learned about this small town last month when a Norfolk Southern train derailed and spewed oh, he's hazardous up material Ohio. in this community. East Palestine is more than just a disaster headline. Columbiana County was once the center of yeah, America. Yeah, I mean, I'm waiting for my bounce to get out of that ES, but that's if we break below 417 in flush, it's going to be ugly. In this country, You're already breaking below it. Very, very hawkish read. When I was there last week, I was talking to the sheriff at the 1820 Candle Company. Where is he was talking about how the last one closed just a few years back. Like so many industries, these jobs moved overseas, and we know why. The same reason Norfolk Southern cuts cost at the expense of safety, eliminating one-third, one-third of its workforce in the last 10 years. Then you're surprised with these derailments. It's the same reason corporations now keep prices high, dollars even dumping. as supply chain stable. I think it's, it's gone. It's the Wall Street business model. <laughs> Chair Powell knows I need that. that bounce, I know though. that. My Republican colleagues and Democratic colleagues know that. It's a Wall Street business model. Quarter after quarter, corporations are expected to cut costs at any cost. They skimp on safety. They move production overseas to countries where they can pay workers less because of trade deals that they lobbied for. And Wall Street demands they post profit increases, even in the middle of a global pandemic. That's the problem with our economy. And not only will higher interest rates not solve it, if they're overdone, they'll make it worse. 
we can't risk undermining one of the successes of our current economy. Apple, Microsoft, For the first time in decades, all in the load. workers are finally, finally starting to get a little power. We in need economy. Powell to talk. Unemployment's at a historic low, 3.4%. That's not just a number. That means Americans have more opportunities. Oh, you've gone through seven levels places, right now. That have seen a lot in recent years. It means people have the power to demand raises and retirement security and paid sick days and some control over their schedules. It means more Americans have the dignity, have the dignity that comes with a good job that provides for your family. We must here ensure that all Americans have the opportunity for that dignity of work. It's a critical time. The consequences of missteps could be severe. Um, Mr. Chairman, two more things that affect affect your job. It's not just monetary policy that threatens American pocketbooks. It's Some a weird of my first colleagues question. have threatened the nation's full it's faith not really... and credit by holding the debt ceiling hostage. He's talking about a lot of stuff. Politics. This Instead is all from the pre-written statement of Powell. Threatening, essentially That's it. Nothing has to do Americans. with this question. The Fifth Circuit's Consumer Financial Protection Bureau ruling could also cause unimaginable instability and chaos for families, for consumers, but also, as the chair knows, for a financial system. The Fifth Circuit is Wall Street's, no doubt about it, the Fifth Circuit is Wall Street's favorite courthouse. It recently ruled the CFPB's independent funding. If funding is unconstitutional, if the Supreme Court upholds the Fifth Circuit's ruling, it will not only devastate CFPB, again another new low. You're below 4017, bro. You're going to test 4000 here next, including that's the it. The next Reserve. level 407 to 4000. Today, hearing today's hearing how the Fed will balance its dual mandate and continue to promote an economy where everyone who wants a good job can find one, an economy that works for everyone. Uh, Senator Scott. Senator Scott. Sorry. That was Sorry. a crazy opening statement. Again, opening statement what of Powell brought us down. <clears throat> These guys are just making Senior, their intro. Looking at my repair, but my Fed futures remarks, are moving a ton off of it. The odds are still the same, coming, but or Vice Chairman Brainer's this is on. all based on Powell really saying higher terminal sure rate. That Even though that's kind of already that. priced in, it's pricing in more now. The next time that we have in a timely fashion. So I would really implore. Uh, the chair to make sure that's, uh, that happens. That every question, every question. 4010, 409, uh, bro, there's no respect at any level. One person, we get. Uh, every member of this committee has their questions answered in a timely fashion, and that the staff has their answers in a timely fashion. Listening to Chairman Brown, I thought to myself, fascinating. That's your first Truly kind of bounce? <laughs> fascinating. I concluded that, <clears throat> well, I, I know Chairman Brown. Well, VWAP fell a point well. and a half. I am sure he is sincere in his rant. But let me just say this spending and printing trillions of dollars, caving to the radical left in this country, seeing policies posited and then implemented that led to the worst inflation in 40 years seeing our inflation at 9.1%, seeing American families struggle because of the weight of the government on their shoulders, seeing the devastation from South Carolina to Ohio. It's unbelievable that the progressives in this country who caused a 9.1% inflation would then turn somewhere besides in the mirror to see the absolute devastation caused by their out of control spending is remarkable bro they are remarkable. not they're not even bringing up policy to stop the <laughs> out of control inflation caused by the out of control spending okay the that's your first in. bounce good luck let's see what happens to cool the economy well the definition of cooling the economy is necessary because we've seen this is back to the 40, radical approach very big level here to a problem that was in our rearview mirror being used as a Trojan horse to bring in a level of socialism and spending that our nation has not seen in my lifetime. The facts are very simple. When you get to 9.1% inflation in this nation, as a kid who grew up in a single parent household, mired in poverty, a 40% today, 100% just a year ago, increase in the gas prices, devastates single mothers around this country. For seniors on fixed income, 
whose savings are being depleted. This is Tim with Scott. With an average cost just last Republican month of a expected to run for president. Three dollar increase because of inflation. For my friends on the other side of the aisle to look any place besides a mirror, I find stunning. The truth is that when your food prices go up uh, over 20 percent. When your electricity is up over 20 percent, you have to ask yourself, where in the world are they? They cannot be in this universe. It must be an alternate universe where, in fact, it's OK for us to see prices go through the roof and our economy not stumble, but fall into a ditch. Why are we in the ditch? Because progressives used the pandemic as a way to usher in a form of spending that takes the money out of the pockets of everyday Americans and puts it in the coffers of the government. The coffers. There is a better way. Oh, he's the spitting. better way is to trust the American people. Just, uh, just, just pauses are so dramatic. So, we don't have to have the Fed come in and raise interest rates so high to quell the challenges in our economy ah, fuck. so that today Fed futures are pricing in 50 ago, basis points now. The same house. Hold on. I got an alert for, for it, but I don't see it on there. It's twice as high. Why? Because of the runaway spending of our friends on the other side of the aisle. I'm sure I do not have time for my <laughs> opening comments, but I will say without any question. As I look around the country, and I ask myself, "No, nah, the fifties. Uh, this wasn't supposed to happen." Devastating is it? Let's see. You need Powell to say something, but this is already this is already very, very surprising. Than it did a year ago. The answer is it is a crisis when the average family in our country just a couple of years ago didn't have. $400 in their savings for an emergency to have prices go up by this amount. It's devastating to have a conversation about rents around the country, looking at the inflationary effect and the absolute devastation of a snarling supply chain that we haven't seen in my lifetime. Run by my so watch out. You're near the, the lows right now. Low of the day is 4,009. You're at 4,011. That's it. We, break, we, we might break below 4,000. That bounce was not big enough at all. One of the comments that you've made that I think is really important in one of the speeches that you gave in January, and I apologize for my rant. I just wanted to make sure my rant was consistent with my friend here. Um, it is essential, you said, that we stick to our statutory goals and authorities and that we resist the temptation to broaden our scope to address other important social issues of the day. Taking on new goals, however worthy, without a clear statutory mandate would undermine the case of our independence. You further noted that, and I quote, without explicit congressional legislation, it would be inappropriate for us to use our monetary policy or supervisory tools to promote a greener economy or to achieve other climate-based goals. We are not and will not be a climate policy maker. Do you still stand by those comments? First question. I do. Thank you. There it Finally. Is. I do. I know. We're not first, po now. first words from Powell. Finally. You now, now have four minutes and 12 seconds. Yes. <laughs> I, I knew the chairman would dock that for my time, and I appreciate you uh, doing so. With a sense of humor. With a great humor. Great humor. <laughs> Finally, several of my Republican <laughs> colleagues and I sent a letter to you discussing Vice Chair, Supervisor, Vice Chair of Supervision Michael Barr's plan to conduct a holistic review of capital standards. I look forward to discussing those capital standards uh, during my Q&A, and I will thank you for our recent conversation that we had that uh, helped illuminate some of the necessary challenges that we face as a nation and your answers to it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speaking of illuminating, thank you, Senator Scott. Yes, sir. I, Thank you for allowing me to use this. Today we'll, yeah, today we'll hear from Chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, on monetary policy in the state of our economy. And I don't expect Chair Powell to weigh in on uh, the mini debate we just had, but I think we all know that the debt increase was much larger under President Trump and a Republican Senate than it has been since. Um, Chair Powell, thank you for your service and your testimony. <laughs> He's today. like, let me throw that one in there, bitch. 
Chairman Brown, uh, Ranking Member Scott, and other there members of the committee. Let's I see, appreciate pal. the opportunity to present the Federal Reserve's semiannual monetary policy report. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation is causing significant hardship, and we're strongly committed to returning inflation to our 2% goal. So this is the statement that he's Over reading that brought year, everything down. So keep that in mind. To tighten the stance of monetary policy. We have covered a lot of ground, and the full effects of our tightening so far are yet to be felt. Even so, we have more work to do. Our policy actions are guided by our dual mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of labor market conditions that benefit all. I'll review the current economic situation before turning to monetary policy. The data from January on employment, consumer spending, manufacturing production, and inflation <clears throat> have partly reversed the softening trends that we'd seen in the data just a month ago. Some of this reversal likely reflects the unseasonably warm weather in January in much of the country. Still, the breadth of the reversal, along with revisions to the previous quarter, suggests that Inflationary pressures are running higher than expected at the time of our previous. Again, he already FOMC. the market has already reacted to all of this. From a broader perspective, inflation has moderated somewhat since the middle of last year, but remains well above the FOMC's longer run objective of two percent. The twelve month change in total PCE inflation uh, has slowed from its peak of seven percent in June to five point four percent in January as energy prices have declined and supply chain bottlenecks have eased. Over the past 12 months, core PCE inflation, which excludes the volatile food and energy prices, was 4.7%. As supply chain bottlenecks have eased and tighter policy this is has restrained today. demand, inflation in the core goods sector has fallen. And while housing services inflation remains too high, the flattening out in rents evident in recently signed leases points to a deceleration in this component of inflation over the year ahead. That said, there is little sign of disinflation thus far in the category of core services excluding housing, a category that accounts for more than half of core consumer expenditures. To restore price stability, we'll need to see lower inflation in this sector, and there will very likely be some softening in the labor market conditions. Although nominal wage gains have slowed somewhat in recent months, they remain above what is consistent with 2% inflation and current trends in productivity. Strong wage growth is good for workers, but only if it's not eroded by inflation. Turning to growth, the U.S. economy has slowed significantly last year, with real GDP rising at a below trend pace of 0.9%. Although consumer spending appears to be expanding at a solid pace this quarter, other recent indicators point to subdued growth of, suspending and, of spending and production. Activity in the housing sector continues to weaken, largely reflecting higher mortgage rates. Higher interest rates and slower output growth also appear to be weighing on business fixed investment. Despite the slowdown in growth, the labor market remains extremely tight. The unemployment rate was 3.4% in January, its lowest level since 1969. Job gains remained very strong in January, while the supply of labor has continued to lag. As of the end of December, there were 1.9 job openings for each unemployed individual, close to the all-time peak recorded okay, first last VWAP March, bounce, almost. while unemployment insurance claim, claims have remained near historical lows. Turning to monetary policy, with inflation well above our longer-run goal of 2%, and with the labor market remaining extremely tight, the FOMC has continued to tighten the stance of monetary policy, raising interest rates by four and a half percentage points over the past year. We continue to anticipate that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive to return inflation to 2% over time. In addition, we are continuing the process of significantly reducing the size of our balance sheet. We are seeing the effects of our policy actions on demand in the most interest-sensitive sector sectors of the economy. It will take time, however, for the full effects of monetary restraint to be realized, especially on inflation. 
in light of the cumulative tightening of monetary policy and the lags with which monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation, the committee slowed the pace of interest rate increases over its past two meetings. We will continue to make our decisions meeting by meeting, taking into account the totality of the incoming data and their implications for the outlook for economic activity and inflation. Although inflation has been moderating in recent months, the process of getting inflation back down to 2% has a long way to go <clears throat> and is likely to be bumpy. As I mentioned, the latest economic data have come in stronger than expected, which suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates is likely to be, to be higher than previously anticipated. If the totality of the data were to indicate <clears throat> that faster tightening is warranted, we'd be prepared to increase the pace of rate hikes. Restoring price stability will likely require that we maintain a restrictive stance of monetary policy for some time. <clears throat> our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal and to keep longer-term inflation expectations well anchored. Restoring price stability is essential to set the stage for achieving maximum employment and stable prices over the longer run. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. We will stay the course until the job is done. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. At the Federal Reserve, we will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment and price stability. All of that was pre-written. Thank you. I look forward to your So questions. now, reaction uh, to pre-written statements. There are 23 of us on this committee. Almost now everyone let's get will some be questions. here today. I ask each of us to stay as close to the five-minute mark as we can because we have votes at 1130. So uh, thank you all for your cooperation, there, Chair Powell. Thank you. The Fed rate Job monitor is, is not even loading. As but yeah, 50 basis points is 50-50 now. Know that from the we got a problem. Uh, many drivers of inflation, corporate greed, rising inequality, supply chain disruptions, Russia's uh, bestiality, if you will, in Ukraine won't get better because of interest rate increases. Every indication is that this post you say bestiality? pandemic economy is different. Should we be worried, Mr. Chair, that the Fed is treating this economic period as it has in the past instead of reacting differently? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so we've been aware since the very beginning and have said have discussed this uh, public on many occasions that, that there are some differences this time. Uh, we, in particular, have not seen the kind of uh, supply side collapse that we saw at the very beginning of the inflation outbreak. Also, the outbreak of a war which had significant effects on commodity prices a year ago. So all that is different. There are also DKS those some still on the high. <clears throat> there, there is a mismatch between supply and demand. You can see that uh, in, in, in the goods sector still. You saw it in, in housing prices going up uh, over 40 percent since, uh, since before the pandemic. And you see it in the labor market where we have 1.9 job openings for every opening uh, for every unemployed person. So we're well aware that, that this, this particular situation involves a mix of cycles of, sorry, of forces, not all of which our, our tools can affect. But there is a job here for us to do in, in better aligning demand with supply. Okay, understanding you have limited tools to address inflation in our conversations um, in the past show my concern about continued rate increases that, that may not actually address the root cause of inflation. They hurt workers and I just, I, many of us contend we can't follow the same old playbook. Uh, next question, last year three banking regulators issued proposed updates on the Community Reinvestment Act to account for changes in our banking system. My question is, does the Fed remain committed to work with FDIC and OCC to finalize a CRA rule, and when will that rule likely be finalized? Yes, we do remain committed, and uh, I believe we are in uh, broad agreement with the other two agencies on, on, on the revisions to the rule. So now we're in the process of writing all that down, and that'll, that'll take some time. And then after that, of course, uh, the, it will come to the Board of, of Governors for a vote, and that will involve briefings and, and discussions. And I, I can't give you an exact date, but, but it as will quickly be, as possible. Yes, but it will it will be some months. Okay, thank you. Um, banks weathered the shock of the COVID-19 shutdowns mostly because of the fiscal response provided by Congress. We now see a spike in loan delinquencies, an increase in overall risk. Banks are again plowing billions, billions, as many other corporate leaders always defended by people on that side of the aisle. 
um, in, in, into stock buybacks, which makes me concerned that if there's a downturn in the economy, banks could end up with too little capital. That's why I'm worried about any potential rollbacks of safeguards or regulations. Can you assure me that the Fed will keep capital requirements strong and exercise more long-term forward thinking than I corporate CEOs that seem to be focused on the short term? I can assure you as to the first part uh, uh, that, that we'll, we'll keep uh, capital requirements strong. I didn't expect you to comment on your, uh, give me an opinion about your looking more forward than, than companies that look at the short-term benefits of stock buybacks. Uh, Mr. Chair, when you last testified, I asked you about the risk posed by crypto assets, stablecoin, the Fed, and other regulated possibilities. How's the Fed evaluating the risks of crypto-related activities by your, by your supervised institutions? So this is something we've been, we've been quite active in this area. And, and I'll say that uh, we, we believe that innovation is very important over time to the economy. We don't want to stifle innovation. We don't want regulation to uh, stifle innovation in a way that just uh, favors incumbents and that kind of thing. But like everyone else, we're watching what's been happening in, in the crypto space. And you know what we see is you know, quite a lot of turmoil. We see fraud. We see a lack of transparency. We see run risk, lots and lots of things like that. And so. What we've been doing is is making sure that the that the uh, regulated financial institutions that we supervise and regulate are careful, are taking great care in the ways that they engage with the uh, you know with the whole crypto space, and that they give us prior notice. And we've issued, along with the FDIC and the OCC, a number of of um, uh, is, you know issuances of <clears throat> of notices to that effect. Thank you, and I will close with this. I've long pushed for the Fed to prioritize workers and for the leaders of the Fed to re reflect the diversity of our country. We've made progress, but our work is not done. We have a new opening. Understand, it's not your job to appoint the new Fed, Fed member. Uh, we have a, and we have a number of upcoming vacancies at the Reserve Banks. I support Senator Reed from Rhode Island, Senator Menendez from New Jersey, and other colleagues who are pushing for more diverse, uh, diverse voices at the Fed. Senator Scott. Thank you, Chairman. Obviously, the chairman and I both have strong passions about the challenges that we face as a country. The one thing that I do believe that we agree on is the importance of having a strong uh, capital markets as it relates to uh, making sure that Americans have the ability to continue to grow their businesses and to solve their challenges. And frankly, I hope that we get there. Building on the same comment that yeah. we our own capital standards Showing is where love. I'm going to go with my thoughts today. When I think back, on these last few years, it's hard not to recognize the extraordinary efforts our financial institutions of all sizes, frankly, undertook to administer a 40, program like PPP, to another level and then all back while to 40, weathering 30. a shutdown of our global economy. I welcome your thoughts, but from my viewpoint, our banking system was resilient. Our financial institutions stepped up and delivered aid to support families and businesses every single day. That's why Vice Chair Barr's broad comments around holistic review of our capital troubled me so much. We should be laser focused on our economy and addressing the needs of everyday Americans trying to forge a new future and helping them open the door to opportunity. As you and I both know, <clears throat> capital and its quality must be continually scrutinized, but increased capital does not necessarily provide an increased benefit and requiring banks to hold capital that is not risk-based and appropriately tailored to a bank size, scope, and activities can cause more harm than good. At a time of record inflation, where everyday needs are more expensive, we should not be pursuing actions that are harmful. Rather, we should be supporting the engine of our economy, small businesses. While I remain greatly concerned by the Vice Chair's comments, I am hopeful that you will ensure this review is appropriate keeping the impacts on our banking system front and center. We must promote and further the growth of our economy and thereby our people. Anything less should be unacceptable. To that end, will you commit that any ongoing capital review by the Federal Reserve will follow the law and that any follow-on <clears throat> regulatory proposals will be risk-based and tailored to an institution's activity, size, and complexity, and not a one-size-fits-all? Yes, uh, I can easily commit to that. You know, we're very strongly committed to tailoring, and uh, that'll be, I can say that anything Taylor we do will reflect uh, 
Nvidia is on the high. So long held principle for us, and also now a requirement in the law. Okay, yes, a couple things are ripping off of this. Two weeks ago, we're back I sent to the a first with candle. Chairman McHenry to <clears throat> Chair Gensler regarding the SEC's climate disclosure rule, urging him to rescind his proposal and reminding him that the SEC is a market regulator, not a climate forecaster. Much like Congress designed the SEC to protect investors, to maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and to facilitate capital formation, and not to advance progressive climate change policies, Congress designed the Federal Reserve to promote price stability and maximum employment, not to play politics. To that end, I find worrying the Fed's announcement of recent actions to consider climate-related scenarios, coupled with remarks by the Vice Chair of Supervision, as attempts to incorporate broader ESG policies into the financial services system. <clears throat> Banks have and continue to account for weather-related risks in their risk management, but efforts that attempt to predict climate change far into the future fall outside the scope of, the, of their authority. Importantly, the level of speculation required in these models should highlight their arbitrary and capricious nature. At a time when our economy is suffering from historically high inflation, I expect our central bank to focus its time and resources on bringing inflation down, not on policy outside of its mandate. I noted in my opening statement a recent speech that you've given about the state of the Fed and how you should resist the temptation to broaden its scope and to address social issues. Do you agree that the Federal Reserve does not have the authority or statutory direction to use its monetary policy or supervisory tools to wade into the ESG or other climate policies? I do. I do. As you know, I, there is a there is a tightly focused role that we do have that I believe that we have, but but I would agree with I your statement. I believe that we have. Mr. Chairman, I have 20 seconds left, but I'm going to defer because of my earlier question to my opening statement. 50 is not well, guaranteed you, yet, Scott. but rate high costs uh, are up there. Mendes is close, but not here yet. So, uh, Senator, well, it's under rounds. Oh, okay. so, but nice try. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, welcome. Um, it's always good to have you in front of our committee. Um, and as you know, both core and headline inflation have remained persistently elevated. And over the past 12 months, real average hourly earnings fell by 1.8%, about 4% since President Biden took office. <clears throat> to make ends meet as prices increase, more Americans are leaning on credit cards. At the end of 2022, credit card debt hit a record of $930.6 billion, an 18.5% spike from a year earlier and an average credit card balance rose to $5,805. Over the past year, the Fed has acted aggressively to tame okay, inflation. You're literally at the first scandal now, the low. Increases. It's still a As point and a half lower. we've discussed several times, but I, I recognize that it's been an ongoing discussion, but I believe that this further proves that we have uh, long been feeling the effects of a policy-induced inflation resulting from decisions by the Biden administration, primarily cutting off uh, the, 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 uh, the resources necessary to improve and increase domestic energy production. I continue to be concerned that if you attempt to use the tools that are available at this time for the Fed, uh, then I believe that we're going to have a challenge of not being able to address specifically the challenges brought out when you have a policy is promoting uh, higher prices with regard to, to energy, uh, as opposed to what you're trying to do, which is to bring down the total overall cost. And I just wanted to ask, I guess, and, and you're going to think this is something that we've heard before, but do you believe that you currently have the monetary policy tools to actually reduce inflation? And I, I just put it in this perspective. In January of 2021, the CPI was 1.4 percent when the Biden administration began. In January of 2022, and this is before the Russian invasion of, of, of Ukraine, CPI was at 7.5%, 7.5%. Today, March of 2022, CPI is 8.5%. Wouldn't it be fair to is assess it? that a lot of the policy or the inflation that we've seen here may very well be due to policy decisions by this administration? 
Senator, not our, not for us to not our uh, job. To point fingers. Uh, <laughs> our job is to use our tools. You asked whether we have the, the tools to get this job done, and we we do. Over time, there are some things that we can't affect, but over time, we we can achieve two percent inflation, and and we will. In other words, you've got a limited number of tools available to you, and the limited number of tools that you have are designed to impact simply the reduction in prices and so forth, and yet. If there are competing interests out there that are pushing prices higher, you don't have the wherewithal to decide one tool versus another based on whether it's policy-induced or whether it is a matter of a shortage in supplies from outside or whether it's war-related. That's right. Our, our tools essentially work on demand, moderating demand. And so we, we, so that's, that's what we can do. So if, if there were policies in place that actually help to reduce inflation, in other words, and, and by that, I'm just going to look at energy alone just as a good example. If policies were in place that were actually allowing energy prices to come down in the United States, then you would have less of a need to use the very blunt tools that you do have right now with regard to, to increasing rate increases. Is that a fair statement, sir? In a sense, it is. But I would just say on energy, we... You I'm know, not trying to get you to a policy discussion <laughs> with, with, with what the president's doing on his on his energy policy, I just want to make it clear that you have to respond to what's in front of you, and it doesn't matter where the inflation is coming from or what's driving it up. You're simply trying to bring it back down to that 2% number with, with the only tools that you've really got. Yes, but I will say on energy, um, energy has tended over time, time to fluctuate up and down, and is not, it's not mainly affected by our tools. So um, the things we look at are, the th are really things that are tightly linked to demand in the U.S. economy. Those we can affect. And I think just the fact that you've been increasing or you've been increasing interest rates, and yet inflation continues to ride up, would suggest, just as you've just indicated, that when you have high energy prices, it's tough to impact that part of it with the, pol the monetary policy that you've got available to you. So we're really, we focus on everything, but we also focus on core in particular, which doesn't include energy prices. And what's happened is core, uh, core inflation has come down, but nowhere near as fast as we might have hoped, and it has a long way to go. Thank you. One last question. Last June, Vice Chairman of Supervision Michael Barr testified before this committee that he would defend the use of the aggregation method as an alternative approach to the insurance capital standards, the ICS, proposed by the IAIS. As the final compatibility criteria is set to come out later this year, can you confirm that you share Vice Chair Barr's views on this AM? I will confirm that, but I'll have to get back to you on the status of that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks, Senator Round. Senator Menendez of New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, 10 Mr. points Chairman, from I want the to level. Take this moment, if you go below 40, uh, 20, to remind my colleagues on again. that there are more than 62 million Latinos that call the United States home. We are the largest minority group in the country. We account for nearly 20% of the United States population. We contribute almost $3 trillion in GDP. Yet Latinos have no representation in the Federal Reserve's leadership. In the 109-year history of the Federal Reserve, there has never, never been a single member of the Board of Governors or regional bank president who has the lived experience of being Latino in the United States. And in practice, that means that the voices of nearly one-fifth of our country's people are repeatedly drowned out when the Fed is making critical decisions on economic policy, decisions that affect whether a Latino family can afford their first home, find a job that pays a living wage, send their children to college, save for a comfortable retirement, or get a loan to expand their business. Right now, the Biden administration has a clear opportunity to make history of its next nomination to the Board of Governments. It has identified a number of highly qualified Latino candidates who have dedicated their careers to the fields of economics, who are committed to the Fed's dual mandate, who will preserve the independence of the central bank. The administration has rightly nominated and advocated for a number of diverse candidates with similar qualifications, both at the Fed and elsewhere. But despite having five opportunities over the past two years to nominate a qualified Latino economist to serve at the Federal Reserve, this administration has repeatedly chosen not to. Representation, or lack thereof, does not happen by accident. It is a choice 
And I hope the administration makes the right choice with this nomination. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, would you say that it is um, uh, a truism that the United States dollar is the reserve of choice in the world? Yes, I would. And that brings us enormous benefits, does it not? Yes, it does. Now, 12 years ago, a Republican House brought us to the brink of defaulting on the debt for the first time in history of this country, jeopardizing our credit and the world economy. I'm getting a sense of deja vu because, once again, Republicans are recklessly demanding draconian spending cuts to programs that hardworking U.S. families rely on in exchange for allowing the Treasury Department to pay for spending that Congress, including most of them, have already voted to authorize. If you want to talk about spending cuts, right, it seems to me to that the, the budget zone. That could have been the, the time to do that, but not to if it flushes the from full here, faith and credit of the United be a States the rest risk. Of the day. Chairman Powell, can you Watch talk about breaks. the catastrophic damage a debt default would inflict on the economy? Uh, so I guess I will start, if I can, by saying that um, these are really matters between uh, the executive branch and, and Congress. We, we do not seek to play a role in these policy right. issues. I sold out of UNCY, um, 1000 bucks At the end of the profit. day, there's only one solution that, to this problem, and that is Congress, whatever else may happen will happen, but Congress really needs to raise the debt ceiling. That's the only, only way out in a timely way that allows us to pay all of our bills when and as due. And if we fail to do so, um, I think that the consequences are, are hard to estimate, uh, but they could be extraordinarily averse, adverse, and, and could do longstanding harm. Well, it, I, I think uh, that's, a, that's a mild statement of what would happen. Uh, I understand. I didn't ask you to engage in the, the congressional executive branch roles. I asked you about the, the abstract question of what happens if you have a debt default. Uh, isn't even this constant fight putting into question the possibility that the United States will not honor its full faith and credit have consequences within the economy? In principle, it could. I think uh, markets tend and, uh, and observers tend to watch this and tend to think that it will work out, and it, and it has in the past worked out. So it needs to work out this time, too. Now, seeing your, your testimony before the committee, is it fair to say that you'll do whatever is necessary to tame inflation? I, we have a do we serve a dual mandate and we will we will do what we can everything we can to restore price and, stability while also serving maximum employment and primarily that means uh, uh, additional rate increases would it not There's, what other tool do you have that's what we have the balance sheet the shrinkage of the balance sheet will continue too but it's principally rate hikes so the question is when does that part of doing anything necessary to tame employment I mean to tame inflation come into conflict with your other mandate of maximum employment? Uh, not now, uh, where when we have the lowest uh, unemployment in 54 years and where we have, uh, you know, a, a labor market that is uh, extremely tight, uh, extremely. So, but in, in uh, that, that time could come, but it really isn't now, where we're very far from our, uh, uh, from our uh, price stability mandate. And, and in effect, uh, the economy is past uh, most estimates of, of, uh, of maximum employment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Menendez. Um, Senator Kennedy of Louisiana is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Powell, thank you for being here. Thank you for to you and your team. All right, this is the guy. For helping to save He's the economy hilarious. during the pandemic meltdown. <laughs> Just get ready. Um, for what it's worth, I'm generally supportive of the actions of the Fed right now, and I, I'm not going to ask you to that today to blame anybody. Um, I'm getting ready. <laughs> when Congress spends money, it stimulates the economy, does it not? Well, it, it would depend on whether that's funded by tax increases or not. But, so if there's a spending that's, that's not accompanied by taxes would have a net at the margin stimulative effect. Well, and when Congress borrows money to spend even more, he that stimulates up. the economy even more, does it not? At the margin, yeah. Okay. So then why? If Congress reduced <laughs> the rate of growth in its spending and reduced the rate of growth in its debt accumulation. Who's whispering? This is me. This is Ben. The second 
it, it would make your job easier in reducing inflation, would it not? Oh, UNC is running now. I don't think fiscal policy right now is a big factor driving inflation at this moment, uh, but it's absolutely essential that we do uh, slow the pace of growth, particularly for the areas of the budget. All right, let's try growing. to unpack this then. <clears throat> I'm not trying to trick you. You're raising interest rates. You're raising interest rates to slow the economy, are you not? Yes, to cool the economy off. Um, and one of the ways you measure your success, other than fluctuation in gross domestic product, is the unemployment rate. Is it not? Yes, one of the measures. Okay. So in effect, this, I'm not being critical. When you're slowing the economy, you're trying to put people out of work. That's your job, is it not? Not really. We're trying to we're trying to restore price stability. No, um, you're trying you're trying to raise not, not the wages. you're trying well, to raise the unemployment rate. There are and, a lot, and so there are a lot mean, of that mean I know you don't like the phrase, so let me strike it. You're trying to raise the unemployment rate, are you not? No, we're not trying to raise it. We're trying to realign supply and demand, which could happen through a bunch of channels. Like for example, uh, you know, just job openings. All job right, let openings. Me, let me could, put it another way, okay? The economists did a, did a wonderful study. They looked at, at, at 10 disinflationary periods in America going all the way back to the 1950s. Disinflation is what you're trying to do. It's a slowing in the rate of inflation. Am I right? Yes. In other words, prices don't go down. They just don't go up as fast. Deflation is when prices actually go down. You're trying to achieve disinflation, are you not? Yes, we are. Okay. Based on history, in the 10 times that we got inflation down, disinflation since the 1950s, Bro, I... in order to Unsee reduce again. inflation by 2%, unemployment had to go up 3.6%. Now, that's history, is it not? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but yes, the standard has been that there have been recessions and downturns when okay. the Fed has tried to reduce inflation. Now, right now, the, the current inflation rate is 6.4%, and the current unemployment rate is 3.4%. Now, if history is right, I'm not asking you to, to, These to candles are still big. again blame anybody. But if history is right, unless you get some help in order to get inflation down from 6.4%, to let's say 4.4 percent, and the unemployment rate is going to have to rise to 7 percent based on history. That's what the record would say. Okay, and to get inflation down to 2.2 percent, based on history, an immutable fact, unemployment would have to go to 10.6 percent. Okay, back would to 417. You already no, broke I, below I it. Big level that's here. what the record shows. That's what the history now, shows. Now, downtrend can yeah, continue yeah, I, violently. I, I don't think that kind of a number is, is it, at all in play I mean, here. I, I know you're reluctant to admit it, and you don't want to get in the middle of a policy uh, dispute. But I think it's undeniable. It's undeniable that the only way we're going to get this sticky inflation down is to attack it on the monetary side, which you're doing. And dollar coming back up. And on the fiscal side, which means Congress has got to reduce the rate of growth of spending and reduce, reduce the rate of growth of, of debt accumulation. Now, I get that you don't want to get in the middle of that fight. But the more we help on the fiscal side, the fewer people you're going to have to put out of work. Isn't that a fact? Please answer. It could work out that way. Okay. Sir? Uh, it could work out that way. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Senator Kennedy. Senator Reed of Rhode Island is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. He wasn't uh, that funny today. Paul, for being here today. Uh, we saw in the wake of COVID. Hey, you're about to go down another low. You're breaking levels. The downtrend is, uh, and it is intact, in my friends. Of, in some respects of rebuilding a supply chain with emphasis on sourcing in the United States. To what extent did that disruptive supply chain contribute to inflation, and to what extent will the new, if you envisioned it, the new supply chain that is located yeah, yeah, and in the is getting United clobbered. States, 40, 10, you're about to hit a new low. These candles are big. Inflation. I don't know if you feel so it the, here. The initial outbreak but of these inflation was are all huge about already. Uh, spending on goods where people couldn't spend on services. So good spending went way up, and the, the global supply chain, many, many goods are imported the global supply chain just collapsed, and that was the source of the original inflation. It has now spread 
over the last two years to housing and also to the rest of the service sector. So to your question, we are seeing goods prices, Yield goods curve inflation is about to go has triple been coming digits. down for some time now. It's still too high, but and it's Fed coming futures down. Are pricing in housing services, 50 basis points uh, as the predominant, is, is, as most likely in the pipeline, for now. You see the new leases that are being signed, and what that tells you is that in the next six to 12 months, we will see that come down. But this, this big service sector that's everything else, which is financial services, medical services, travel and leisure, uh, all of those things, that's really where this, that's the source of the inflation we have now, which had nothing to do with the supply, or not much to do with the supply chains. That's where, that's where the challenge is now. And is there anything that you can do that would target th that service area without affecting the other areas? There's not really. You know, we are, the, our uh, monetary policy tools are, are famously powerful but blunt. Uh, a different topic, and that is, as you probably aware, the Fifth Circuit uh, delivered a ruling in the Community Financial Services Association versus CFPB that the CFPB's funding mechanism is unconstitutional. Uh, just like the Board of Governors, the CFPB is a bureau of the Federal Reserve. Both the Board of Governors and the CFPB rely on the same source of funds and draw on those funds in virtually identical ways. If the Board of Governors' funding structure would be found unconstitutional, what would the implications be for the country and monetary policy? Well, they, it would be very significant, but I, I have to say I am, we have significant responsibilities, but I would uh, be reluctant to comment on a case that's before the Supreme Court. Uh, but it is, a, it is certainly something that you've had people examine for possible ramifications. Yes, and you know, the central banks tend to be self-funding because of the way, that, the way they work, and that's a key factor of our independence. Uh, uh, We've gone back and forth on the impact of uh, rate heights on, on workers, and uh, you've indicated previously that wages uh, have not been spiraling upwards necessarily, and that inflation expectations and dollar hit a new stable. high on that low. Uh, but uh, the impact on increased interest rates are usually felt more by low to moderate income people. Uh, is there any way you can work yourself out of that dilemma? <laughs> um, so where, where we are right now, of course, is very low unemployment. Uh, wages have been moderating, mm -hmm. and they've been doing so without uh, a softening in the labor market, without a rising unemployment, really. And that's a good thing. So um, we, we really okay, don't about know. To set a new this, low the right current here. situation this is a breaks. combination you might get of air breaks, but more typical supply and demand technically issues, haven't but hit also a low just things that we haven't seen before, like, like the war in, in Ukraine, like the, you know, like the supply chains that you mentioned. Right. So uh, we have many unusual factors, and I, I don't think anybody knows with confidence how this is going to play out. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Senator Reed. Well, I might uh, bounce off of Senator it. Senator Brett, Alabama is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Powell, it's great to have you here today. Um, over the past two years, we've seen the highest inflation of my lifetime, driving up costs for American families across the board. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, the annual inflation rate in 2021 was 7%, and in 2022, it was 6.5%. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the cost of food went up 10 Bro, they all have different in inflation numbers. And the real We've effects read of like that three is moms and dads numbers. across this nation that are working to put food they don't on even the table know. for their kids, for their babies, had a harder time doing that. This has devastated hardworking Americans, causing a kitchen table crisis in every corner of our country, as the price of food, energy, and housing have all skyrocketed. In response, the Federal Reserve has raised the Federal Reserve Fund rate more than four percentage points. Being far from transient, inflation has remained persistent, high, and well above the Fed's long-run goal of remaining under 2%. In the coming year, what factors and indicators are you paying attention to as you and the Federal Open Market Committee decide on whether to increase rates? Oh, someone paid her to say this. This is a perfect stock so, market um, question. I'd say a couple things to that. Uh, this could be good. First, uh, we're looking. We're going to be looking at inflation in the three sectors that I mentioned: the goods sector, the housing sector, and then the broader service sector. And we need the the, the inflation that's already underway in the goods sector to continue, and uh, that's really important. In in the in the housing sector, we just need 
the time to pass so that that reported inflation comes down and it's effectively in the pipeline as long as as long as new leases are being signed at relatively small increases. So we'll be watching very, very carefully though at at the larger service sector, which is 56% of the of consumer spending and more than that of what of what's currently inflation. So that's one thing we'll be we'll be watching that very carefully. Also, we raised rates very quickly last year, and we know that monetary policy tightening policy has delayed effects. It takes a while for the full effects to be seen in economic activity and inflation. So we're we're watching carefully to see those effects come in, uh, into play. So we're and we're we're aware that we haven't seen the full effects yet, and we're taking that into account as we as we think about rate hikes. So when you're looking at this, um, obviously not to get into a policy discussion, but if there were an increase of energy production in this country, do you feel like that would help drive down inflation? Well, I, th I think over time, more energy would mean would mean uh, lower energy prices. But we we are very focused on the, on the on what we call core inflation because mm -hmm. that really is that is what is driven by you know, really by demand, and our tools are really aimed at demand. Right, understood, but I feel like the cost of energy is not just what you pay at the pump. It ends up affecting every okay, good Okay, you're um, flushing new low nation. now. Additionally, I'd like to ask you about eight, labor eight participation. Till 4, so when you look at the unemployment rate, and we've heard my colleagues discuss people having to be displaced in order for us to maybe get to the you inflation flush rate in that, a little bit of that a we would like as a nation. I'd like to focus hold, on the labor you're gonna participation go lower. rate. So right now it's 62.4%. If there were an increase in people coming back into the workforce, um, would that be a positive factor with regards to driving us down to the 2% rate that you would want to achieve? I, I think that it would. I mean, remember those people coming into jobs, yes. that, would be, that would be great because the economy clearly wants yep. more people than are currently working. Of course, those people would then spend more, so it wouldn't be a zero-sum game. But it would be great for the country and great for them if they were to come into the labor force. Amen. Um, I believe that increasing in capital requirements on financial institutions would have a chilling effect on the economy and um, the availability of financial services. And last week, I joined many of my colleagues in sending you a letter uh, that expressed concerns that if the Federal Reserve decides to conduct a, quote, holistic review of capital standards, as we heard um, Senator Scott I, talk I about sold earlier. Out of Okta, so is the Federal Reserve concerned that the profit, impact I wanted to more, the economy of increasing capital requirements on financial institutions at a time when inflation remains persistently high um, would, would, would cause an issue? So I, I think it's always a balance. We know that higher capital makes banks safer and sounder. Uh, we also know that you're um, you, you will at the margin um, provide less credit the more capital you have to have. I, so, but I think it's it's never exactly clear that you're at the perfect equilibrium, and, and it's a fair question, I think, to look at that. And I know um, out of respect for the chairman and trying to stay in my time, I will just end by saying um, I heard what you said. Obviously, as you have said, the Federal Reserve is not and will not be a climate policymaker. I just want to thank you for your public statement on that. I agree with you that there's a difference between policymakers and financial regulators and certainly look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks, Senator Britt. Senator uh, Warner from, Mass from um, Virginia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Powell, it's good to see you again. Let me um, start by saying I depending on who's asking questions or either pounding you for how quickly we're going to drive that inflation back to 2% or pounding you on making sure that we don't push the economy into a recession and drive up unemployment. I got to tell you, you know, and it's, uh, these are maybe not the cheap seats, uh, but I actually think you've done a pretty good job in, in terms of both ratcheting up rates and then starting to tail, tail off a little bit. I think we all were concerned by the January numbers were it popped up a little bit more. Um, I wish, Mr. Chairman, we were actually having this hearing two weeks from now because we're going to have a lot more data later in this week and next week. Um, but I want to net net. Um, it's you know, we've still got ways to go, and the January numbers were concerning. But I do think your tailored approach. Um, um, uh, we can all second guess, but I think it, it, it has been the right approach. And I'm going to commend you on that. I want to get into get two questions in. One, one of the areas that I am very worried about is commercial debt. I mean, we've got a, a Bloomberg story here showing you know we're going to hit a six trillion dollar wall uh, this year on refinancing. Um, where I'm particularly concerned is the issue around commercial real estate. Um, you know. As we recover from COVID, Who is a lot of things background? are getting back to normal, but clearly the transformation 
of where people work is going through a fundamental transition, and uh, I hope people. All do right, I told my to AMD office, too. Took like two fifty on that. Prefer working, working elsewhere. That's going to fundamentally change the real estate market, uh, in on the commercial side, and I do believe we're going to hit a potentially a cliff here of. Uh, of, of a totally unexpected problem in terms of commercial real estate. How are you looking at that issue and recognizing there's lots of bumps coming out of COVID? This one seems to be more unique in nature. Shut and, up. and how are you thinking about that issue? That's not so me. The first one on, on commercial debt, uh, business debt generally, the, it's, it's kind of been moving sideways as a percent of GDP. So you don't see, you, you don't see a big spike going on or anything like that. Um, uh, however, of course, there are pockets of, uh, of concern, and particularly you, you pointed to, um, see, to uh, uh, the re you know, refinancing spike that has to happen. And I, I've seen those come and go before. Generally, markets can absorb them, maybe a, at a much higher rate this time. But it's something that we were well aware of and watching carefully. In terms of CRE, I would agree with you. The, the, the uh, occupancy of, um, of office space in many major uh, cities is just remarkably low, and and you you wonder how that can be. Now, over time, some of that's going to be made into condominiums and things like that, since we don't we don't seem to have quite enough housing um, in some places. Um, but the question is, what's the financial stability risk? It's it's not great for the largest institutions. Don't tend to have a lot of direct exposure to that. Some smaller banks actually do. Medium and small size banks do. We carefully monitor it. We we agree that that's a, that's a, an area that requires a lot of monitoring, and um, you know I'd say we're on the case. So, well, that will morph me into my last question. Something we've talked about, and a lot of my colleagues have um, talked about uh, with the large institutions. And other, I mean, I I do think uh, even some of the biggest critics um, of Dodd Frank, I think, would acknowledge our banking system is a heck of a lot stronger and in, was able to withstand. Um, uh, COVID in a, in a very healthy way. Um, but what we've also seen evolve is a, a vast amount of uh, financial institutions move beyond the regulatory perimeter. You know, the fact that we now have way over half of the mortgage origination coming from um, non-financing institutions because a lot of the, uh, the large entities, um, hedge funds, other funds that may be doing some of this commercial debt uh, or some of the CRE uh, debt, um, I'd like you to talk generally in the last 40 seconds or so of you know, how you think about this regulatory perimeter. I, I'm a big believer, and I know some of my colleagues are, that, you know, uh, that we ought to look less at charter and look at same risk, same regulation, maybe as a, as a guiding principle. And you know, we, uh, I know Senator Warren's been working on some work. I've been working on some work around crypto around that, that area. But there's a, a vast amount of activity that's taking place outside the regulatory perimeter. How should we be thinking about that, and how do we make sure that doesn't create the kind of uh, crisis sneak up that happened in 2008 on the non-regulated side of the house? I think you articulated the principle very well. It's same activity, same regulation. And that's, that covers crypto and, and all kinds of other activities. People are going to assume when, when they deal with something that looks like a money market fund that it has the same regulation as the money market fund or a bank deposit. And so stable coins need, need some attention in that respect. I just think that's, that's the basic principle. And you're right, so much, of our, uh, so much of intermediation has moved away from the regulated banks really for a long period of time. We've got to keep an eye on that. Thank, thank you, Chair Powell. We can keep looking at it. I hope it's okay, thank you, thank so. you. Senator Vance. I'm oh, sorry, Senator Haggerty of Tennessee. Thank you, Chairman Brown. And um, thank you very much, Ranking Member Scott, for holding this hearing. Chairman, it's great to see you again here. I appreciate your presence. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you about an item that I'm particularly concerned about. And that's the holistic <clears throat> review that uh, Senator Britt just brought up that um, Vice Chair Bauer is conducting right now. It's, it's generating a sense that higher capital requirements are on the horizon for us. And as I think about that in the context of what we've weathered, uh, you think about the, the, the situation uh, in 2020, it was an acute real life stress test, if you will. And I think that our financial system navigated that uh, admirably. Uh, in the past, Chair Powell, you told this committee that there's New York City revising minimum pay for uh, delivery workers. 2020, and that the capital That's why Uber and Dash are moving right now. Time, and I, I would note that those capital levels are at multi decade highs, are in aggregate adequate. And I just wanted to follow up on those prior statements and see if you still feel that way. So uh, 
I guess I would say it to you this way. We, uh, in our system, we have a vice chair for supervision who has statutory responsibilities. And when a new vice chair for supervision comes in, generally they're going to want to take a fresh look. Mm -hmm. That's what the former one, you know, uh, Vice Chair Quarles did, and that's the, Dan Cherulo kind of had the job on, it, on an informal basis, and that's what he did. So it's only natural that someone would come in and, and take a fresh look, and I think that's that's part of the process. The role of that person is to make recommendations on regulation supervision to the to the full board. The role of the board is to consider those when made. Mm -hmm. And this, to me, this just comes under under that heading. Well, as as, as it uh, as the review is underway, and I appreciate that uh, context. One aspect of it seems to us as an apparent willingness to undo the tailoring requirements that were enacted as part of S twenty one fifty five, and I understand that nothing has been finalized. Uh, regarding the regulations, uh, it, it's a concerning prospect if that's the case. The Fed's general counsel just yesterday alluded to undoing 2155 by, quote, pushing down the Basel requirements on banks that were intentionally given relief in that bill. So I want to be perfectly clear that the banking regulators themselves can't just simply ignore or selectively enforce the laws. Um, and again, I realize that the, the details of the study haven't been finalized or made public, but if the proposal put forth by Vice Chair Barr is either unduly aggressive or appears to contradict the spirit of S2155, will you vote for it? I'd have to, I can't answer that in the abstract, of course, but I, I would say we're, as an institution, very strongly committed to tailoring, and uh, anything we do is going to reflect, uh, you know, tailoring of institutions according to their risk, and I mean, that's that's a principle that, we, that we'll stick with. I, I think it's quite important, again, given the, 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 the legislative intent here and the, 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 the concerns that we maintain that uh, in the face of what General Counsel said just yesterday. I appreciate your perspective in terms of keeping that in place. Um, I'd like to come with my next chairman, my next question, Chairman Powell, with, with uh, starting the question by underscoring the importance of the independence of the Fed's monetary policy. Right now, the economic picture is about as uncertain as I can remember. We've had large companies in the private sector who are in the midst of planning layoffs and forecasting serious economic weakness in the quarters to come. Yet on the other hand, the current economic data seems to be robust. Uh, inflation showed some signs of softening in the past several releases. So I just hope, Chair Powell, that you could briefly tell us how you synthesize these seemingly contradictory data. So it, just quickly, uh, at the end of last year, we saw a couple of um, very uh, promising, um, modest increase, uh, modest inflationary readings in November and December. But uh, earlier this year, those were some of that improvement was revised away. In addition, we got a very strong reading on inflation in January, also a very strong jobs reading, also very strong retail sales. And so, as I pointed out in my, in my testimony, um, we, we're looking at, at a reversal, really, of what we thought uh, we were seeing to some extent, a, a partial reversal. It's still true. It's still the case that we're seeing progress on inflation. We're seeing goods inflation come, has come down significantly. There's improvement in housing inflation in the pipeline. There's not a lot of improvement yet to be seen in the largest sector, which is non-housing services. So we, uh, inflation's running at, core inflation's running at 4.7% on a 12-month basis. I think nothing about the data suggests to me that we've tightened too much. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it suggests that we still have work to do. In, the, in, in that context, uh, thinking about where the tightening goes and when it might, let, you know, w w where and when it might happen, where do you see the terminal Fed funds rate landing in this cycle? So we, we, we last wrote down our uh, our assessments, this individual assessments question. of that in, in December, and and I think the median range was basically people were clustered between five and five and a half. We're going to write down those again uh, as part of them. We do it four times a year. We'll do it around the March meeting, which is on the 21st and 22nd of March. And as I indicated uh, in my testimony, I think the, the, the data we've seen so far, and we still have other data to see, we yeah. still have significant data to see before the meeting, suggests that, that the, the ultimate rate that we write down will, may well be higher than what we wrote down in December. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's kind of still bearish, but the, still ambiguous. But that's, that's part of what dropped us here, and that's what has the Fed uh, futures thank you, moving. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the Fed has raised interest rates eight times over oh, the last year Elizabeth in what's been next. the most extreme <laughs> rate hike cycle in 40 years. The Fed's goal is to slow inflation, and your tool, raising interest rates, is designed to slow the economy and throw people out of work. 
So far, you haven't tipped the economy into recession, but you haven't brought inflation entirely under control either. And maybe the reason for that is that other things are also keeping prices high, things you can't fix with high interest rates, things like price gouging and supply chain kinks and a war in Ukraine. But you are determined to continue to raise interest rates, so I want to take a look at where you're headed. In December, the Fed released its projections on the state of the economy under your monetary policy plan. According to the Fed's own report, if you continue raising interest rates as you plan, unemployment will be 4.6% by the end of the year, more than a full point higher than it is today. Chair Powell, if you hit your projections, do you know how many people who are currently working, going about their lives, will lose their jobs? I don't, uh, I don't have that number in front of me. I will say it's, it's not, it's it's not just an intended consequence. It's well, not but it is, and it's in your report, and that would be about 2 million people who would lose their jobs, people who are working right now making their mortgages. So, Chair Powell, if you could speak directly to the two million again, it seems like we're going a little lower on the terminal rate jobs question. today. It just it leaves too many questions up to in get the air. Fired how high. over the next year, but that's what, what I'm worried about here. Them? How would you explain your view that they need to lose their jobs? I would explain to people more broadly that that inflation is extremely high and it's hurting the working people of this country badly. All of them, not just two million of them, but all of them are suffering under high inflation, and we are taking the, the only measures we have to bring inflation down. And putting 2 million people out of work is just part of the cost, and they just have to bear it? Will, they, will, will working people be better off if, if we just walk away from our jobs and, and inflation remains well, 5 let 6 percent? Let me ask you about what happens if you do this. <laughs> Since He's the end of back. World War II, there have been 12 times in which the unemployment rate he has increased <laughs> by one percentage point within one year, exactly what you're aiming to do right now. How many of those times did the U.S. economy avoid falling into a recession? You know, it's it's not as black and white as it, it very, Just very Just look infrequent. at the numbers. It actually yeah, no, is no. pretty black Alan Bliner's white. written a book on this. And, there have and, been 12 times yeah. that we've seen a one-point increase in the, in the unemployment rate in a year. That's exactly what your Fed report has put out as the projection and the plan based on how you're going to keep raising these interest rates. The dollar how coming many back times up, did the economy for low. fail Bonds to fall into a recession here. after doing that out of 12 times? I think the number is zero. I think the number is zero. That's exactly right. So then the question becomes, we've got 2 million 40, people 10. out of work. Can you stop it at 2 million people? Um, history suggests that the Fed has a terrible track record of containing modest increases in the unemployment rate. Once the economy starts shedding jobs, it's kind of like a runaway train. It is really hard to stop. In fact, in 11 out of the 12 times that the unemployment rate increased by a full percentage point within one year, unemployment went on to rise another full percentage point on top of that. If that's what happens this time, we'd be looking at at least three and a half million people who would lose their jobs. So, Chair Powell, if you reach your goal and two million people get laid off by the end of this year, and then, just like in 11 out of 12 times that unemployment has risen by a point in a single year, it keeps on rising, and then we've got two and a half million people out of work. We've got three million people who get laid off. We've got three and a half million people who get laid off. What's your plan? Well, Coverage. right now the unemployment rate is 3.4%, <laughs> which is the lowest in 54 years. And we actually don't think that we need to see a sharp or enormous increase in unemployment to get inflation under control. I, I'm looking at your projections. Do you call two mi laying off two million people this year not a sharp increase? In I would say four and a half percent. Explain that to the two million families who are going to be out of work. We're not again. We're not targeting any of that. We're, but I would say even four and a half percent unemployment is is well better than than most of the time for the last you know seventy five years. In other words, you don't have a plan to stop a runaway train if it occurs. You know, Chair Powell, you are gambling with people's lives, and there's a pile of data. 
showing that price gouging and supply chain kinks and the war in Ukraine are driving up prices. You cling to the idea that there's only one solution, lay off millions of workers. We need a Fed that will fight for families. And if you're not going to lead that charge, we need someone at the Fed who She's will. been trying to get rid of him for like four years. Senator Vance of Ohio. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Powell, thanks so much for being here. Uh, I have a question that's slightly far afield, but uh, how often do you get to talk to the Federal Reserve Chairman? So I might as well ask it. So, so to give some context here, my family comes from Appalachia, uh, particularly my grandparents grew up in southeastern Kentucky, coal country, and then moved to southern Ohio, where I now have the honor of representing uh, all of Ohio. And you know, one of the things that you hear a lot when you study the, the, the regional history of Appalachia is it's often described as possessing a resource curse, right? So there's a lot of coal in central Appalachia uh, that enables a certain amount of consumption. Obviously, consumption is good. People need food and medicine and other things. Uh, but there's also a, good, a pretty good argument that for a host of reasons, it causes malinvestment in, in the region. And consequently, you have lower productivity growth, lower innovation in an economy that's much less diversified and much less dynamic. Um, I'm wondering, when I, when I hear about the history, when I think about and read about the history of Appalachia and the resource curse, uh, I'm, I'm struck by, some of the, by, by the idea that you could make a similar argument about the reserve currency status of the United States dollar. Uh, Americans have enjoyed one of the greatest privileges of the international economy for the last nearly eight decades, a strong dollar that acts, of course, as the world's reserve currency. You know that better than I do. Now, this has obviously been great for American purchasing power. We, en we enjoy cheaper imports. Uh, Americans, when they travel abroad, benefit from lower, uh, lower costs. Uh, but it does come at a cost to American producers. I think in some ways you can argue that the reserve currency status is a massive subsidy to American consumers, but a massive tax on American producers. Um, now, I know the strong dollar is sort of a sacred cow of the Washington consensus, but when I survey the American economy and I, I see our mass consumption of mostly useless imports on the one hand and our hollowed out industrial base on the other hand, uh, I, I wonder if the reserve currency status also has some downsides and not just some upsides as well. And let, let me just put a final point on this, and I'd love to get your, your, your thoughts on that, Chairman Powell. Uh, we're, of course, now the main supporter of a massive land war in Europe between the Russians and the Ukrainians. I read recently, and I, I'm not going to you know, comment on, on how perfect or precise these estimates are, but I read recently that the United States is trying to ramp up production from 14,000 artillery shells to 20,000 artillery shells. That's per month, while the Russians are firing 20,000 artillery shells in Ukraine per day. And when I look at the American economy, we have a lot of financial engineers and a lot of diversity consultants. We don't have a lot of people making things. And I worry that the reserve currency status and the, the lack of control we have over our currency so a lot of is perhaps driving here, that. I, I'd love to get your, your feedback on that. What if are the upsides and downsides here, going to of the reserve flat. currency? And here it begins. That's a, that's a big question to try to, <laughs> try to answer. You have two minutes, today. Chairman Powell, so <laughs> plenty of time. I, might, I can't even get started on that. So we are, we are the world's reserve currency, of course, and that's because of our democratic institutions. It's because of uh, uh, our, our control over inflation over many, many, many years. The, public tr the world trusts uh, the rule of law in the United States, and those are the things. So once you're the world's reserve, Bro, reserve this lady currency, behind it's Powell used is in playing all over candy the world right in now. transactions, and it's the place where people want to be it. in times of stress is in dollar-denominated sure. assets. Now, um, is it so? Of course, we benefit by being able to pay for our goods all over the world, pay for everything anywhere in the world, mostly with dollars. That's that's an advantage. Um, <laughs> She's straight up playing. You know, there, there, there are some economic theory around that that it also has uh, burdens of various kind, but I, I I can't call it all back to mind. But um, you know, oh, the other thing is, you know, it's a very stable equilibrium, but it's not a perfect one. It's, it, it's not a permanent one, rather. So. There isn't any obvious uh, candidate to replace the United States right now where you can have free flow of capital in and out of the country, where you can really trust the rule of law and democratic institutions and, and keeping, uh, you know, keeping price stability, which you can here. Do you think it gives us less control of our own currency, the fact that it's become the world's reserve currency? You, control over our currency. Um, I'm not sure. So essentially, what we try to control is price stability. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't make it harder for us to uh, keep inflation under control. The United okay, States has a smaller external sector than most. Oh wow! Orders came in above this, so this is going to get. So 
mainly what's going to get interest in here, Chad. Uh, this could be our final United showdown is, is domestic of the day in terms of it makes it harder for us to affect con or and to fight back against currency manipulation to control seven the export and import close. flows in a way that stabilizes our own manufacturing sector. Well, I mean, what's what's important there is really the level of the dollar. And, you know, when the dollar is stronger, obviously, our, pre our, our, our wares are more expensive abroad and that kind of thing. But we don't we don't have an opinion on we that's the matters of uh, the level of the dollar really matters for the Treasury Department and the, and the elected government, not for the Fed. Thank you, Chairman Bell. Thank Thanks, you, Senator Vance. Uh, Senator Van Hollen of Maryland is recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, all those Mr. Chairman, Chairman buying. Powell. Thank you uh, for being here and for your service. Uh, I know the Fed is experiencing lots of challenges these days. I've got a couple questions that are just, I think, basic yes or no's and then some longer uh, questions. Um, would you agree that changes in the size of corporate profits Chad. can be one of the factors that affects the inflation the latest rate? latest headline that came through? Yes. Well, traders are fearing now, recently, a 75 uh, basis point recently we saw that the employment hike. cost index, which, as you know, measures the growth of wages and benefit costs, grew at roughly 4% on an annualized basis in the fourth quarter of 2022. Is that right? That's my recollection, yes. So if corporate profits Wild were headline. to decline from the extremely high levels not even uh, that in. we saw recently, <laughs> would it be possible to sustain the 4% growth rate in the employment cost index for an extended period of time, even as we get inflation down to the target of 2%? Depends on what you mean by extended period of time. So you would not, without a very, very large increase in productivity, which would be great, but that we don't expect, you wouldn't be able to sustain 4% uh, wage inflation over, over the longer term. Over, over the shorter term, though, yes. So over the shorter term, that would not be a justification in and of itself uh, for raising and rates. And volume is right? not that crazy today, believe it or not. Well, I, I, you're so pretty I, much I same volume as wages the last affect two days. prices and prices affect wages. I, I think we do think that a some softening in labor market conditions will be will be will, will happen uh, as as we try to get inflation under control and will need to happen. Right, but that's uh, but, a, that's more a prediction about your efforts to fight inflation. Are you saying that? Are you saying that simply looking at the current four percent growth rate in the short term is an excuse for jacking up interest rates? I think the no. I, what I would say is that the overall, all the data we look at it in, the, in the labor market, including uh, not just that measure of wage, but wages, so here but it others, is, the also test. unemployment, also they're breaking uh, through the levels. Four thousand flat on the futures and quits will be and tested. Like all of that, you six put points that away into from the S and P too. A, uh, a, the picture, and I think you see a labor market that is extremely tight and is probably contributing to inflation. I, I've never said it was the main cause. Right. I, I think it's air breaking. The larger point here. Um, based on your response to that first question about growth and profits is right as corporations have a decision as to whether or not they're going to pocket more for profit, which they can, or provide higher wages uh, to their employees. And if you actually lowered your profit margins, you could sustain a higher wage okay, increase without, Dollar still without the violating high. the 2 percent inflation. Bonds have isn't recovered that, for the most right? part. Yes, Big I mean, gap I, between dollar when I hear profit margins, what I'm what we're seeing in the economy is is a pretty much about shortages and and, uh, you know, supply chain blockages. And when there's not enough of a product, what happens and there's a lot of demand, what you see is prices going up as the as the supply chains get fixed and, and shortages are alleviated. You will see prices inflation coming down. You'll see margins coming down and that will certainly help with inflation. Right. But but profits are the margin, right? They're they're going up beyond what they were before. That means that even with the increase of costs because of supply chains, they're, they're making more profits, which, which again, uh, that they, can, they can do that. But my point is that as a contributor to inflation, as you indicated uh, in response to the first question, let me ask you about the tight labor market, uh, because one of the issues uh, in the tight labor market is parents with kids, including a lot of moms who um, would like to go back into the market, but are not able to do so because of lack of affordable child care. The other issue is immigration, and I know that you've gotten some recent data on how some immigration figures um, actually have, have softened a little bit the tightness in the labor market. Can you just talk broadly about those two factors, affordable child care um, and immigration, more legal immigration, and how they could affect labor force participation and therefore also reduce inflation pressures? 
So on the on the first, um, we don't we don't make recommendations or evaluate fiscal policy, but I will say there's there's research that shows that um, um, it helps keep women in the workforce when there's childcare available, which is I think kind of self evident. Um, Sorry, the second was um, impact of immigration. Immigration, yeah. yeah. So what I what we what I talked about with you is actually uh, in, as part of the January Bureau of, of Labor Statistics report, which comes it, the, the sorry the employment report for January, which comes out in, in early February. There is a section in there about more more people. The the Census Department has increased its esti estimate of the workforce by something like eight hundred and seventy thousand. And a significant part of that has been immigration. So, and that has moved up participation by a little bit, but and it, and it may be part of why we're here. It may be part so of why we're hearing four thousand five you know, new in low the labor market. Really, that, that, first that new lows really since uh, eight o'clock. Labor shortage pressures that we were but hearing about in two thousand twenty-one and twenty-two. There it is now. Your last line of defense here. Four thousand may be alleviating. The key. So that that would contribute to that. Clearly, On more people. Clearly, the economy is calling for more people with. Two, essentially two job openings for every unemployed person, and this can be this can be a source of those uh, people. Right, and that would reduce the tightness of the labor market and, and reduce pressures on inflation, right? May already be doing so. Thank you. Uh, uh, Senator, uh, Senator Kramer. 4,000 on SPY. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Powell, for being here, and I can't Four resist responding away. to a few things that um, my friends on the left have said. For example, in his opening statement, Chairman Brown had a long list of things that raising interest rates won't do. Interest rates, interest raising interest rates won't fill in the blank. I'm going to fill in the blank with a couple things. How about raising interest rates won't stop Senate Democrats and President Biden from overtaxing, overspending, overborrowing, <laughs> overregulating? Chairman Brown said we should rebuild our supply chain by curbing offshoring, corporate offshoring. I agree. He talked a lot about corporate greed contributing to inflation. Okay, but how about regulatory greed contributing to corporate greed? How do you expect corporations to reinvest money if you overregulate their ability to invest that money right here in the United States of America? You want to onshore some things? How about energy policy? How about instead of looking to Venezuela or Iran for oil supply or Russia, or rather than looking to China for electric vehicles and chips and... and um, solar panels, how about we have a strategy that onshores those things by reducing regulation, reducing taxes, and letting those corporations reinvest their profits rather than, than um, you know, stock buybacks or, 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 or uh, dividends. This idea that somehow the Federal Reserve is supposed to keep inflation in check while half of the government works against it is mind-boggling. Now, I know, Mr. Chairman, you don't like to comment on policy. The you and I have been round and round now. this. You were anxious to, to advise us to spend lots of money during the pandemic. I don't think a lot of people blame you for that. You wouldn't respond to, to um, efforts by the Biden administration after we were in a robust recovery from not spending so much money. Okay, I can appreciate the change. But now we're in this debate between Republicans and Democrats, between particularly the House Speaker and the President, on how to raise the debt ceiling. And you've made some pretty strong comments about raising the debt ceiling, absent from structural reforms that would actually help us get back to a reasonable growth. Uh, and, and so I, I just, I, I warn you again, if you're gonna make political comments, if you're gonna, if you're gonna advise us on policy, be consistent with it. Now, I want to get back to the greening of the Federal Reserve and this, these, I call them stress tests, you can call them whatever we, we call them. But I'm concerned that now the Federal Reserve is starting down this path. It, it, maybe it's you still slightly haven't tested 4,000 flat, uh, so about, keep about that in mind. Climate stress testing. If it goes below 4,000, I just want to ask you this. I mean, if we're going to go the, down uh, that path, if the Federal Reserve is now going to become part of the, the Federal Climate Police Force, so just back to are the we going to consider? the ramifications of having entire communities and economies, factories and manufacturers, um, you know, whatever, energy en entities, um, large server farms, leaving them susceptible to a very unreliable, very expensive energy source. Is that part of the stress test? No, that, those are considerations for elected people, not for us. We have a we have a narrow narrow role to play here, but it's a real role, and I can talk about that if you'd like. 
Well, I, yeah, I would like you to because again, if we're gonna if we're gonna start doing stress tests for the six largest financial institutions related to climate, uh, which really is more weather than climate, then are we gonna consider the effects of of uh, an unreliable energy source at several locations throughout our country? So our, our only focus is on the, the safety and soundness of these institutions, and do they understand uh, and can they manage all of the risks that they that they run in their business model. That's that's our our only goal. We're not we're, again. We're not looking to be climate policy makers. Climate policy is go clearly going to have effects on regions, on companies, on individuals, on countries, disparate effects. And you know that is not for that is not for unelected people like us who have a narrow mandate. But I think it does touch climate. And you're you're right to be concerned that we, you know, that we find ourselves on a slippery slope. But honestly, I I think. The, the climate scenarios are something that the banks are already doing uh, and themselves, and and uh, the climate guidance is something that that they're looking for. They want to know how we're thinking about this, but we 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 will try really hard not to get on a slippery slope and find ourselves becoming climate okay, policy makers. It's just down. not appropriate well, for an independent agency. The lowest okay. four thousand. Uh, and I completely agree, and I hope you stick to that. And I think you ought it. to can, you know ask the banks to consider what the overreaction might you know, what kind of vulnerabilities that might expose. With that, I just, it, with regard to what Senator Warren was saying uh, on her m monologue, one thing about ideologues, they have the luxury of binary choices. You have a really big job and, and you have a single, in my mind, one, one and a half, maybe two, two um, missions. Um, I think the first one handles the second one okay. But it's got to be tough when the, the White House is working against you and you don't have to comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. ASML through the low. Uh, Senator Tester of Montana is recognized. Uh, Chair Powell, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, and thank you for serving it in this critical role at this critical time. Um, I have talked many times in this committee, uh, and I especially right now uh, cannot overstate the importance of the Fed's independence. Um, I said it in the previous administration. I say it now. We cannot be playing politics with our economy. Um, and that is a fact. Um, uh, from a climate standpoint, I would just tell you it's entirely artificial right now anyway, because if you look at the hundreds of billions of dollars this country puts out every year in disasters due to climate instability, uh, we ought to be asking our question, is, is that sustainable? Because quite frankly, it has to be done, and I don't think it's sustainable. So we've got to start looking for some solutions on the climate side uh, sooner rather than later. Um, my uh, the reserve has a tough job, and I really appreciate uh, how you've done it. Um, reasonable, uh, working together, making hard decisions uh, for the good of the economy. Um, we have to get this right. So the question is, how much has inflation decreased since its peak? It depends on the measure, but it's meaningfully at least a couple percentage points. Okay, and 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 has an unemployment. Uh, gone down as inflation has gone down. Unemployment has gone down. Yes, it has to okay. now a 54-year low. Yes. So, so, so the question becomes, and and I always think back to, uh, in 1998, uh, I bought some property, uh -huh. and and the interest on that property was 10% in 1998, and I thought I got a hell of a deal. By the way, <laughs> I thought it was just great, but the truth is, is Interest rates have been artificially low for the last, what, 20 years, probably? Um, and, and, and the question becomes, as you look at the economy and as you try to make the determination whether the inflation is caused by demand or supply, um, where does all that fall in to you, your, your decision making moving forward? Well, you mean the level of interest rates. So there's, there are, uh, in theory, there's this thing called the neutral level of interest, and we, we know it only by its works. And neutral is, is the level that neither pushes the economy up nor pulls it down. And it changes over time. This is the thing about these, these important variables in economics. So what's happened over, until now was that the neutral level of interest went down and down and down to the point where you know, many countries had zero interest rates and very low inflation. Now we have this shock, a series of shocks associated with the pandemic, and we have rates at 4.5%, our, our policy rate, and we have the labor market very strong and inflation reacting somewhat. But And it does raise the question of where is the neutral rate. Honestly, we don't know. I think we look at the current situation, and uh, we see that 
uh, we, there's not a lot of evidence that not a lot hard to make a case that we've over tightened it it means we need to to continue to tighten I think we're you know we're very mindful of the, of the lags with which our policy works we don't think we need uh, a significant increase in unemployment and we're certainly not aiming for one but um, we do think there'll be some softening in labor market conditions to get to two percent inflation when you're looking at at interest rates, uh, I know we, we talk about energy prices here and the price of gasoline, and uh, and then if you go over, in, uh, Europe is much, much higher. Uh, are, are we comparable? I'm just curious. Are we comparable with our interest rates here as is, is with, say, Europe? We're very close to where Canada is. We're a little bit higher than where Europe well, is. This Europe's guy traditionally had much lower inflation. They now have very have high inflation, nicer. and they're still increasing Tester rates, but they're a bit Montana. lower in terms of... Uh, Okay. Of rates, so if if we do not get the the inflation under control, and like I said, I think the steps you've taken have been reasonable and measured. Um, if we don't get it under control, what is that really? What are the impacts of that? Well, the the social costs of failure uh, is one way to think about it are very very high. So if if inflation were to continue, at some point it will become that will become the psychology. People will come and businesses will come to expect high inflation. And that will make it more self-perpetuating. That will mean an up and down economy. It'll mean, um, uh, you know, it'll mean something that looks more like what we've seen in periods of high inflation. Cap capital allocation is difficult in a world like that. Uh, it's not a good time for the economy. What, what we want to do is restore price stability firmly at back at 2% so that we can have the kind of strong labor market for a sustained period that we had before. Once again, thank you for your work. Thank you for your independence. Senator Daines. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Tester. I'll be handing off to Senator Cortez Masto when I'm finished up as well. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, good to have you here today. Um, when I am back in Montana, the number one issue I hear certainly across the state is the high cost of gas, the high cost of groceries, and overall how their paychecks are shrinking because of inflation. Um, it's, a, it's a crushing blow. It has real life impacts. It's top of mind issue for Montanans. It's also important to note the devastating impact it's gonna have on our nation's economic future. In fact, in October of last year, I sent a letter to Congressional Budget Office Director Swagel regarding the impact that high inflation and the elevated interest rates. So that last question was the first time they the brought up housing debt. and interest rates so far. His response painted a less than rosy picture. Again, you're trapped between the 4,000 and the 407. Then we got CBO's updated 4007. 10 year baseline forecast in February. And it confirmed the truly dire situation that we find ourselves in. Driven by interest payments on the debt the CBO now projects that cumulative deficits during the 10-year window, and I recognize where deficits come from. It's, it's irresponsible uh, spending here in Washington, but the cumulative deficits uh, during GBTC the 10-year window is running. That will trial is going on right $20 now. $20 trillion, the cumulative deficits. Not talking the debt, because it's going to grow the total federal debt. New low now, though. Watch out. Debt spies at 4000 Spies now below. Dollars Futures are five points away. Now, 2033 used to sound like a long ways away. We're 10 years away. 10 years goes by very, very quickly. Within five years, we're going to spend more on annual interest on the national debt than we spend on national defense. Think about that for a moment. And these are coming out of the CBO. These absolutely shocking, but quite frankly, predictable projections go back to a debate we vigorously had here in the banking community. I remember when uh, Lawrence Summers, of course, the former Secretary of Treasury under President Clinton, uh, economic advisor to President Obama, he warned us. He said, and he's practically warning my, my colleagues across the aisle, he says, you can't move forward with these purely partisan, you know, at that time, a $1.9 trillion spending extravaganza. We had a trillion dollars of unspent COVID money in December of 2020. And that passed on a purely partisan vote. We said it's going to start to ignite the inflation fires. So I certainly hope the president's budget, which we expect to see later this week, will propose pro-growth policies that can get us out of this mess. And I would argue uh, 
almost an existential crisis as we look at what's going to come at us here, of course, in the next 10 years with debt and service on that debt. Unfortunately, as the President said in the State of the Union address, the President said he's going to raise taxes. That's a recipe for disaster. It's going to crush productivity, discourage investment, stifle economic growth. 4,004. I want to turn to my questions now, Chairman Powell. Uh, you're raising interest rates to combat the inflation we've seen in the economy over the past few years. Is that, that correct? Yes. Yes. And although this is the domain of Treasury, a higher Fed's fund rate will mean higher borrowing costs. Is that correct? Yes, all else equal. So I just want to just connect the dots here around inflation was sparked. Um, one of the AMD's big reasons even hitting was a new high. massive spending here in Washington. A couple big techs getting and green candles right now. we're bearing the, uh, the challenges with higher debt service over the but course of the next several years where we're going to see debt service exceeding yeah, Nvidia and defense AMD are spending, going. which is we see the threats of China, threats around the world. I think it's very, very concerning. Now, as a, a grandfather of four, soon to be five grandchildren, this is things you think about more and more as you look forward. I want to change here and talk about American energy. When the war in Ukraine broke out, many feared that Russia would cut off natural gas exports and cause energy inflation to spike. Um, prices didn't spike as much as anticipated. They got shook out of Octa AMD. The fact that American companies Those are both hitting highs now. Plate. As of late last year, the European Union now receives more liquefied natural gas from the United States producers than it does from Russian producers. And that's a good thing for the world to see more U.S. produced energy. Chairman Powell, do you believe that European and American inflation would have been manageable if not for American energy producers? I certainly think uh, that our, particularly our natural gas uh, assets have, have helped Europe make the transition. Any sense of how much worse the global energy picture would be if you would imagine a world where we're not producing and shipping energy to other countries? I, it'd be hard to, hard to estimate. Probably worse. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, it's been a, clearly the Europe has managed better than expected, and, and a part of that story is, is just U.S. energy experts. Also, the, the winter wasn't as, uh, as bad, and the Remember? Germans made some good decisions. Yeah, we made, some, we made some prayers that says we need to pray for a warm winter for Europe, and I think they got one, which was uh, something that's been helpful. I'm out of time here. I'm going to um, send this back over to Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you. Chairman Powell, it's great to see you. Thank you so much. I know it's been a long morning. I always appreciate you coming uh, to talk with us here on the committee. Um, I, I want to first align myself with the remarks from um, uh, Chairman Menendez uh, supporting a Latino nominee uh, to the open seat on the Federal Reserve. Uh, it's been more than 100 years, and a Latino has never served on the Federal Reserve Board. And I know there are many strong Latino economists and economic experts who would capably serve. So uh, I want to put that out there. Chairman Powell, I, um, I also sit on Senate Finance. Right across the way, we are talking about affordable housing. Um, and uh, I think uh, for purposes of so many of us across the country, including in Nevada, when we talk about affordable housing, it's also about workforce housing. It's about making sure families that are working so hard have an opportunity to keep a roof over their head. Right now in Nevada, if you're making minimum wage, you have to work 75 hours uh, a week just to be able to afford uh, housing. Um, and so I want to talk to you about this. Um, I was distressed to see in the report that um, the, that activity in the housing sector uh, has contracted as a result of the elevated mortgage rates, and you've been talking about that. I often hear from Nevadans who say, I don't know if I'm ever going to own a home, and many feel resigned being stuck in a cycle uh, of renting. So, Chairman, how do the Federal Reserve economists and leaders think about the balance between keeping interest rates low to spur that affordable home building and home buying while addressing inflation? We have a, a dual mandate from Congress, as you, as you well know, which is maximum employment and, and price stability. And that's really what we take into account. We don't, um, uh, and of course, uh, interest sensitive spending is the thing that gets the most support when we cut rates and, and the thing that is most affected when we raise rates. And that, that means housing to a significant extent. That's not a choice that we make. That's just the way it works. And we only have really one tool, which is monetary policy. So, you know, we don't, we don't 
really try to use our tools to affect broader housing policy, uh, but really just to achieve our statutory goals. It happens to just unfortunately be in effect as you tr uh, try to achieve your statutory goal. Is that yes. It? Yeah. yes. And so I want to uh, have you uh, have the opportunity to address uh, Senator uh, uh, Warner, uh, Warren's conversation with you earlier about uh, the tools that you have and the impact that it has on causing potentially uh, more people to be unemployed, and this obviously has an impact on their ability to afford homes as well. Can you address that? I'd be glad to. I, I, want, I want to be clear that we do, do not seek and we don't believe we need to have a very significant downturn in the labor market. And <clears throat> it's not just hope. I think if you look at uh, the situation in the labor market, you've got all these job openings, and in principle, you could reduce the job openings without seeing a, a really uh, significant increase in unemployment. Also, you're starting from such a strong labor market. It seems as though there's you're a long way away from anything that looks like like a recession. Just looking at the labor market by itself. So, honestly, we we don't uh, we don't know we don't know that we need that there will that there will need to be a really significant uh, downturn. Other other business cycles had quite different. Uh, you know, backstories than, than this one. And it, we'll, we're going to have to find out whether that matters or not. But I, I do think that and I've, I've said all along, and my colleagues and I have too, that we believe that um, we can, there's, there's a path to restoring 2% inflation with less significant effects on the labor market than have typically been seen in downturns. And for purposes of the general public, the people, Nevadans, that I know that are struggling, we have one of the highest, we, we've talked about this, and thank you for always um, being willing to talk with me, we have one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. Uh, our service sector was hit so hard. Uh, we're still at over 5% just in southern Nevada. We have high gas prices. We have grocery uh, prices. We have housing prices that are high. Uh, so uh, one of the things in, that you have commented on, and you just did again, but I know it was in your opening remarks, that, and it's quoted right here, and let me just say, our over our, you say our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal and to keep longer-term inflation expectations well anchored. For the general public, for those working families of people, why 2%? Why is getting it to 2% so important? Um, so that's, that has become the globally agreed, <clears throat> essentially all major central banks target 2% inflation in one form or another. Um, and uh, it, How does that help my Nevada families? How does that help people in Nevada? I'll tell you how it does. And it, it, it's, um, I guess it's, it's obviously not, uh, it's not obvious how that is, but it, what two percent inflation to have people believe that inflation is going to go back to two percent really anchors inflation there because you know the evidence is is and and the the modern belief is that people's expectations about inflation actually have a real an effect on inflation if you expect inflation to go up five percent then it will you know if everyone kind of expects that because that's what businesses and households will be expecting and and it'll kind of happen because they expect it so Having a 2% inflation goal, where, which we had for many years, it, de facto we had it, then we, we formally adopted it in, in 2012, but for years before that, we were effectively targeting 2% inflation. And what that meant was that inflation, it's one of the reasons why inflation was low and predictable, is having a real target and sticking to it, not changing it you know, at convenient moments. So that's, we, we think it's really important that we do stick to a 2% inflation target and not consider changing it. We're not going to do that. Um, it just is, it, it, people will be better off if, if the whole question of high inflation is just not part of their lives. That's kind of the definition of price stability. It's if people live their lives without having to think about inflation all the time. Thank you. I notice my time is up. Thank you so much, Senator. Senator Lummis. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman, and welcome Chairman Powell. Um, when you're setting these rates and making these decisions uh, and seeking that 2% magic number, um, are you considering the cost of borrowing for the United States, knowing that Congress has over borrowed and that we have overspent and that the national debt is at now at least 97% of GDP, and that we're um, going to face challenges of our own making 
This is not about what the Fed has done. This is what about the Congress has done that you have to factor in uh, to your decisions. Do you think about the costs of borrowing for the United States itself? No, we do not, and we're not going to. In other words, that's, that would be fiscal dominance. If we were you know, constrained in our, in our monetary policy by the budgetary situation of the United States, and we're not, we're, we're clearly not, the, the, the path we're on is not sustainable, but the level of debt that we have is not unsustainable, is not, is not, is sustainable, put it that way. So we don't think about, about interest costs when we make monetary policy. We think about maximum employment and price stability. It's your opinion that the level of debt we have is sustainable? Yes. I mean, I, we're, we could, clearly we, we have the, you know, the largest economy in the world. We can service this debt. That's not the, that's not the problem. The problem is that we're, we're on a path where the debt is growing substantially faster than the economy. And that's kind of by definition in the long run unsustainable. And the way countries have gotten or fixed that is, is with long, longer term programs that have bipartisan support and that address the actual problem in the budget. That, that's really the, 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 the formula. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to switch to stable coins. Uh, you're a member of the president's working group on financial markets. Uh, the working group called for bank-like regulation of stable coins in late 2021. Then on January 3rd of this year, in a joint staff statement, uh, the federal banking agencies stated that even after the bank's capital, BSA, AML, and risk management, uh, a bank issuing a stable coin on a, quote, open public or decentralized network is highly, un excuse me, highly likely to be inconsistent with safe and sound banking practices. I'm going to say that again. Even after a bank's capital, BSA, AML, and risk management, a bank issuing a stablecoin on an open public or decentralized network is highly likely to be inconsistent with safe and sound banking practices. So I'm a little confused about where we're heading on stablecoins. Does the January 3rd statement mean that the Fed has decided that stablecoins on a permissionless distributed ledger have no place in banks? So I, I think that there are <clears throat> real concerns about permissionless public uh, blockchains. And the, the reason is that they've been so susceptible to fraud, to money laundering, and all of those things. So I think what you heard from the federal banking agencies in one of their uh, reports was that they, would, they, that they would tend to look at those as not consistent with safety and soundness. And what about uh, properly regulated stable coins? Do you think they could have a place in our banking system? I, I certainly think that in a world of appropriate regulation where the same activity, where stablecoin activity gets the same regulation as comparable products in different mm -hmm. places, mm -hmm. then, then there certainly could be a place for stablecoins in, in, in our financial services sector. Thank you. Um, the European Union, UK, Australia, Switzerland, Singapore, and others have all moved over the last few years to create a legislative framework for digital assets. The European Union in particular is attempting to be a standard setter again, like it was with its data protection Another rule. new low. Is the United States in danger of being 4, a rule taker, not The futures not haven't broken it yet. They have one more test, but SPY is below 400. SPX in futures are next. I do think it would be important for us to have a workable legal framework around, around digital activities. Powell didn't say 50 basis important. point, but the yeah. odds and, of 50 uh, basis Congress points are now... Uh, in uh, higher than 25 uh, needs to do because we can't really do so that. So it's more likely you, we Senator get 50 Gillibrand basis points as of today. That could change. Uh, I have a theory on it. One area we've I'm already share that. seen. This is almost done. Um, Give it like another 30 minutes. In the Basel Committee on Bank Supervision, uh, they propose prudential treatment for crypto assets framework setting forth banks' capital standards for digital assets. The Basel Committee's framework does not impose a capital charge for digital asset custody, whereas the SEC's Staff Accounting Bulletin 121 imposes a prohibitive capital charge through the back door and places consumers at risk in bankruptcy. Similarly, uh, the Basel Committee framework allows banks to issue or hold digital assets on their balance sheet if the requisite capital is set aside. 
So back to January 3rd, 23, the Fed and other bank regulators have said that it is forbidden for a U.S. bank to conduct these activities no matter the capital. So my question is, what does the rest of the world know about digital asset regulation that we do not, that the Fed does not? So as we discussed, this is a, an SEC uh, staff accounting bulletin, and it's, it's, um, it's not something that the Fed issued, and I'd, I'd be loath to uh, comment directly on it. The, the, the issue is, and, and what concerns me, is, is that clarify. the Fed and other federal banking agencies are not following international norms on digital asset regulation. That's just my comment. Um, thank you, Chairman Powell, for being here. Um, I now recognize Senator Smith. Well, thank you. And uh, Chair Powell, it looks as the if... The Senator Britt and I are the last people standing at this uh, committee hearing. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for passing on the the gavel to um, Senator Lemus. Um, and I want to thank you for your yeah, this service is wrapping up, and for our recent conversation. And before I get and into right my questions, 4, I would just like to note there's been a good back and forth amongst our committee um, around um, um, some of the big um, economic challenges and opportunities that we face in this country. And I would just like to note. Um, that the programs and the spending that the ranking member and some of our colleagues have blamed for inflation provided critical relief that kept working families and small businesses afloat during a global pandemic. And in fact, many of these policies were passed on a bipartisan basis and signed into law by both Republican and Democratic presidents. Um, and I also just want to add that the laws that the Democrats passed to lower prescription drug costs and health care costs and to lower um, energy costs for Americans um, are helping to lower basic costs for families, um, all of which, by the way, was fully paid for. So I return, Mr. Chair, to what you have said to me privately and to all of us um, publicly, which is what we ought to be looking for is striving for bipartisan solutions uh, to find um, a path forward. And in fact, um, Senator Lummis and I were just talking about this yesterday ads? when it came to housing policy. So all I um, see is, is everyone complaining and then the viewers drop off. You and I spoke yesterday briefly. We, we talked didn't do about anything different the Community today. Reinvestment Act. And I know that um, uh, I appreciated the chair um, raising this um, point earlier in the hearing um, and so but I want to just return to that uh, briefly um, I am very glad to see it's been about a year since the Fed I mean, and the OCC and the FDIC issued the proposed rule to modernize implementation of the Community Reinvestment Act um, you know I don't think that the proposal was perfect by any means but it does make really important improvements to how through the CRA financial services organizations can serve and meet the needs of communities um, that are full of assets but lack the resources to make it happen like wealthy communities can. So I think, Chair Powell, you indicated that um, the, you expect this new CRA rule to be finalized in, in the coming months. Is that what you're, you indicated? Yes, that's right. And um, can you just tell us, with the departure of Dr. Brainerd, um, who will be spearheading the CRA efforts? So I, I've asked um, Vice Chair uh, Barr to to be responsible for moving the project forward. Of course, it, it has to go to the whole board, right. and and everyone everyone gets a vote on that. But he'll be he'll be uh, pushing it forward. That's great. Thank you. Um, and um, I was glad to see that disaster preparedness and climate <clears throat> resiliency were added to the definition. That little green of turn into red. Watch out. Activities that would be eligible. You're one point above for the four CRA thousand. So credit, and this is important. This of course, very, very because big low and moderate BB. income folks and the communities that they live in often face some of the worst impacts of climate change and extreme weather events. This isn't social engineering. This is dealing with the actual costs and challenges that people no, experience. No, yeah, Fed futures today um, are awful. Climate change. So, Chair Powell, can you talk we'll to talk us a about little it when bit it's about done, but um, that's how you definitely see that the big worry here today. And how it fits with the CRA's overarching objectives. So I, I think it fits for the reasons that you said. I um, Honestly, I'm, I'm a week or so away from getting a briefing on where the proposal lies, so I'm I'm reluctant to touch on. I mean, I, I, I again, I'd I'd rather wait till after I'm fully briefed on on where that agreement came out after the FOMC meeting. So, thank you. That's fine. I'll look forward DKS to continuing this conversation with As you and um, and uh, with Mr. Barr, and um, just appreciate this. I think you know my view of this is that climate change and the economy are inextricably linked, and the reality is that climate-related action or inaction has a direct financial impact um, on um, on people and our economy. Um, and um, 
I was wondering if you would just be willing to update us briefly on um, some of the next steps that the Fed is going to be looking at as you evaluate, evaluate the resilience of financial institutions to, um, with respect to climate risk. There's this pilot project that just um, was um, started in January, I think it was, of this year, and I'm curious to know how you see next steps there. So we, um, we're doing really two things. One is uh, we are um, doing a climate stress scenario, yep. which uh, the banks are already doing, the large banks, the six that we're working with, and that's really just to understand, to begin the process of understanding the risks that are associated with this over the longer term. They're, again, they're already doing it, and, and, and uh, it's something that uh, there's a lot of learning going on uh, around the world, actually. The other okay. thing we're doing is, is providing guidance. The banks want clear guidance. They actually want one set of rules globally. The big banks that you know, do business around the world, they, they're hoping that they aren't in a world where there's just different regulatory regimes everywhere they go. So we're, we're, we're kind of working on that as well. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Smith. Uh, Senator Tillis of North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Senator Chairman. Tillis. Chair Powell, thank you for being here. Uh, in your opening statement, I was the Department I was of here Transportation for that. I think supports you DOJ's suit to block a JetBlue the, uh, merger. Um, Remember, we had reactions on that yesterday. Interest rate sensitive components of GDP and non-interest rate Blue. sensitive components of GDP. I, I think you said that uh, we do have a, a concern in the latter group: inflation expectations, labor market uh, tightening, et cetera. Can you tell me a little push-ups. bit I'm about? Stretching. Um, no, how you're looking at the interest rate sensitive and non-interest rate sensitive readings and whether the Fed, um, what, what sort of Fed actions can uh, take place to avoid a, a zero landing? Sure. So on, um, you know, g- the talking um, zero landing housing sector, of course, is inter- interest sensitive spending is is that is the thing that they're very directly affected by our policies almost right away. And the poster child for that is housing. And so you've seen mortgage rates now go up, back up over 6%. You've seen housing starts come down. Activity in housing has declined as people are reluctant to get out of their, their you know, the low mortgages, low rate mortgages they had before. So housing activity is, is slowing down. On the other hand, housing prices went up in the aggregate more than 40% since the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, we may be seeing some price correction on that too. So that's coming along, and, and housing housing inflation, uh, which is a, a big part of the CPI, a little bit smaller part of the PCE, the, the, the inflation measures we uh, uh, we follow, where we, we rely on, uh, that will be coming down because of the slowdown in the housing market. The I guess I would say the service sector is probably less uh, interest sensitive than that, and that's you know that's restaurants, it's um, travel services, travel and leisure, it's healthcare, it's financial services. Healthcare services, all those services, and that's that's a big, big part of our economy. It's this sector is 56, it is is 50, 54 percent, I guess, 56 percent of the of consumer spending on non-energy and food. So it's very important, and it's you know it, it's um, it's about having a little bit softer demand and about having some softening in labor market conditions. We think our tools will work on that, but we do expect that that will take time. Thank you. I I know uh, uh, the chairman uh, in his opening Jesus. comments mentioned. Bro, uh, fifty basis points uh, is priced uh, in I right believe, now. I don't want to misquote him, but I believe <clears throat> that we have too little capital in the banking sector. It may be true of a couple of banking institutions, but how do you feel about the the current capital uh, that our broader banking sector, ir- irrespective of where they are and in size? What concerns, if any, do you have about now the, it is uh, the, the dominant we see out there already? Dominant price. So in. I supported all of it. We're going to talk about it though. This is did. almost done. I joined the Fed in 2012. But this is going to get wild for the next couple of, of days. Implementing all those Dodd Frank increases, and I supported all of them um, after careful thought and discussion with my colleagues. And you're coming lower here. I you think, still have um, not uh, we, tested four thousand on futures. The new vice chair futures, is doing what new vice chairs uh, do, or which SPX. is to, to take a fresh look you're and one ask point the question. Two points off. Even though I think we all agree, four thousand two. This is about Certainly to be a new vice low. Chair does. The question is, is it is it at the right level? And I think that's yeah. that's what happens with a new vice chair for supervision. And we don't have any proposals yet, but uh, at some point we will. Yeah, I'm going I'm to be meeting with the vice <clears throat> chair, and we'll drill down on that topic. But I do know uh, I was over in finance committee, so I wasn't here. But I do know that several members. Uh, well, first off, we know that. Uh, 
Vice Chair Barr is looking at a holistic review of capital requirements. I think that that's a good idea. Uh, but I have to ask a question. Um, do you think, uh, does the Fed consider the bipartisan passed Senate <clears throat> Bill 2155, which is currently the law of the land, to, uh, superior to any of the Basel requirements or any holistic review process? In other words, it is the law of the land. How does that weigh into how these reviews go? So 2155 was, <clears throat> um, I think you're talking about, about um, tailoring. <clears throat> yeah. So. Don Frank actually called for tailoring, and, and um, <clears throat> uh, what 2155 did is it was it said change may tailor to shall tailor, and it also changed the thresholds. Yep. But tailoring is an absolutely bedrock aspect of our of our bank regulatory um, uh, <clears throat> system, and anything that we do is going to reflect what we think is appropriate tailoring between you know, the, the different sizes and risks and, uh, of the financial institutions that we that we and supervise and regulate. What we were trying to accomplish as a part of that, uh, I don't expect you to respond, I know that we're coming to the end of the, the hearing, is that a holistic review of a financial services institution is going to reveal the fact <clears throat> that um, many of these financial institutions are very different based on the activities that they're most um, uh, most involved in. And those sort of holistic reviews may actually result in increasing capital requirements for two banks that look like peers, but not for another because of the inherent risk associated with their business focus. Does that make sense? To, to your earlier point, though, the law, the Dodd-Frank language, and as amended, actually requires that we take those things into consideration. So and we, I hope we that certainly we will. will. We will. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Chill. Senator uh, Ornock is recognized from Georgia. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I begin um, my questions, um, I know that uh, this committee will soon consider a, a new nominee to serve on the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. And while it has not historically been the case, um, it seems to me that the board should reflect uh, the diversity of our nation, <clears throat> that those uh, things are connected policy and uh, representation. Uh, are connected, and I, I hope uh, that we will see sitting before this uh, committee a nominee that pushes us closer uh, towards our ideals of e pluribus unum out of many. Um, one, and I, I support Senator Menendez and others who have uh, called uh, for a diverse nominee, specifically the fact that we've never had a Latino person serve on the Federal Reserve Board. I think it's a huge oversight, and I hope we can move uh, quickly in that direction. That said, uh, my state of Georgia is in a housing crisis. Like much of the country, the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta has designated owning a home in Atlanta as unaffordable to the average home buyer. But this is not just a city problem. Uh, Harris County, Georgia, with a population of less than 35,000 sitting on the border of Alabama, is also rated as unaffordable. In the midst of this housing crisis, the Federal Reserve continues continues to raise interest rates. This makes mortgages a lot more expensive for families, especially young families looking to buy a house. According to the National Association of Realtors, the share of first time home buyers is at an all time low, while the average age of a purchaser, purchaser is at an all time high. Uh, Chair Powell, you have said that uh, there has been, quote, uh, an imbalance in the housing market but if you're a Georgia family, parents in the mid 30s, young children, and all you want is to be able to afford your first home and place and build equity to one day pass that equity on to your kids, how are the Fed's actions uh, helping that family afford a home? Our, um, our mandate is to uh, provide maximum employment, use all our tools to foster maximum employment and price stability. And we're using those tools really now to restore price stability in a, at a time of the highest inflation in 40 years. I think that um, the same people who are having high mortgage um, uh, costs, if they have a floating rate mortgage, are also experiencing high costs for all the, all the basic necessities of life. And, and one of our most fundamental roles at the central bank is to, is to keep price stability. So we have to prioritize that in, in what we do. Yeah, I understand the, the tools and, and the mandate, but my concern is that we could have a cure uh, that's worse than the, the, than the disease. It, it doesn't do families 
any good if, if we stabilize housing prices while mortgage rates uh, continue to skyrocket. It, it, it doesn't matter to me why a house is unaffordable. Maybe the house is unaffordable. Maybe the mortgage is unaffordable. Unaffordable is unaffordable. How does the Federal Reserve continue the, con consider the total price the total price of home ownership, including costs of mortgages, in executing that mandate to keep prices stable. It um, housing inflation is a is a very important uh, component of various uh, inflation indexes, and uh, so and the way that's calculated is it's uh, the economists look at rents, and then for people who own a home, they impute a rent depending on the value of the home. So it actually does factor in, and I would say measures of um, of uh, new leases that are being signed and, and new housing prices show f significant declines in, in inflation, not in price, but in inflation. And that, that will play through so that overall inflation over the course of the next six months or a year will, uh, will decline. If, if we're seeing mortgage rates go up, yes or no, does this discourage folks who may have a low interest mortgage rate from putting their home on the market and then possibly paying double the cost on a mortgage for their new house. It certainly could. I, people who are in, in a low mortgage, uh, uh, a fixed rate, low rate mortgage, I would does, assume does, many of them are not moving. Yeah, does raising the federal interest rate change the cost of borrowing for a company hoping to develop new housing? Yes. Does it make it more expensive for suppliers to finance expanding production to meet supply needs? It does. Does it give businesses less wiggle room to offer higher wages and attract qualified workers? Indeed. Yeah. So uh, all of these actions uh, have to be taken into account. Federal Reserve does not control housing supply, but its actions do have a massive effect on, on housing supply. And some of these supply effects, it seems to me, will be felt for many years, well beyond when interest rate hikes have slowed or rates have even gone down. And um, I know you've got a difficult job and a tough situation, but I, I just hope that the Fed will think more about its actions and, and how they affect housing supply, even as it attempts to control housing demand. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Warnock. Uh, the last question, I believe, is questioner is um, Senator Sinema is uh, remote from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Chairman Powell, thank you for being here today. In raising interest rate rates last month by 25 basis points, the FOMC cited Russia's war against Ukraine as a key contributor to elevated global uncertainty. The war has serious implications for global energy and agricultural markets. And as you know, energy inflation in particular can appear in the form of higher prices of other goods and services. This feels like a substantial driver of inflation overall. And in my mind, you can't understand the global economy fully without assessing the range of possible outcomes in Ukraine. As we've also seen, the war created new supply chain problems overnight and has caused abrupt price swings in select committees. How is the FOMC assessing the economic impact of the war and the range of potential outcomes in order to inform how it sets monetary policy? So the, the principal, um, there, I guess there are two things to say. One is that the principal way that the war has affected uh, our economy is really through commodity prices, grain and particularly energy Yeah, I'm surprised prices. Save is ripping. They got that clapped is, uh, yesterday. That's the, 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 the but main they are thing. moving I think off of that. Really, and those, those have both Weight flattened out. High. Energy prices globally have settled down and they're at a higher level and, <clears throat> and food prices as well to some extent. So the second thing I would say is uh, that, that it represents a significant risk. So the war in Ukraine... Uh, the outcome is uncertain, developments there are uncertain, and uh, you have to think of it as a, as a source of potential risk to the global economy and to, to our economy. We don't, um, and we, we look at alternative scenarios and things like that, we don't really do it from a geopolitical standpoint, but we do, of course, model scenarios where, where commodity prices are higher and, and, and things that, that would look like, uh, like what could happen from Ukraine. Thank you. At home, Arizona families are struggling to navigate this economy. Higher prices are making it more difficult to afford groceries, gas, rent, and airfare. But on the other hand, rising interest rates are crowding out investment and making it more difficult for first-time homebuyers to buy a home. Inflation has also slowed housing development to a halt in Arizona. And as you know, Chairman, housing is a major economic contributor in my state. It's also clear that more spending comes with trade-offs. And it's why tackling inflation has historically been so difficult 
and yet it's more important than ever that we get it under control. There's been much debate about a soft landing where we get inflation under control without triggering a recession versus a hard landing where inflation comes down but triggers a painful recession. Some economists are currently saying they see no landing right now, that growth is actually accelerating and that more aggressive actions will be needed to get inflation under control. If true, that would be problematic. What do you think about that assessment? Well, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, I think if you look at the data that's been coming in since earlier this year, you have seen uh, stronger labor market conditions, higher inflation, stronger consumer spending. And also we saw some of the low inflation readings from the fourth quarter of last year revi revised away. If you take all of those, uh, they kind of all, they, they may be to some extent related to things like seasonal adjustments or, or uh, a warm January, but nonetheless, they all point in the same direction. And they do suggest that uh, the possibility that we that ultimately would need to raise rates higher than had been expected. Of course, we have uh, two or three more uh, very important data releases to analyze before the time of the FOMC meeting. Those are going to be very important. In, in the assessment we have of this relatively recent data. We'll be looking carefully at that. And, uh, and all of that will go into making the decision, <clears throat> which we have not made, uh, but making the decision that we'll make about what to do at the March meeting. Well, thank you. On February 23rd, the Fed, the FDIC, and the OCC released another joint statement on crypto assets and liquidity risks posed to banking organizations. It's clear that regulators see undue risk for banks in the current environment and are taking a more conservative approach. Do you believe these risks are inherent to crypto assets and how they behave, or is some of the risks a product of the current regulatory and policy landscape for crypto assets in the U.S.? So we're, we're seeing, um, really, in the last close to a year now, we've seen just a remarkable um, <clears throat> set of events in the crypto space lots of companies collapsing, uh, we've seen massive fraud, we've seen all kinds of things. I think, you know, we, we have to be open to the idea that it, somewhere in there, there is technology that can, that can, uh, can be uh, the feature, can be featured in productive innovation that, that, uh, that, that makes people's lives better. However, in the near term, we see in crypto activity lots of things that suggest that regulated financial institutions should be quite cautious and that's in, in doing uh, things in the crypto space. And that's what we've, we've issued three or four uh, releases to, to, to the banks, uh, along with the OCC and the FDIC, the Fed has. And, and they, they essentially say, you really need to be careful here. You need to be careful. It's, it's early days with crypto. There isn't the appropriate regulation. We're learning lots about the risks. Uh, and they are many of the same risks that, that run or run in other parts of the financial system. I don't know system, what that's on. I don't think that's on any of his statements. Regulation. Uh, thank he you, said Senator pretty Powell. much thank the you. next data thank will you, determine Senator it. Cinema. The quote is three or um, four data points hearing, uh, will be very important sure in making the March 23 decisions. The center of, our, of every decision Jeez. it makes to strengthen our economy. We've heard a lot today about the role that Wall Street plays in our economy, too. As you've said, Mr. Chair, we know that. Yeah, so now event risk is a little lower, but it is elevated. It allows it's them done, to though. make investments. So I'm hear the closing statements, but I got a couple of things to share. That's what they should be doing instead of. Uh, spending billions on buybacks. Yeah, just Powell I, says I between now Chair and March, Powell the data will be important. That's it. That was that last comment that, who that drove that up there, for the which is very weird, but we'll talk about it. One week from today, Tuesday, March 14th, to Chair Powell, please submit your responses to questions for the record 45 days from the day you receive them. I, I thank my colleagues for the very, very good attendance today. Only one member on each side was not here, one for health reasons, the other just because he's doing 12 different things. So I appreciate all that, and thanks for your testimony, your public service, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, you thank you, thank you. All right, Chattadonia. So that was pretty wild. Uh, again, uh, right off of the bat, the thing that shocked the market was Powell saying inflationary pressures are higher uh, and then saying that ultimate rate peak is likely higher than expected. People were expecting him to push back against the, the recent data, but it seemed like he kind of caved to it. So the first read that we got was very, very hawkish. Again, him kind of putting it on, on the court of the uh, data here. That's what gave you your last pop. But I kept bringing it up throughout, man. This is the main story right now. If you guys are not aware, uh, since Powell began speaking and throughout all of that, the rate hike odds are now 60% for the 
for 50 basis points, meaning that is right now it's certain uh, this could also change. And this is why I think the market's even reacting a little bit. That was a huge candle up and down. But the whole idea here is that uh, just if, if the data confirms, if the jobs report is hot and then CPI comes in hot, if Powell is going to follow the market, we are going to do 50 basis points, which is insane. And even the peak rate has gone up to about 5.6, 5.7 throughout. So surprisingly, the 10-year bond uh, is somehow not above 4%. Uh, there's a lot of divergence right now. The dollar is up. I mean, we were definitely surprised here today. I wasn't really expecting any of this. Uh, I thought Powell was going to kind of be more in his pocket. Uh, and he definitely came out a little bit more hawkish here. But here's what I'll tell you about today. Uh, here's my thesis. You guys already like the video. I don't know. I have a I have a very strong doubt. Look at man, Fed bro, the Fed Futures website keeps going down. That's how many people. It's at 66 right now. Oh my god. Yeah, you guys already like the video. Thank you for liking it. And again, I think uh, YouTube did something today. You guys seem to have been getting uh, way more ads than you ever have before. So apologies for that. But Chatadonia, are you ready? Here's my theory. I don't think Powell is going to do 50 basis points. That's it. So that's the next thing in this coming days. If the data is bad, we're going to die. I think the market is going to go well below 4,000. So if any of that data comes in bad uh, or hot, I think we're going to go down. But I think the real bounce here comes now from 50 basis point not happening. I just, it doesn't, it seems weird. Uh, it just seems now, here's my dilemma with my own theory is that the Powell does whatever the market says. So as long as that odds are 60% ahead of there, uh, it's like, I, I don't know what Powell will do, but the part that I'm worried about here is just like, I don't know if the Fed is really going to go from 50 to 75 to down to 25 only to go back up 50. I feel like that would uh kind of uh, mess with people a little bit. So I think it's going to be very volatile, but Chad, this is what I've been telling you from a couple of weeks ago. It's very simple. Once you go 50-50 here, and once the Fed futures go above 60%, you have a very big problem because now all this just means is that the market is uh, the market is uncertain. That's all it is. That's all you're getting right now is that right now, between now and the next sets of data, I'm telling you Friday's non-farms is going to be wild now. So is the CPI. But the fact of the matter is we are getting repricing odds changing and a lot, there's a lot of potential that could happen. It's either 50 doesn't happen. Now you have to consider 50 basis points more than ever. So here's the deal. Even though I'm saying, I don't know if it'll happen, but you got to realize nobody knows. And Powell has a very big history of following this chart. But here's a fun fact I'll show you. The odds of 50 basis points are higher today than they were at any other point in October or November. That is the crazy part. So we got to see what happens. I feel like 50 would hurt Powell's credibility, uh, but if the bond market's already pricing it in, you know, there's the there's two levels of credibility more or less. But as of now, though, we got to think about 50 basis points is there. And, I mean, some people are worried about 75, uh, believe it or not. I told you guys that headline mid midway throughout the day, uh, but some people are pricing in 75 basis points, small, small portion, but that will be the next fear. You got to realize if we solidify 50 basis points uh, by the jobs report and CPI, I mean, God knows what those Fed futures could could hold, but it's going to be wild. But so far now, I mean, we are down uh, just under 1% on the NASDAQ and Dow. Surprisingly, tech stocks are only down a quarter percent right now. The market is definitely repriced following Powell. It had a hawkish uh, statement. He didn't really say anything that made it sound any better or worse, but that's where we are now. And 50 basis points is firmly in question, but this is your first rally of the day about an hour after Euro close. So, Chad, good morning. How are you feeling, huh? Oh, man. He says the people are in control. I'm surprised. I'm very, very shocked now. And now if, uh, we were already anticipating uh, a lot of activity this week, but it's only going to get crazy. Uh, that's uh, definitely what I'll tell you there. It is definitely going to get crazy. That was horrible. It's like horrible, but not really. I mean, I'm excited now because now uh, that's it. Uh, the Fed, the, the bonds and the bond volatility was leading yesterday. But at the end of the day now, it's just telling us that nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, that's it. These next couple of weeks are going to be extremely volatile. 
So that's why I even reduced some of the plays that I was up on. I'm still in the ES, still got the NQ, uh, and then we have our bank plays and then the big tech. But uh, for now, though, it seems like these next couple of days, I don't think anybody could really say they know because right now you are jostling, jostling between uh, 50 basis points and 25 and with 75 lurking around the corner. And then now people questioning Powell's credibility and a bunch of other things. So we'll find out, man. We will find out. No AMD news. Chips were just ripping that whole time there. Uh, so is NVIDIA. And I think it could be because of SE. SE had really good earnings. They didn't react at all. Uh, even Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, they've been hitting 52-week highs this whole time, too. The next Fed event is March 22nd, uh, but actually, you will be hearing from Powell tomorrow. So, and then at the end of the day, though, it's like Powell really gave you a lot of hawkishness today. So, I don't know how much worse it could get, but he already surprised the markets today. I don't think anybody was uh, really, uh, he pretty much just said, yep, inflation pressures are coming back. The terminal rate is going to be higher. He didn't give you a price. He didn't say anything about 50 basis points, but he did say we might need bigger rate hikes, and that's it. But the market is currently pricing a majority of the bond market is saying 50 basis points in the next two weeks in one day. So that's that's very huge. Now, granted, that can move throughout the day. Uh, just yesterday, it was at 28% odds, and you see how big of a shock today's statement was. So it can... Uh, you know, that's not for certain, and pretty much the the Friday data and everything else is going to start moving us as well. So we're going to see, but overall, uh, this was a shock. I mean, this is it. Uh, you're you're already even back down. You've given up some of the Bostick bounce. You're right here at this uh, 4017. You're at the last Fed meeting in December. You're right near the November CPI levels and everything else. So it's a, it's a pretty wild uh, move right here, and then we're going to see what happens now. Another ad... What time is it? It's 9.30. I think it's happening every 30 minutes. They're probably doing it. Again, remember, we had to uh, YouTube change their like ad policy stuff not too long ago. So we were running ads because they were running it uh, alongside of our content. Uh, but I don't know why today. It seemed, I've never seen you guys complain about ads like this. That's cool. So either Google's making money or I'm making money. But I don't know. I hope I'm getting the ad dollars too. We're going to find out. But either way, I guess that, that pays for your like now. <laughs> Y'all weren't liking, huh? Y'all weren't liking the video. Now it's like just hit you with the ad, huh? Oh, yeah, you remember the days where you just like the video. That's all we asked for, bro. That's all. Yeah, calls on Google, though. Calls on Google. Mm-hmm. Tesla. Mm -mm. You watch this, so we get paid. Well, God bless. I don't know why he's doing that, though. That's very weird here. I'll look into it afterwards, but nothing. Uh, I just did the same stream settings as the day before and the day before that. I think Google just needs the earnings. Like low-key calls on Google. Sean P.S. Welcome. EIA says short-term energy outlook report is delayed. Uh, okay. They just delay in everything. Mm -mm. And then I sold out of Unsee, Okta, and AMD today. Unsee was nice. That was like 110% if you got that one. That was an old biotech play. Remember, we played it for Padufa, and then the stock failed, and then two months later it ran up. So shout out to shares. Uh, and then I was looking at the long term. I don't know if Snap's still running up. We were considering covered calls before everything, and that's still holding. And then Meta had the news of the layoffs there. And that's about it. 5.5. Bro, the terminal rate is like really, really high. I feel neglected. Why? What do you need? We still need a horn here for Jay. 
What do we got? We got Jay in the house, man, which I'll give you a horn for Jay. I got you, bro. Let's go. What's up, Twitch? I see you. Don't feel neglected. You in the game. Don't worry. You in the game. It's good to go. Good morning. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm still shocked by Powell, man. Oh, Jay hit us with 20 subs? What? I saw in the morning earlier, I think, well, whoa, 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 whoa. Give him another one. I got you, man. God bless you. Thank you, Chad. Y'all showing love today. Y'all came in hot, and then Powell just, like, beat us down. That was a Powell beatdown moment. Honestly, I'm surprised we're not below Bostick. Or I guess we are below Bostick a little. No, not not really. Jay Powell moved the market less than Bostick, but, dude, that one was crazy. Key's new 1.5 billion share buyback authorization. Why is this surprising? Uh, I think it's just surprising with the level of, uh, you know, most people expected him to do nothing. So, like I was saying on the watch list, even coming into it, uh, my expectation was that Powell was not going to say anything dramatic. Uh, and you got to realize Powell said something dramatic enough today to move the Fed futures from uncertain to pricing in 50 basis points. So, it was just along the lines of him saying that uh, it was going to uh, go up uh, or saying that the inflation pressures are going up and then that terminal rate will be higher. Uh, he definitely opened up the door to more uncertainty. I didn't close the ES. I was thinking it would have uh, went back up to here. I wanted to kind of close up like a full bounce and let it do its thing, but kind of in a weird way. I'm not really, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to do 50 basis points. So I still have the NQ and that could balance it out, but I didn't want to be too reactionary with it uh, just because I'm feeling like uh, if those Fed futures do drop, I think we'll get some upside, but it's, uh, again, we're going to have till the non-farms too. It's just very wild. I really was not expecting all of that. I think Powell is. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if I believe him. They, yeah, they don't really have credit. It's not like they have the credibility of following the market, but it's just very. Um, it's very flip floppy, and we've seen Powell do that in the past. But it's. Start, I mean, the stakes are being raised. I think that's the best play to. That's the best way to put it. It's like I don't want to just straight up attack the Fed credibility right off the bat, but it's like this is now the game of chicken is returning. And uh, it just seems like the the stakes are higher. It seems like Powell now is really going to be with a with a tough decision. And is the Fed, do they really want to go 25, 50, 75, 50, 25, and then back to 50? It, I, don't, I don't know if that would accomplish the mission or what sort of reaction that would leave uh, people or the taste in their mouth more or less. Tesla's hitting a high now. They're still negative on the day. Tesla baby. I mean, you're holding up this baby rally here for now. I mean, you're just back to the lows of the of the first uh, 20 minutes since the release came out. We going to 4115. Okay, chill, man. Chill. We got to get let's uh, let's just get back up to 4050. You know, I'm I'm happy with that and then we'll go to 4080 and then we'll see what happens, but that one was a that one was a shit show right there. I just, I mean, at the end of the day, nobody was expecting market repricing of interest rates today, and that truly did happen right now. So uh, there's a big gap, though. Bonds have recovered. Stocks haven't recovered. The dollar is going up. So maybe that can account for the stocks, and then the yen uh, was just down all day, and then the yen has its own little event there on Friday. But for the most part, there, I mean, today's kind of all over the place. I, I don't think this was a, I don't think this is a done yet. I think we're going to have a nice, uh, interesting couple of days between volatility and bonds and the stock market. And then that non-farms on Friday is really going to, uh, that's really, really going to rocket things. I love how they waited to write at the, as the speech started to release the uh, pre-written statement, but that's what got it crazy. I think tech stocks are just doing good in general off of people feeling kind of optimistic. Uh, and then some of the earnings that were good, bro, I got shook in the hell out of Okta. I got. I didn't want to have any winners go to losers, but that one's nice. You're hitting a new high on there, GG. If you held through, mm -hmm. the rip was just on the final statements by Powell, saying that the data uh, between now and the meeting will will move a lot. Yeah, Rita's been on the low all day, which is good for the covered calls for now. Uh, lowers our rollover price, but you're getting. Uh, you should be getting all the money back. On the other one.
Rita, do you love me? Yeah, so Rita, you should have a net gain from the options going down. No news. AMD and the chips were going up. I think it's because of SC. Another half a point. That'd be good for cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3M, I mean, below 108. We grabbed it at 108.30. Uh, my next target will be around like $100 uh, for 3M. I have another long-term pick I'm looking at. And then uh, we also have to keep in mind covered calls, too. And then I'm hoping uh, Altria could drop as well, too. See, Altria, big, big red after yesterday. But even then, watch out. The day's not over yet. We technically have not broken 4,000 on SPX or Futures. So we are going to have to see where we go from here. I mean, I still think there's a, a lot of downside potentially here. That's what I'm worried about with the ES. I think we'll have till Friday. And I think I don't know how much the market is going to uh, believe in it. Uh, but at uh, the 50 basis point, but at the same time, uh, you got to understand that 50 basis points is sketchy. And if that permeates throughout the market, that could raise the fear up a little bit. And then we're really going to see how people position. So I, I think today has a very, very wide range left in it. And I don't think we're over. This should cancel out Bostic, but we'll find out. I mean, at the end of the day, but dude, Bostic rates weren't even that high. Fed futures were not even pricing in anything close now. You're, you're, you're double the Fed futures percentage on 50 basis points than when uh, Bostic even started speaking. Bostic, he brought the market up, but he didn't lower the odds that much. Uh, and now this time around, it's just like if we hold by the end of today and these Fed futures stay up here, that is going to be a dramatic shift. I mean, it's almost at 70%, uh, which is a borderline certainty here that we will be getting 50 basis points. And then Luminar, Ultra is at the low. Chipmaker just skyrocketing. PRVB. I think PRVB, I mean, it's over now the event. We got it, but it's kind of ever since that sale of the data, you've got all the good news. Now PRV is turning into a normal biotech uh, where, you know, you have to see their sales number off of the drug. I think that's it. But we sold out. I mean, it's just slightly below where we bought in, but we sold out after this Sanofi news. That one had a nice schedule. I think we played that one perfectly. Could have got a little bit more, but uh, did good for the most part for the last three months on that. Let's see is if we keep running, Fed's going to have to drop the hammer to regain confidence. It's weird, though. It's weird that Powell, I mean, it's the same comments, but I think people are more sensitive, but... I think the big takeaway was, you know, what he said about uh, the the terminal rate. That that had a lot of uncertainty, but I think the fact is uh, Powell um, Powell saying that inflation pressures are back up. I think that is uh, what makes people freaked out because now, I mean, remember the Fed knows the data. The Fed's ahead of the game, and now if the Fed and Jerome Powell himself is just acknowledging that that little uptick. And he's saying, yeah, inflation pressures are coming back up. That does not look good. That sounds very sticky in my mind. Uh, but the terminal rate, everybody knew that was going to happen, and it was already up there. But everything else, uh, I think the the part towards uh, the economy and both inflation pressures going up, I think that was the real kicker there, uh, which was a little bit more unexpected. I think most people were expecting him to acknowledge it and kind of say, yeah, it's going up, but data will make it come down or maybe it's going to be short-lived but he pretty much just said it's going up and it's it's staying up he says inflationary pressures are higher and then dollar is climbing up here bonds are still at the high of the day Eight snap puts. LVS on the high. Las Vegas Sands. That's a big pop. Yo, LVS, LVS, Las Vegas Sands. Check any of the other casinos as well, too. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on that, but watch MGM and win. Uh, could be individual. Check LVS. Uh, win just had a candle, too, a small one.
not seeing anything. I don't have anything either. Mm. Yeah, I'll watch those. See if they end up moving, but Spy is coming down. I'd watch Apple, Tesla, your big tech. If big tech gives up today, we're going to have a big problem because big tech is the one that's leading everything. And then if chip makers come down, UAL, travel stocks. You had Uber news uh, with the New York City wages. That was earlier that caused that pop, but that faded quick. You're coming back down here, though. So watch out. You still have a lot of room. Remember, 407 to 410. This is that stubborn range. You got above 4017 uh, just recently, which was good. But anything below that, dude, that's the death zone. Remember, that's where we started running uh, even with Bostic. Bostic didn't take you above there. It was the next day. Uh, where we went above 4017, and that's what started the rally. So if we don't get above there, I mean, it's still uh, kind of uncertain on the day. I'm not feeling the vibes. And then LVS came back down. No new snowflakes on the high. Qualcomm down too. It looked Qualcomm. Qualcomm's actually dropped a decent amount, so that's good. AMD, go to... Where's Troika? Troika's down today. Yeah, UNCY was dope. We got out of that. Restoration on the high. Yeah, healthcare's doing bad. And then same thing with financials. I'm really surprised on that. I thought they'd be liking these rates, man. But I think they're they're going to lag there for a little bit. My price target on Tesla will be above like 200. And I was assuming it would get a little bit more momentum. And I just liked how they were holding up. Only down two bucks a share on that one. So Tesla's even holding up decent today. The VIX hates you. That's what's happening with the VIX. The VIX is uh, awful. The VIX is the worst indicator ever right now. I mean, that's it. VIX is at an all-time low on these last two days. And, uh, you know, shout out to the Chad. You guys have been paying attention. If you actually look at it, the move index predicted all of this. I bought 100 shares of Tesla yesterday. But if you go and look at the move index, uh, the move index uh, rocketed up yesterday. And then it's probably going to go even more up here today. Uh, but I think bond volatility is a way clearer sign here of uh, what we're dealing with right now. Because, but the VIX is broken. It's just not even. I mean, the VIX is near its lows of the year. No, my child. Last time I had like what 300 shares of Tesla, so we could do a lot more there. JetBlue Spirit Confident Plan merger is pro competition. What is that? SNSY, that's on the high. AMD, Tesla, again, you're getting a pretty big pop there. I think we have, oh yeah, that was another thing of today. I'm glad you brought that up. Bro, we hit almost triple digits. I think we hit it for a little bit. But bro, you straight up hit uh, triple digits on the yield curve. Yeah, nope, you're right there still. Look at this, bro. This is crazy. 1.03. Uh, I don't know how. if you guys know how crazy this is, but I don't think the twos and tens have ever inverted like this ever. So let me get you another chart, but that's wild. I'm t I'm telling you, man. This is uh, especially after Powell surprising now, rate hikes, repricing, terminal rate going up. Uh, dude, it's uh, this is a, it's should have been a little bit more subtle today, but it's like borderline uh, turning pretty crazy here to begin March. AMD high, they're killing it. Did zero days break the VIX? I don't think so. So that one chart doesn't show you the total like history. So here's your other chart, but pretty much uh, this is where your uh, this is where your two year, ten year yield curve is at. So like last time it was here, last time it hit triple digits was a uh, summer of 1979, and then on the way back in June of 1980. So 1979 right here, 1980 on the way up, and then average, and then from there it went to two. So last time you were at 1989, 1979, 
uh, you flushed uh, to 2% inverted, which means that the two-year yield was uh, 2% higher than the 10-year yield, which is insane. But yeah, a lot to digest today. Welcome, Chattadonia. Oh, and I think there's delayed reports on Las Vegas Sands about uh, Vegas numbers. What did they do to make it pop back up in 1980? They tweaked out. They raised rates and then cut the rates, then raised rates and then cut the rates, uh, which that's what I'm saying. Powell says he wants to avoid that. That's why I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of skeptical of 50 basis points. I mean, we're going to see. And I don't know if you know how weird that is. So, Chad, I mean, of all the times you've watched me monitor this, usually I'm not skeptical. I, I, I'm actually a big fan of 50 basis points, but I just I'm very skeptical in the sense that I feel like that would just make Powell look really, really bad. But that's how they did it in the 80s, pretty much raise rates and then cut them. I mean, technically, Powell's not cutting, even if he goes up to 50, but uh, that's that's how they managed it there. And then Tesla is really, really running now. Tesla's about to go green. Etsy's on the high, Overstock, Tesla, D, a lot of random names, Sun W, Redfin now, and then Bros is taking candles into the low. What are the difference between 25 hikes and then two 25s and 150? Just the pace, that's all. It's just like, uh, you know, it's literally doubling up your speed. It's just time, because if you go higher sooner, it adds quicker pressure versus slower pressure and giving you more time to monitor the situation. So in this case, pretty much is like, what the fuck is that? So in this case, like 50 basis points is like, uh, it would just make sure that infl if the inflation pressures are coming back up soon, it'll put more pressure on that. Whereas if you do 25 and then inflation pressures go up, it'll add pressure. But then if the inflation pressures are greater than that, we have a problem. I mean, essentially, right now, inflation is still, even though people were optimistic at the beginning of the year, I mean, inflation has been going up half a percent to 1% month over month. So that's kind of the problem that we have here. So it's like, if you could go, if you could raise rates at the same month over month pace, that could be better than not. Let me see. Coin poop or coin pop? Is that Apple on the high? No, that was Roblo. But this is what I'm talking about here. So like your lowest inflation month over month in December, you had 0.13. November, you had 0.19. Uh, August, you had 0.2. And then the lowest uh, was like right here. And that was... Uh, july and that was point negative oh three that's month over month but for the most part you could kind of see here most of the inflation has been above half a percent month over month and that's including after you go up uh one percent it you know it's that's still month over month right it's comparing it to the last month so if anything the difference of two 25s and 150 at this point we're just arguing about keeping in line with the inflation month over month so it's like if inflation goes up a quarter and the Fed raises a quarter, that kind of levels it out. But if the inflation goes up half a basis point and then uh, Fed is only raising a quarter, in, in, in a weird way, inflation will still be running higher than rates, which has already been the story for the last couple of years. But that's what they, you know, at one point, we want the Fed to be above inflation. And I don't know if that'll ever happen, but at least on the month over month, that's kind of uh, would be the only argument I would say. JetBlue and Spirit say they'll continue to advance merger plans. Mm. 
they're to JetBlue and Spirit to vigorously defend merger plan. They're saying these are unfounded claims. It's immaterial to our success. So we're still dancing around. I think today, end of the day, is going to be wild. China and tomorrow is going to be crazy now. And then we're just going to deal with uh, a little bit of rate tweaking out until we get to uh, until we get to the non-farms. Non-farms are going to be insane now, Chad. Like, that's it. Non-farms and then CPI Tuesday. So really, towards the end of the week, the volatility is going to get really real. And then that sucks because if this pattern, if we go from pop to selling back below the 200-day, it's going to be a mess. So I think the range is still intact. I don't know if Powell is really going to get, uh, we're, we're really going to play a game of chicken here with the Fed. But welcome to March, Chattadonia. Welcome to March. Yeah, I've never been on a JetBlue flight. They look cool, though. I've seen the interior cabins. Yeah, and then quad witching the next Friday, and that's going to be the big rollover day. There's nothing going on with China. We're just now, we got to see how the rest of the world uh, interprets this. So if you want a little macro lesson, that's one thing to keep in mind here. And now you got to be careful of the micro confusing you because of the lags. But simply, if now we're pricing in a, a, a borderline certainty, and I say that very tentatively because that could all change here in the next couple of days, but you got to think about it you know, the rest of the world is going to be looking at it. And remember, the rest of the world, they don't want us to have high rates. Just remember, that makes them all poorer. It, if the dollar goes stronger, it weakens their currency. You have this, like, weird little feedback loop. Even it boils all the way down to the yen as well, too. But the whole idea here is that now, you know, just short-term, 24 hours, uh, now, depending on how we close, we want to see how China uh, is going to interpret this and how anybody else. I mean, one fun fact of today from pre-release to after, so in this 10 minutes, uh, the the global currencies moved about 1%. So, like, you see the dollars up today 1% as well, too. But within the first 10 minutes here, the biggest loser in the world was global currencies, believe it or not. It wasn't bonds. It wasn't the stock market. It was global currencies. So they're the ones that moved there. And then that's where, yeah, exactly, the dollar wrecking ball could be back especially as a lot of countries are pausing. So Australia, they were one of the first central banks to pause today. Uh, then we're going to get Canada this week, and then we're going to hear from Bank of Japan on Friday. Mm. OCGN, I only know origin. That's all I know. Shout out to Jay Alt. That's it. I'm like an honorary origin shareholder. I'm I'm not really ready to buy it, and I don't know if I'll buy it. But in honor of Jay Alt, I just I like to correct people when they say anything relevant or near origin. I just make sure they say origin. So I I hope you could understand. You know, and I hope one day you all have that conviction in the stocks you have in your long term, and I hope I could be an honorary cheerleader for you too. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. The only bull case is Fed raises target. No, I think the bull case is that anything comes out and you lower 50 basis points. That's it. That's the bull case right now for the next couple of days. But that's only going to last for three days until you get the non-farms. And then the non-farms could just wipe all of that. But that's that's your bullishness right here. Is if anything comes out and Fed futures drop below 30% again, then that's it. You're frustrated with the price. I think it's just the SPAC scam. Eventually, it's going to work its way through. But I don't underestimate the market makers scamming with uh, with the, with ample supply at their disposal. The bull case is anything. Nah, the, bull the only thing that will be bullish is at 50 basis points decline. I think the only way you're going to do that is through the right Fed speaker, the right voter saying the right comment but more so non-farms on Friday. But now, uh, do you guys know that's the fun fact? The jobs report has came in hotter than expected 10 months uh, in a row. 
I don't think that's ever happened before, or the last time it happened was in the 90s. So really, uh, that's it's going to be hard. That's going to be the problem there. SC is still going. If non-farm's coming at four 500 again, we're, we're dead. That's it. The mark is over. That's all of March. I think we would go back down to low December, low November levels. But then again, you do have the, the CPI that Tuesday. So it's going to be like a back and forth. It's going to be a one-two punch. Should have stayed at 50 once he dropped to 25. Now he's being called a flipper. He's done that before on the high side where we were going 50 and then the data came out and then Powell pivoted in 24 hours to 75. Uh, other than that, though, I don't know what he's going to do here. And then the thing you got to keep in mind is that it could move ahead of time. So the one thing about the Fed futures is that none of this is in cement. So this is like a cement molding, but the cement has not dried yet. So this could flip all the way until March 21st. The day before, this number could change dramatically, and that will change everybody's expectation. So that is the part that we have to uh, kind of keep as a variable is that nothing right now is solid, but that's why I'm saying it's probably going to get a lot more volatile here as we have to deal with this shit. Non-farms is Friday, and then CPI is on Tuesday. Did Powell sound? No, he sounded the same, but he just came out more. As, it was like a, it was definitely more hawkish than last time we heard Powell, but it was less than pretty much you know him trying to beat financial conditions down. But it was definitely a, a, a step down from the bullishness that you got. I mean, last time you heard Powell, February first, my guy was very, uh, you know, very very. Uh, Hello, yeah, no, it's fine. Yibbity baba da boo. More ads? Oh my gosh. Horn. What? <laughs> I'm just trying to distract. I'll, I'll give you all a pause there. Mm hmm. I'll give him a second. Yeah, I think it is every 30, literally 30 minutes on the dot right now. So that's good. Maybe it gets us to do our push ups there. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I hope I'm getting paid. I'll check today. They better be. Otherwise, you know, just this is why you should like the video. That's it. I guess now if there's ads today, I can't sell likes to you anymore. Mm hmm Unfortunately. But hey, there, you know, that's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, I think there is a bond auction. I don't know if it's an important tenure though. Mm hmm I never stream alerts my Canadian. Oh, I hope so. I hope it works. I hope it works. Uh, but like I was saying there, what, what what were we talking about? Coming near the lows. So watch out, man. Your little end Powell statement that shot you up at 20 points in two minutes is already given back up. You're near 4,005, and it is 10 o'clock. So there's a lot of bid support here, but we're probably going to get this tested. Dude, what the hell is happening? You guys hear that? Sound, I think they already had earnings. I'm not too sure. Or was that AI? Mm -mm. Shift Technologies, one for 10 reverse stock split. I don't hear though. Do you, you heard the whispers, right? Mm -hmm. It sounds like somebody's dying outside of my house. It's kind of ominous. Maybe that's just the market rate hike odds. So watch out here. 4,725. You're about three points ahead of the high from earlier. No, nah, they were whispering. There was a lot of whispering during the meeting. Y'all thought it was me. Like, why would I be whispering? Three-year note draws 4.65, allotted at high, 67%. So three-year bond auction. It's kind of important, but I think most people know. They already know where the short-term rates are headed, if not higher. And shout out to cash management. I mean, all today is that I think Bill should probably go up. I'm surprised Bill went down. 
bill should be going up now if Powell is talking more rate hikes. Three-year notes, 4.63 versus 4.64. So they went down a little bit, actually. The yield curve is saying in that roughly, like what, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. In about 12 months to four months, we're going to have a recession, based on my interpretation. And like a recession that's unavoidable in the sense that it's not going to be a bunch of people on YouTube and financial media arguing over it. It will actually be uh, to the point where Powell will most likely have to cut rates of some nature. So the yield curve fully inverted and stayed inverted since July of last year. Today is March. So that's been about eight months and uh, pretty much 12 to 18 months is what I've always said. So if we keep going, there it is. Edgar! Edgar! Edgar. No, they can't give Edgar an ad. How are they giving Edgar an ad? We love Edgar. No way, Edgar. God bless you. Good morning, man. Didn't you say that eight months ago? Yes. So... That's why I said 12 to 18 months. I said that eight months ago. So that means we're either four months or 12 months away now. Because then if four more months would be one full year, and then another 12 months will be 18 months, or I guess a little bit lower, maybe 10 months. And then uh, that's where we're at now. So pretty much, I mean, my logic has stayed the same, and uh, I think it works out very well with the market. I don't know. So just imagine the first time I told you that, uh, in around July, so it was right around here, and now this is where we're at today, but I do think, uh, I think it's playing out quite well, uh, honestly, I think we might look back at that prediction, and it may be very, very well there. Four months in the shortest term, eight to 12 months in the longest time frame now. Mm hmm well, market is not up. I mean, we had a bounce off of Powell's statement saying the data can move a lot. And then we've already given all of that back up. I mean, tech stocks have been leading the way. Chip stocks have been on fire. A couple of other names, uh, but that's about it. No other news. And then uh, rate hike odds are around 50, 60 percent. Scholz expects the war in Ukraine will last longer. Would we crash if Powell doesn't go with the Fed futures and does 25? I don't think it would crash immediately, but that would be uh, that would be something I don't want to deal with this year, <laughs> to be honest with you. That's the that's the thing about it. I don't want to deal with it. Um, like I don't want to uh, like that's the last thing we actually want to have in the world right now. Last thing you want to deal with is how does the market react when Powell, you know, throws sixty years of Fed credibility out the window. And granted, it's not as if they are the most credible uh, uh credible uh system right now damn you hit 4001 that was a new low and then nasdaq is barely down comparatively to spy and dow mcdonald's low of the day on futures 399.70 now uh -oh, hot dog so there it is 4001 you might get your 4000 test here there's a lot of bid support here but uh, you might get a little flush still. Kind of reminds me of the 200-day. MCK down bad. They were killing it yesterday. Mm. Actually, it's good timing. I mean, because I got to go to the bathroom. So, Chad, don't get mad at me. I wish you the best of luck. I love you all. I'm glad that you're here today. Thank you for liking the video. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. Uh, and get ready for a wild week, man. Get ready and get ready for a very key level. I need to go to the potty now. I need to go to the potty now. Mm -hmm. So I'll be right back. A regulator clapped down on Grayscale's GBTC ETF conversion. Have the odds of a victory changed during the day's worth of arguments? And we're putting the spotlight on, on another ongoing legal fight. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse talks his beef with Gary Gensler and the debate over what is a security. Plus, Kaylee, we're looking at how investors are digesting the unraveling of Silvergate as regulatory scrutiny intensifies. And Nick Carter of Castle Island Ventures is explaining why he thinks the Biden administration is quietly trying to ban crypto. 
All right, so all of that is ahead. But first, let's get a snapshot of the market. The best way to do that on your Bloomberg terminal, CRYP Go. And what you will find is the major digital currencies, Bitcoin and Ether, are under some pressure today, maybe falling in tandem with other risk assets after we heard Chairman Powell speaking on Capitol Hill. Right now, Bitcoin down about half of 1%. We're trading at 22300 or so, while Ether is trading at 1561 One outlier, though, is XRP. Of course, this is central to that one SEC lawsuit we were talking about. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but XRP is up about 1.8% on the day. And of course, the other lawsuit very much in focus today relates to Grayscale versus the SEC. And oral arguments perhaps favoring more toward the Grayscale end of the spectrum than maybe was previously anticipated. And you see that reflected in the performance of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which, of course, is what is in question in the attempt to convert it into an ETF. It right now is up 8.4% on the day. And importantly, Shanali, its discount to its net asset value is shrinking. It was 46% last week. We are uh, south of 40% now. Yeah, absolutely. As low as 35% today. And that's after those opening arguments in Grayscale's lawsuit against the SEC. Traders are now betting on a higher probability of Grayscale actually winning. Going into the case, Bloomberg Intelligence thought the SEC was 60% favored, but now they think Grayscale is 70% likely to win. Bloomberg's Katie Greifeld joins us now with the latest. 70% likely to win. How about 70% rate hike odds? Chad Nulo, 4,000 is coming in on the futures. My goodness. My goodness. Peep MS volume, 3998. SPX has broken it. Only thing that is not broken has been the... uh, uh, been the futures right now, but it's about to 4,002. Ay, ay, ay. Why would the two year go up, but the 10, 20, 30 year drop? Uh, because the Fed, short term interest rates. So short term is directed by the Fed and it starts there. Longer term is directed more by the market and everything else. So you know the Fed is raising rates. And now if you're expecting more after today, short term rates are going to go up. And then the longer term, they usually either they could go up with it, but then sometimes they go down. Because the prevailing logic is that if rates are high in the short term, that's a lot of risk. That means in a 10, 20, 30 year time scale, rates will probably level out in the future. So it's a 10 year out bet. So if things are bad now, things will get better in 10 years. That's why yields are usually lower and then vice versa. So that's why sometimes when rates are low, longer term interest rates are higher. But granted, I mean, apply that to the modern monetary framework and then, you know, sub three, four percent rates for the last, you know, 20, 30 years. Short-term bonds, I mean, there's cash ETFs. Uh, there's uh, also, you could even go to Treasury Direct. Uh, so that's what it was. I mean, it's funny. Uh, I don't know. I feel like retail's been listening, Chad, or maybe it was just us. I don't know. But ever since I've told you about Bill, in the week, week and a half following Bill, uh, there's been a record amount of retail inflows into cash in Treasury bond ETFs, a.k.a. this is the most, and even on Treasury Direct, It was the most retail activity on three months bonds ever, meaning that now a lot of retail traders and a lot of people in the market, they are buying more short-term bonds and short-term cash-yielding products than ever before. So a lot of people are picking up on this logic where it's like, hey, look at the market, go back and forth. Everyone's debating no landing, soft landing, hard landing, all of this stuff. But everyone's saying, why should I take 10, 20% risk now when I could just go get four and a half percent in three months so uh they're going back up on it man this is the key and then we got in the bill about uh two weeks ago so great timing on that one great great timing on that one but you're ahead of the pack chad you're ahead of the pack so spy coming down here that's it we're in the danger zone Mm. upside down on la ling T-bills, baby. Very, very small yield, but it's good for now. This is a uh, all-time. I think it's a this is the highest we've been since two thousand and eight on the uh, two-year. Nvidia is coming down now. Like we said, once those chip makers watch out here, low ticker is taking over. Raul has came back, but you are below four thousand, and then the futures are about to make that test right now. And then volume kind of increased. Otherwise, it was pretty slow on the day. I mean, 55 million. We got like, what, three hours left? Yeah, so you still got a lot of time. Who's buying ETFs into rising interest rates? It depends on what it is. So like 
you know, Bill is a cash ETF. Bonds even dropped on that too. But it really, it's just, if you, people are buying ETFs that are equivalent to cash and yielding cash, cash management ETFs, uh, they are doing very, very well. In three years, see strong demand. Growth ETFs, not that many people. I mean, uh, I think there's been a lot of outflows or even in comparison, I think cash ETFs have gotten like seven times the amount of volume uh, comparatively. Did Apple hasn't even hit a new low yet? And Apple's still holding some of the gains from yesterday? Jeez. Yeah, this is your first time in a long time that, sh that uh, people are getting rewarded. And then that little bounce there. You're getting, oh man, big volume into the low. This is it. You're right. You're one point above on the futures. Futures are the only one that have not broken below 4,000. SR3, they're rocketing up. Mm hmm. AKA down means that the rates, the rates are projecting a lot. It's terrifying. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's very wild here. This was one of the last things. Uh, I didn't think Powell would immediately trigger uh, the odds of 50 basis points just going through the roof right now. And now even short-term interest rates are all across uh, all across the board, or even uh, just any Fed futures have just shot up tremendously. So S&P dips below 4,000. Eyes are on technicals. Of the round figure of 4,000 levels to watch include 3,999, which is the 38 Fibonacci retracement, then 3,994, and then the uh, which is the 50-day moving average. So 3,994 is the SPX 50-day, which is like right where this line is. Well, that's it. I think it's about to flush. Look, you have all these orders. All it takes is one order from here, but we have been prone to air breaking all day today. Well, the 200 days a lot lower. Right now, we're back to the 50 day. So you have to get to the 50 day, the 100 day, then the 200 day. That looks like, but I think we're still holding up. Yeah, there's your 200. There's your 200 and 100 are close. And then the 50 day is like right here. I don't think there's going to be respect on that. We are going to find out. Yes, the uncertainty is palpable. I agree. That's why I'm that's why I'm I'm nervous. That's it. Anything can happen from here. Just in the sense that now you're the market is vulnerable. Uh, for both directions. I think we might start to get some of those wicked swings on both levels, but quite frankly now, that's it. Nobody in the market is uh, in a clear consensus, and the way everybody's going back and forth is crazy. Lady at call for dollars getting paid. Max downside on the spy. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I want that answer. Again, that ES uh, kind of hurt, but uh, realistically, I think like thirty nine eighty, borderline thirty nine sixty. If people really want to make it ugly, uh, but we've already dropped a decent amount. But yeah, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not opposed to anything right now. I think the. I think the range is widened. Mm. Yeah, I don't think Bostic, you need a voter to say what Bostic said, but that's it. I mean, from the from the chair of the Federal Reserve, uh, they said, no, 3960 for today would be like death. Otherwise, 3980, uh, and then that's it. And then I still think even a 4050 to 4060 on the upside is still possible. It just depends on kind of how people digest this, but it's clear negative bias. Mm. 
three nine eighty in spy terms is like three nine. I don't know. It's like two points higher on SPY. Swiss National Bank Bank president is speaking. He was near term. No, he's just talking about today. More Airbnb. It's weird. Airbnb ran up before all of this. There's a lot of things I want to buy, man. I mean, that's it. The only beauty uh, in all of this is if we really do get like ugly dumps after the data and Powell, uh, we're going to be able to fucking reload the long term at another <laughs> at another deep discount. So this is like you guys see it. This is like the red line in the sand right now. You've been hugging uh, 4100 here for probably the last 10 minutes. This has been 10 minutes just right at the line in the sand. Everything is already below 4,000. SPY is just hugging SPX 399. And yeah, McKesson got clapped. Meta gave up 2% from the morning. Even Googly's down 1%. I don't know why Amazon is up today. That's the funny part. The VIX writing Pub M on the high. Uh, that bubble one, that's a book map. It's just like a fancy level two. But it's been very, I dude, I, I don't like it. I mean, even as of lately, uh, the amount of orders that I've seen like pull is, is insane. So like, and then even uh, depending on how you zoom in and zoom out, it's the orders don't change, but it just kind of makes the colors look a little bit more dramatic. Uh, but a lot of orders are very, I mean, very, very uh, theoretical is the best way to put it. Someone get Kramer on the phone. Short Jim is up 16, a 16th of a percent. Yeah, SPY, they're not delayed. There's just a gap between the two. And then, Chad, we're still hugging this level here. You have not moved for 10 minutes right below 4,000. The futures are the only one ha that have not broken 4,000 today. Jordan says Swiss economy slowing, but labor market dried up. 4,002, 4,175. Ah! You get ready. Again, chip makers are not holding you up. Dollar's still high, and the bond market has fell from the top on the 10-year. That was the only thing that's weird about today is that the, I'm surprised the 10-year hasn't rocketed above 4% yet. Uh, banks, dude, financials are number two worst on the day. So they're getting destroyed. I might make another purchase on Bank of America. I still like the banks. I think it's going to lag a little bit, but for the most part, they've been getting murdered. Two-year getting smacked. The 10 years surprisingly stable. I think it may be because all the action is on the short end today. And then there's not to mention the Fed futures, which is wild. MO and 3M. 3M's cheaper, so I'm glad about that. We'll be able to get that one a little lower. But I'm excited. I mean, we still just got to get our money out of bill. So we'll see if we get our full yield uh, by the time we get a good long-term pickup. But I'm excited. I am excited, at least for the long-term. This is what we've been waiting for. Spy dropping. There it is now. Uh, is that futures below 4,000? 4, no, 4,001, 4,075. 4,001 still. So SPX is going lower. This is slightly lower on the futures, only by like half a point. 
So they're working their way into it. Yeah, I would be looking to grab more meta or 3M at, at 100. 40. Again, this is, uh, you're still above all the moving averages, but I, apparently this is the Fibonacci. Yeah, dollar is running up there, and now bonds are coming down too. I think that'll be the next part of today is if the four-year, I think if we really, really die today, you're going to watch the four-year uh, go above four, which I don't think it's there yet. Yeah, 3.96. He's down today. And then global currencies are going insane. 63% odds of 50 basis points. Uh, Lyft, I think they're decent, but they're, they've already went up since that $4 level or 5 bucks. So I'd be careful with it. TNK on the high. Isn't that a bond ETF? And you're going lower now. That's it. 4,050. Futures are flushing through the level, or at least they've taken out a couple of the orders here. So get be on watch. I mean, it may sound dramatic, but we don't know if it's going to air break or not. So just be on the lookout here. Did it hit 4,000? 4,075, 4,025. Oh, you just have one print of 4,000. It's not gone below it yet. Oh, everybody was kung fu fighting. Pow, 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 pow. I'm enjoying this. That's good. That's good. Enjoy it. It's right. I'm excited. I'm like nervous. That's it. The market has a the market has a lot of ways it could pivot now. So just get ready. I mean, I thought non farms was going to be the biggest event this week, but now this paired up with non farms on Friday and Fed futures. I mean, this is truly uh if you wanted volatility, this is what you got. Dash news is just the pricing uh, for New York delivery drivers. Uh, that's what got uh, what's it called going up. Uh, that's what got Uber going up earlier. And there it is. 4,000 is broken on the futures. So 3,997 on the SPX. We're going a little lower. Mm -hmm. 3,997. Financials, I'm not too sure. I mean, maybe it could be if the banks start paying out higher rates, but they also have their way to benefit off of it. But I also think they're kind of more of the value names and the defensives. A lot of defensives have been selling off and then anything interest rate sensitive, you know, commodities, utilities, real estate, those are the ones that have been getting totally murked right here. And then NASDAQ is still the only one below 1% right now or above 1%. Everything else down, down uh, 1.4, SPY 1.2. You just broke 4,000. You've regained it again, but that was your first break of the day on the futures. SPX, SPY all lower. Snap. Maybe we should have sold those cover calls today. And then see if the chips could bounce. They helped us up a lot. Senator Feinstein said she's recovering at home. Uh, futures hit 4,000 and immediate bounce, but let's see how long it takes us. I mean, Raul has been lurking all day today. You're getting a couple green candles and then you're selling. Again, you even just sold off that 20. That was a 20-point rip in four minutes. And then it took you about an hour to sell it off. And today, I guess, is almost done, but we still got two and a half hours. But well, we're getting towards the lower end, and VWAP is still pretty much at the lows of earlier. You had one opportunity to get near the levels of today, and that's it. Well, yeah, now with 50 basis point odds up like that, I mean, I think Raul, I think Raul has uh, earned his place in the market now. I think Raul could be lurking at every corner. And then uh, just depending on how those odds move, I think that is going to uh, 
factor into uh, any volatility. Fed Chair Raul. Raul got laid off, but he works in tech, so he got a job really quickly again. That's what it looks like. Raul the ghoul. Ghoulsby? Nah, Raul can't be stopped until Powell makes the move. And then if Powell does, I'm man, all I'm saying, though, is the next two weeks are going to be crazy. That's it. Just even it's mind boggling thinking that there's a very good chance now that prior to the Fed meeting, Powell is going to be faced with one of these 60, 40 decisions. So you're just that data now in the next couple of days is going to move a lot of things. And like I told you, uh, the Fed future odds of 50 basis points are higher today than they were in October, which is wild. So even on the October 13th low when we were dying at 340, the market wasn't even pricing in 50 basis points as they are today. So these are the highest those percentages have gone. Yeah, there's less time. Less time, so more short-term volatility. And then that little bounce there, Raul's coming back. You've literally hit 3999 on the futures, bounced to 4003. Now we're back to 4001. Let's see for the low retest part two. City dumping. All of the banks, all of the banks are just vomiting right now. Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they're all getting worked right now. Add, 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 add. That's good. That's good, man. I'm kind of disappointed in y'all, though. That's it. Like, imagine if y'all just hit the like button. Like, when y'all go and say add, that's insane. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Uh, man, like, look at the chat. The power of the chat is there. That's a ad is more motivating than the... That's crazy. That's, so that's... I don't know. I'm, I'm learning stuff about the chat today. I'm, I'm learning more about the chat today. Mm-hmm. Being like in the video. Amen, amen. You know the real ones out there. Watch for the silver Honda coming down your block. No. <laughs> License plate rug pull. You get paid. I should, but I didn't. I mean, I'm not the one like putting in these ad breaks. It seems like today you guys have been getting them every 30 minutes on the dot. So we'll see. But we've had a lot of weird. YouTube is uh, literally in the last like what month and a half now. YouTube has changed their policy on advertisements. They are put even if you don't monetize, they'll put it on there. And then even if you do turn it on, they still run it. But this is definitely uh, I've never seen the Chad complain about ads like this today. I don't, I don't even think we've ever ran this many ads in one day. Uh, again, I'm not doing it, but I think YouTube is automatically throwing it in now on a schedule. So welcome to Twitch part two. I'm leaving peace. Well, you'll, you'll want to be here for the jobs report. So don't leave for too long. We love you. But tr you trust me, you're going to want to be here on Friday now. <laughs> That's all I could tell you, man. I hope whatever it is, man, I hope you don't get too frustrated. I hope you don't leave too long and don't get too emotional. But uh, I'm just saying but you might want to be here on Friday now. Because Friday is going to be wild. Jobs reports Friday, non-farm payrolls, and then Tuesday right after that. 
Is Bagix similar to Bill? Let's see. Aggregate bond instrument. Uh, this one looks like a mutual fund, but it could be very similar. So you can't trade it. I think it's a fund you got to buy into. I think SGov is the closest to Bill. And that's what you got to be careful for with any of those. And like I told you, here's it's very simple. If your brokerage is paying you more cash to hold and you don't you don't need this at all. But other than that, if you are going to try to buy one of these for like high yield cash management, just make sure it kind of looks like this. Make sure it looks like a guaranteed trade. Otherwise, there's one I really like, like SJNK. I really like this one. This is the Bloomberg short-term high yield bond ETF, but the problem is this one moves with the market. So this one moves with the price of bonds and all of that. Um, but other other than that, you want to be looking out for one that just has a straight pattern and doesn't really move and looks like it's broken. These are the, the bond plays that you want or any of the cash ETFs. So then that way, you know it's not moving in value. You have your liquidity. You have your price stability. And then you're still able to get your yield. Uh, Apple is trying to move up on that. Next FOMC is March 22nd. So in about two weeks. Literally, I think two weeks in one day on the dot. Yeah, Robinhood is good if you have gold. New low. Hold on there. I thought it was going to air break. You just flushed one more time, 3997. So this is the lowest you've stayed on the futures without even bouncing here. If that one eats it up too, you're going to have a problem. Raul just came in real quick. That was kind of, that was very subtle. I didn't think that one was going to hold. And then boom, two, two candle flush. Yeah, Apple low ticker is picking up now. Air break malfunctioning. Dude, banks are getting murdered. That one is probably, that's even more surprising than Powell in general today. You're getting banks really, really taking hit on the head. And then same thing with real estate, like O is down a lot. I think O, you might have another low on that coming in the next couple of days if this trend continues. And then dollar back above 28.60 now. Spies keep going down now. 399, you're one point below 4,000. So big volume, 3996, 3997 is another level. Uh, that's it now, 3980, bro. That is it, 3980. If you don't have any sort of bounce and you don't hug this level, uh, that is the next spot, and then we will fill that gap. You will fill the Bostick gap. After barely filling that 4080 gap the other day, candles are still getting bigger. I would buy O if it went below our price, yeah. There's a lot of names we're going to buy. I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's the silver lining in all this is that just remember, we have all of our money with uh, cash management. We're getting high yield. And then we still have, you know, we've kept 15, 20% cash. Thankfully, we're getting money on it. But uh, this is what we prepared for. Yeah, we will have a lot of long-term alerts. Unless we just throw it all in one thing, that's good. I don't know. You give me the right yield, I'm excited. I'm excited. And even then, long-term's doing great. We would have went up last week if Bostick didn't do what he did. I don't know. I just I think uh, I think today was just decisively negative from the get-go. That's it. I think uh, just right off the bat, I mean, I'm surprised we didn't move more than Bostick. That's the crazy part. I mean, technically speaking, 
Powell has moved the market less than Bostic. It's kind of the same formation here, but then you had that follow up. Uh, but for the most part, I do think it is, uh, you know, I just, I think it's been pretty negative, uh, regardless. That's it now. I mean, the Fed futures are, are, are putting it up there. Uh, Bank of America, I like it uh, for the short term. I think in the next couple of weeks here, I feel like higher rates should ultimately benefit the banks, uh, but they are definitely struggling today. But yeah, with the long term, I have two ideas. I have a couple of ideas. I mean, there's one, a couple of, I don't know how low things will go. So that, you know, a lot of purchases will be dictated, you know, give me a brand name at a low price, I'll buy it. But if I could throw in most of the deposit into two names, I will, if they pay good enough dividends. So then that way we could increase sizing by a lot and then uh, we'll see where else. And then there's a couple of other plays I, I have an eye out for, uh, even beyond 3M and Altria and all that. But it just all depends on pricing. My target on O is like $53 or 56 so we got O pretty cheap. 3M and O are some of my top picks, but I'm still going to wait. But I need those at the right price. And then another new low here. We're coming into it. I mean, technically, you just hit the low, but 3994, you're one point away. Futures uh, got above 4,000 on that balance, and then they're a little lack of respect more, more, more so. I get that banks benefit from higher interest rate. What point does it get too high? That default risk becomes a reason to go short once the defaults come in. So that's like, it's going to be lagging indicator. I don't know. Maybe like that's kind of could fall in line with the yield curve. So I think by the time the yield curve really shows what's happening here, or once we start reacting to it, then I think the banks will. But in the meantime, as long as they're, you know, like I said, they're, they're making hand over fist on IOER alone, not to mention, they're still skimming uh, customers between the Fed funds rate and, uh, you know, what they're getting for it or what they could charge and then what they get it at. Uh, no more Fed speakers today. I'm not, I don't, I don't believe so. Coming down three, nine, nine, eight. So again, if you can't hold any of these levels, we're going to 3980 and you have a lot of time. So, Maybe that 3960 level isn't, uh, I don't think that that 3960 level is too far fetched now because we're down. We're down early right now. You still have a lot of time and this momentum literally has been nonstop since Powell and you're holding this nice, it's a subtle downtrend, but it is borderline violent from how it started. If Bostic didn't say anything, I think we'd be below 3900 right now. I think uh, greedy short, you could go for it. Mm. I had a short idea earlier, but I didn't take it. I was looking at Mickey D's. I just wanted to trim some of my upside that was running, and they still kept going. I'd buy Amazon at like lower than 80 bucks, maybe like 70. So that's a name we could keep on watch, but who knows? Who knows how this plays? The real question is all, you know, we could get excited and be licking our chops for the long term right now, but all that could change. You're flushing another new low, five points below 4,000 now on the futures, 3,992, bro. You're going to hit the 3,980 now. No, what you're filling the Bostic gap. So now you are below the level of the day after Bostic. Uh, only other time you were here was the couple days before Bostic. Uh, and now you're just right back to the gulag of last week. Remember, 4017, that was your frustration point. You're right below it, and now we are kind of in the middle here. 3992, SPX. Futures are air breaking. Raul. Oh, I forgot about Netflix, too. Netflix didn't move much, especially compared to yesterday. Amazon is break even now. Uh, 
Nvidia. Apple's even coming down here, so watch out. Apple's been relatively stable. I think once uh, Apple starts to flush, you'll get a little bit more action. Futures are hitting another low. A little bit of bids coming in above it. You're still into low candles. Last four minutes, all been a new low every single minute. 3991. You're down uh, almost 1% on the NASDAQ now, 1.3 uh, on the SPX, and then uh, 1.5 on the Dow. The 10 year is kind of playing, but it just, it's weird. The 10 year is not at four. That's the only thing not happening today that's just like, why? You know, Fed futures move, dollars skyrocketing, currencies are getting weaker. The only thing not moving is the 10 year, but then you could argue that the shorter term is, uh, the shorter term interest rates are the ones getting the action because Fed futures are, are uh, the, um, excuse me, the yield curve is still uh, f uh, inverting. I think pharma is your best way to just stay away from any drama uh, in the market. You're not really reluctant on what the market does, but then you're more at the mercy of whatever the reports are. Two, three, nine, eight, more, bro. Last six, seven minutes, all lows. Every single candle from here on out has been a new low since breaking 4,000 uh, on the futures pretty dramatically. And now you're getting, you're getting not even an order trap, but it's just, you have bids lining up to sell. XBI, the UVIX is on the high. I mean, VIX is now above 19. Another new low there. My goodness. MMM 107, just watch if Apple flushes through the lows. That'll be the next one. And then even if like NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. XLV. Banks, why have you abandoned me? Uh, where was it in October? Meta flush in. They were up 2%. NQ. NQ has been holding up very good. Uh, they're going to be the ones, I think. Have they hit new lows? Because I remember SPX was. NQ wasn't. Yeah, NQ still hasn't. Now, this will be the real. Uh, maybe we'll see everything move in tandem. But NQ has to hit a new low. It is actually yet to do that all day today. Holding up way better than the S&P. 3992 is the low on uh, futures here for the day. But that could still keep going lower here. Again, last 10 minutes has been a new low every single minute. Oh, Jay, what is Jay's going in today, baby? What's up, man? What's up? Oh, look at the Twitch. The Twitch is loving the bearishness. The Twitch is loving the 50 basis points, huh? <laughs> Powell came in, bro. He came in. Dollar twenty eight sixty. Snap is holding up. Snap and chip makers, they'll be next. Bank or oh, America. It's like the top level of their earnings. Watch out though, that candle, man. Still very fighting. 3990, dude. You had a little bit of relief, but you might hit another new low right now. Yep, new low. <laughs> it's not this the futures are holding up a little bit better, but all of it's still everything's getting eaten up right now. Where's the volume at? Sixty one million. So it's picking up here. Low key volume wasn't that active in the morning and now it's getting a little bit hotter. You're already at 60 million before hitting 11. NQ has not hit a new low yet. Mm. Oh, there's some random bids showing up. 
But 3988, eight points from filling the gap of Bostic. And that will be the next support level. I think there's a little bit uh, right before it, too. There's like 38981 and then 3980. And the next level will be 3970. And then back to 3960. Bro, look at these 30 minute cam. This is all day today. 40, 50, almost 100 points in a day. And you're getting bids in here, but you're still dancing at the lows. NVIDIA just loves to, to hold up today. Yeah, bro. City, I lost all the gains on that in one day. We're still barely green on it. Meta, red, uh, meta's de negative on the day now, too. Bro, you need this green candle to hold, or otherwise we'll probably flush to 3980. It's still been borderline slow, but this was a nice 10 points here uh, just in about 12 minutes. Nah, you're hitting a new low. That one's not holding, man. You're eating, dude, you're eating everything there. Fed futures are almost at 72. That's what I was worried about. They're at 74. Dude, this isn't good. That means if this holds by today, everybody is going to be pricing this in and saying this is the thing for tomorrow. Oh, Jones, yeah, Fed futures are at 74% now. NQ has finally hit a new low. So it hasn't done that since the morning. So there it is right there, 12,100. We'll see if the NASDAQ even tests 12,000. That one's going to be interesting. The sell-off tomorrow. Uh, what data do we have? But yeah, I think if this ends negative and then there's no uh, nothing to compete. You have ADP employment. Uh, and then trade balance. So, and then Jolt jobs opening. So that'll be a precursor to the uh, non farms. So tomorrow we'll have a lot. But if this continues, this is gonna get this is gonna get nutty. But that's it. I mean, really, it's we're on watch to 3,900 3, flat again, back to the uh, 200 day moving average again. Another new low. 15 minutes now, almost of new lows straight. 39.86. Then banks are dropping. Bro, another low on that? <laughs> We're gonna you're gonna hear me say that for the next two hours probably until this stop. Yeah, wait. Things are coming down now. Even like Tesla. Apple is hitting a new low, like I was telling you there. That keeps going. That's gonna be a problem. Even Bitcoin flushed. So you're getting another set of bid support, but last time that happened, what, five minutes ago, you were four points lower, and now you're five points from low to the next level and filling the gap. SQSP, Squarespace, they had good earnings. So they're running up. Even Dick Sporting Goods held up, and then what was the other? SE, that's still at the high. Uh, NVIDIA's finally giving it up. NVIDIA's about to go red which is good considering everything in tandem has went red and all of those have held up. How high will rates go? Uh, seven to eight, I don't know. I mean, Powell, this is just a reaction off of Powell and insinuating they could go higher than 5.2. And right now we're pricing in 5.6. Uh, but if it went to seven or eight, the SPY would be at like 2% by now. Arobindo Pharma got tentative nod by FDA. Oh, it's in the ARB, ARBB. Nope. Switch gear, bro. Again, another new low on this candle if this goes like a half a point lower. So there's an order trap here, but it does look very, very soft. Elon live stream at Morgan Stanley conference. Low ticker, 30 second, one minute velocity. All is going through the roof. A couple of names on the high ticker and then NVIDIA bounce, but we'll see. Two year at five. All right. First bounce. First relief in 15 minutes after hugging the low for 30 minutes and then flushing there a solid almost 20 points right there. So, first bounce there in the last 20. See how this holds. 
Gold pushing down currency pairs. Bloomberg dollar index rises to 1% uh, higher, highest level since January 6th. That sound I farted. Excuse me. Microsoft's hitting a new low now. And then so is Apple. That one's not going to last. I don't think so. Now, a little bit of 50 day respect, but I don't know, man. This has just been the Fed future odds just keep going. I, I very much regret not. I should have took out the ES on that first bounce that I said. But other than that, it's going to be a long two days, man. <laughs> Unless that, and especially if that Jolch jobs opening comes in hot tomorrow, uh, it's going to be long. I mean, especially considering we have to factor in the Bostic range in the last two days. It's going to be a long two days, man. How low can we go? I think 39.60 would be the ultimate low, but really maybe even 39.20 if people really want to, if, if the Fed future odds keep going, because now that, I don't like 70%. This is the part uh, I would be scared of mostly in the next coming days, because as this moves up and down, uh, it's going to whipsaw the market in whatever direction. But the certainty of 50 basis point now, I, I don't think it's digested. I mean, I don't believe it. Uh, but I can only imagine if that closes there and then over the next 24 hours, everybody is going to have to talk about it. Uh, but it's on the table. I mean, that's it's firmly on the table. It is actually the now it is considered the most likely outcome. It might air break, but that last 15, bro, you just dropped for 20 minutes straight, 15, 20 minutes. Again, another relief bounce. You're about one point above the low. So get ready. I think the low was here like what 39.89 on the futures. It's eating it up again too. And the dollar is still climbing and bonds are dropping now. So that could be the second half of this. And then once bonds go above 4%, then everybody's playing along. Going to happen. Yeah. Unless honestly if tomorrow's jobs data isn't soft, we're dead. So that's going to be the uh the problem here. A lot will be riding on that. And then you still have the risk of uh, Friday. What day? Tomorrow's only Wednesday. Shit. Yeah. You have a long time. Long time, Habibi. Apple new low. Spy new low now. Futures. 3985.75. Almost a hundred on the anchor. That's great. That's beautiful. Beautiful. I just want you to know you're my favorite. No. Yeah, the banks, real estate, materials, utilities, those are all getting worked. Mm, Tegna, 300K pop. Uh, yeah, are they in the buyout mode though? What's going on with Tegna? Yeah, Tegna just had a big pop. Uber, there's a couple of names today that are holding, but still very, very, very wide of a day. Uh, let's even see the breakdown. Uh, it looks like right now, SPX, you only have 36 names that are up. <laughs> so the other 467 names are red. That's on the S&P. Uh, the NASDAQ, let's see here. NASDAQ, you have 900 names up. 2,000 names down, and then 501 names unchanged. And then I don't even think anything on the Dow is green. Yeah, Dow has one name up, Merck. Otherwise, the other 29 names are in the red. A 
ABML up and holding. Three nine eight five seventy five is the level for now. This might be its own little new level, if unless we go lower here. Otherwise, we should just go to thirty nine eighty. Yeah, bro, we don't even have this on the three nine nine five. We already burned through today's level. I gotta go back in time. No, I gotta go back in two days. Yeah, here it is. Thirty nine ninety one is the March third high. We're at thirty nine eighty five. So yeah, that if if assuming we don't go lower than today, this will create a new low of the day. Other than that, it says 3980 is the 50 day, but that's not updated. I think right here is the 50 day moving average, 3990. Uh the levels, I mean, just like it says here, they're very simple. February 17th high, close, high, low, high, high, low. There's a couple of like Fibonacci's and moving averages, but about 90% of the levels are just based off of previous highs and lows that we've been to. So a, a really good example is just like looking at the ES. Uh, we brought up the 3960 the other day, and you go and look back. I mean, this is where you broke out, where you broken down, where you know you flushed and had rallies from all through last year. That's a great level. I know the SPX chart gets a little messy, but you could kind of go back in time and see. You know, these are the same prices. Uh, you were at a couple of months ago. I mean, you kind of had the same volatility around September, and it kind of looked like this, believe it or not. Bears to get punched in the face. It's weird. It's weird because I don't even think, I think there's rightful reason to be bearish right now. But then at the same time, it's like how believable is it that the Fed is going to do 50 now? And that is where uh, we're going to have the battle. I think everybody's going to get punched in the face. That's it. This is already, like I was telling you, just coming into all of this, this was not expected to be uh, an event that moves uh, that moves odds. Like this was not supposed to move uh, rate hiking odds, and then it did. So this is, this is the, the crazy part about all of it is that nobody was really expecting much, and then you actually got the move. More ads. It got y'all again. Okay, we still love you. Ad clap. Mm. This is good, though. This is good. I need that ad reaction a lot, though. Like, I need y'all to, to bring that energy to everything. You know what I'm saying? That's like 400 comments instantly on ad. That's beautiful. I need y'all like, yo, what do you, can y'all share the stream? I need y'all to, oh my gosh. I need y'all like the video too. It's great. It's great. We got a lot of good work here. Got a lot of good work here. Google Ian, good. I mean, at this rate, you're going to have what? Two more ads. You'll have four more ads coming if it keeps doing it every 30 minutes. Yeah, we're going to be here live for Powell tomorrow and all the data. I mean, you're definitely going to be there. Hmm. Boyle, UNG are on the high. Okay, so we stopped the uh, 20 minutes of straight lows. So now you've been bouncing for about like nine minutes. Uh, feels like forever, though. Because <laughs> I'm like, when's Raul going to show up here? And let's see, you're bouncing up a little bit. You set a new low on the day, 39.85. Five points above the level. And then it seems to be right around the 50-day moving average as well, too. Mm, there 
go. Little red. Boyle is back. I mean, remember it was back and then it died and now it's back again. Kind of reminds me of Fed Future odds, to be honest with you. Seventy two percent. Still kind of in disbelief. Okay, this is your biggest rally here in the last two hours. <laughs> this right here is your biggest rally since that one. So, I mean, enjoy it while it lasts. Let's see what happens here. Nick Timorous. I don't know. I would love to hear what Nick Timorous, uh, whatever he's going to hint at in terms of uh, Fed futures. Because this is, bro, this is mind-boggling today. That's it. 50 basis points is back, mother effer. It is back. You know that 50 basis points hawkish fed in two weeks is back. It is back right now. And I don't, I don't believe it, uh, but I, I have to believe it because I know pal is a little B word and he'll, he'll cave to what those fed futures say, but very, very wild, very, very wild as of late. Should have never left. Keep talking. Oh, red candle. Boop. It lasted for a little bit. It lasted for a little bit. 50 basis points in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it'll at least be above the month over month, which is important. Uh, but when it's all said and done, I net 50 basis point is just kind of, uh, I guess, just how it looks too. Like I'm saying, for Powell to go... 25, 50, 75, 50, 25, and then back to 50. I mean, it just looks panicky. That's, I think, is the uh, easiest way to put it. I think, if anything, it's just more panicky of a of a look, and then that's about it. Oh, my gosh. Two candles wiping out your last 10 minutes. Chathodonia, get ready. 39.80 if we go lower. 50. I don't think 50 is priced in. It's, it's unbelievable. That's it. And it was just all off of a pre-written statement of Powell acknowledging that there is stronger inflationary uh, outputs coming in. Well, he's kind of just left it on the table, about 25 or 50. He's never kind of boxed it in, uh, but more so he's just kind of uh, outlined they'll, they'll, they'll need to keep raising, and then it seems like the last three months, the topic was, uh, it wasn't about how big, the topic was all about how long. And, you know, that's what Powell was saying. He's like, it doesn't matter if we go 25 or 50. He's saying all that matters is how long we keep it there, but now the market is already digested and is like, okay, Powell's going to keep rates high the whole year, right? But now they're going to, now they're saying, okay, well, now it's going to be 50 and it's going to be for longer. Well, rally once he does 50. But if the Fed futures price in 50 between now and March 22nd and he doesn't do 50, he will eliminate uh, 60 years of credibility. So sadly, I think he has to. If the market prices in 50 by March 22nd, I think he has to. But then he's going to run the risk of short term credibility looking awful or uh, getting back to uh, the line of logic of, of preserving Fed credibility in the Fed futures. It's very weird. This is now Powell is getting boxed in again is the best way I could put it towards you. But then again, I don't think he would be opposed to doing 50. It just looks really bad. But I think uh, even then, I mean, I feel like Powell's hawkish, uh, you know, besides last month. So it could it could hold him down there a little bit. The market is currently pricing in 74 percent odds now, 72 percent of 50 basis points by March 22nd, and that's in two weeks and zero days. Two weeks and 22 hours, 57 minutes. Yeah, 50, he said he would front load. Going to 50 is turning back on directionality. Yeah, it would just, it would look panicky. 
it would look panicky and then not to mention i mean it but it would it would lower financial conditions but 100 percent, it's not uh it's just weird that's why i'm like i don't know it says it though i know i know better in the sense that you're supposed to believe the fed futures uh but i just I, it seems like a seems like a difficult task here we're gonna find out and that's why the next couple of data sets are about to be massive cano didn't cano get bought out or were they in a buyout deal but Cano's on the high right now. You think the Fed is allowing this narrative to play out since the focus is now 50? Well, it's only been 12 hours, so we're going to find out. But other than that, I mean, we'll see how the other Fed speakers respond. But more so, it was, a, it was the last comment that gave you a pop here. There's a lot of data coming in. So the data that comes in tomorrow... And Friday, all of that is going to really uh, determine what happens. Just borderline, we're gonna we're gonna see what's up with it. The data will confirm or deny. Elon is live talking. PTGX that's running. SC another high, and then Cano just had a pop. SE is disgusting. We saw that at 4% this morning. Mm. Nothing on camera. SE is disgusting. What do you think of Hasbro? I think they're coming off bad earnings, but I haven't really looked into them in a while. I don't know. Toys are expensive, though. I have a nephew. I didn't realize how much, like, dude, I went to buy him, like, because I wanted to fight him. That's a long story. He was trying to fight me the other day. The guy likes to fight. He goes up even to grandma, and he goes, Grandma, you want to fight? So the guy, like, he does, like, jujitsu already and shit like that. But I was like, all right. I said, let me, like, because I'm trying to get him into Call of Duty. And I was like, let's fight. I said, I got an idea. And I went and I bought him Nerf guns. And I said, we went to Target and we bought Nerf guns so that we could have a Nerf battle. And that shit was like a hundred bucks, bro. Like, it was like a hundred and some change. Uh-huh. So, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if they make Nerf guns, but toys are, I feel like, always in demand. Cali go to an airsoft field. I don't know. If he's I, I don't know if he could handle airsoft. He's only four. Even then, though, I got domed by some of those damn uh, Nerf bullets, and they hurt. He got me one like right in between my head, and like it hurt so bad. I was like, "Yo, these things are vicious." Like, nah, they're actually crazy. Yeah, hopefully the ad dollars I, I'm very curious I wonder if we actually got it because again I've had some weird things with the uh monetization but hey it could get worse it could have been better right or it could always get worse that's why like y'all thought it was bad that I was asking you to like the video I think today we found out it could get worse that's I mean again I think y'all have been spoiled in the chat Y'all have gotten spoiled in the chat a little bit. That's the only thing that that's the only thing that makes me smile about it today. I'm like, ha ha ha. Well, now we know what gets them awake, huh? Now I know what gets you guys out of out of lurking mode. All it took is a, a 30 second ad. That's it. That's that's all it was. I got everybody. You guys were ready to go. Y'all were ready to advocate. 
Y'all were ready to write letters to your congressman. You're like, sir, dear congressman of Tennessee, did y'all know that Google is running ads without people saying so? And now they are doing it on a time schedule. And now I've been sitting here for the last three years and this is unacceptable. And, and what I want to say here is that it's ads and I've never had this many ads in my life. And uh, I, you know, I don't want to go look for a ad blocker, but I will. And I, I'm prepared to sign seriously your constituent. Y'all sending it out and y'all just, y'all, I've never seen this out of the chat. I know that's crazy. So I guess it, it could be, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. Mm hmm. Adflation. That's bullish for YouTube though. I think Google is really trying to get it. <laughs> he said, Josh, you've read my letter. I just got interrupted. I think I have 18 minutes. Mm. Just add blocker threats to my draft. You guys are going to start a, what's it called? The petition.org. Some of y'all, that's y'all went from like super quiet to Elizabeth Warren over ads real quick. It's crazy. Y'all just brought the Elizabeth Warren out in you. Do you get paid off the ads? I don't know. I'm going to find out. Because the other day, again, we had no ads for a very, very long time. And then all of a sudden, you guys were saying you had ads in the morning. And then I was like, what the hell? And I, I remember we updated. We had to, You had to sign a new ad form uh, with YouTube as part of like their shorts thing. So they changed the ads uh, like a couple of months ago. And then, so then I turned it on if they were running it there. But now this is, uh, this is definitely a new development. I've never seen this many people complain about it. So we'll find out, but I don't know. I'm I'm assuming I'll get paid off of it. I better. Otherwise, I, they just fucking you and me. Mm. <laughs> this draft is going to get set. Go send it. Yeah, YouTube, but they need it. I mean, YouTube is, uh, in terms of ad growth, it's been going down uh, a lot, hence why the chat GBT stuff crushed them. Looks like we're about to pop. Man, I'm just, get me out of the gulag, you know what I'm saying? You're like, we're about to win number one on Battle Royale. I'm like, nah, bro, let's just get out of the gulag, and then let's let's talk about trying to get the comeback. But as of now, man, I think uh, the, the scary part is that this whole time, Everything with the with the rate high call just keep moving. over time to pack up no three nine nine two dude it's your f dude do you realize and then yen is going lower so market bounce and then yen is going lower that means dollars going to break out again but dude you're working for five points and then flushing 20 like it's nobody's business there's no good for now but we'll see maybe the zero day call buyers yo where are my zero days at how come i ain't heard that once today I ain't heard recession over. I ain't heard zero. I have nobody blamed anything on zero day options today. Isn't this kind of weird? I feel like that's kind of suspicious. Vacation. I said it earlier. Okay, because we didn't get that first. I, I barely heard it today. Just made 100% on a zero day. Okay, that's so you guys are still here? 
That's good. That's good. I just, I was worried. I was just like, why did it just disappear? And went, it's gone. Three nine eight SC is still going crazy. Get wild out here. I do have someone who manages my Airbnbs. Yes, two people, or it's the same lady. But we're actually we're phasing her out. The market's moving too much. This is, uh, it's going to be like that for the next two weeks. Uh, she takes about 10% of the revenue. I'm phasing her out. Uh, I want somebody new. The, the lady's kind of weird. <laughs> this is, a, is the only way to explain it. So she got mad, uh, like, initially, like, I would just ask her questions, and she would get pissed at me for asking questions. <laughs> and I'm like, she was like foreign. So like, I don't know if maybe that, like, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of like my mom or my dad. Uh, but then I'd be like, wait a minute. Like, why are you like, why are you tweaking on that? I'm like, whatever, man. She just, she was making us a shit ton of money. It was easy. It was working. Uh, and then, uh, she got really mad when we lowered the cleaning fees. She got really, really mad. Uh, and then she was like, I don't want to do it. If this, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, so I said, let's finish up these bookings and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll get you out of there and, uh, you know, God bless you. Mm hmm. So, like, she was supposed to leave a couple months ago, but she hasn't. And then I guess we've been getting more bookings. And then I think she saw that we got more bookings. So then she stopped tripping. But yeah. She's illegal. That's why she doesn't like the questions. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's the reason why, uh, she, I don't even, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't even want to stereotype, uh, where she's from, but I don't, I don't think she's a illegal. <laughs> Fuck. It's like definitely cause she's illegal. They don't, you know, they don't like questions cause they're illegal. That's it. That, that's, that's totally it. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> have your girl do it I want my girlfriend to do it but then uh I don't know if uh she could actually handle it she has work so I don't know she could be our next fed chairman um, she's not even, uh, like, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I think her background is not, it's not what you think it is. <laughs> I want to do it, but I'm illegal. Well, clear. Well, clearly you're on the radar now. Cause that's the first thing I've never, I've never seen that jump to that, that quick of an answer. Mm hmm. You want privacy must be doing something wrong. I want my privacy. Haven't you heard of privacy? No, I'm over privacy. That's it. Everybody's weird regardless. Don't worry. You'll be seeing me soon. You'll be seeing me soon. We got to, once we have a REIT ready to go, I'm going to be, you're going to see my pretty smile. You're going to get to see my hairline. I'm going to wear a hat though. I'm going to have to wear a hat. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't keep acting like Prince Charles. When's the re uh, between now and the next 10 years? So very big time frame, very big time frame. And so, bro, the, I'm telling you vitamins though. Uh, dude, these vitamins have been knocking. 
I'm telling you, my hair is like low key grown back. It's I've I've seen the biggest improvement in my hairline in the last like five years. I'm telling you, bro. Vitamins with uh, zinc, iron, and biotin. That's it. Just go get you a vitamin with that, bro. If your hairline's struggling, you know, I think now's a good time to have our daily hairline discussion. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, damn, back below 39.90 again. You're coming down a little lower. Mm -hmm. No, bro, I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's crazy. Zinc, iron, and biotin. That's it. Bro, not creatine. <laughs> They hurt your uh they hurt your stomach if you eat, if you do it on an empty stomach. That's it. No, but that's it, bro. That's it. I'm telling you. I've never seen my hair actually my hair is actually growing. So like it went from like I could see the white on my baldness, you know what I'm saying? To like now it's like it's it's it's, it's dark brown again. It's beautiful. I do I do sprinkle creatine on top just cuz Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you better like the video. I just saved you like 10 years of aging right there. You know what I'm saying? But don't worry, you're going to get an ad in like seven minutes. So <laughs> hate to break it to you. You're coming right back down, though. Hold on. Don't man. Right when we start talking about hairlines, bro. Right when we start talking about hair. I thought we were going to have a little bit of chill. No, they just Raul, bro. That wasn't even a big red. It was just Raul. You see what I'm saying? Like, look, at you had no orders really stopping it. Then all of a sudden, pff, they just pulled the rug underneath it. Apple's flushing too to a new low. So remember I told you we'll start to really flush there once that happens. Watching the video too. They're actually coming. I think you're going to hit a new low, especially if it's there. Raul. Yeah, you're going to do it. You better do it. I mean, you're right there. 39.86. The low is 39.8575. So you're about half a point away from it. You're getting a uh, air break there, but I'm pretty sure it's going to flush unless Apple and NVIDIA bounce. And there it is. Going down, down in an earlier round. And 50 basis points are increasing. Be your number one with the rate hike. Oh, it didn't hit it. Is it a light say hit? But I don't trust it. I'm just bracing myself for more pain. I had my opportunity. ES killed me. I had the opportunity to get out of it, but I didn't. Got a little too greedy on that. And then uh, now I'm going to use tomorrow as an exit or Thursday. But we're going to expose ourselves to a world of hurt. 50 basis points is pretty much already. I mean, it's never going to be fully priced in until we get the uh, the data. So that's the thing. Tomorrow, Friday data could move this by 50%. Uh, same thing could happen by next week on Tuesday. Crowd earnings, people ask me about that. I haven't been looking into them. So, I mean, we'll see very, very shortly here. And we're still working our way down. So watch out. I mean, any minute now, you could have a nice little double bottom here, but I don't even think that's a double bottom because you've bottomed out so many times. <laughs> but uh, you're about half a point away from a new low right now. And then, like I was telling you, the yen was running up there. So watch the dollar. Ever since this big sell-off, the bonds actually declined. So in a weird way, if we really are going to flush, you may see more bond activity here. So if bonds keep selling off, yields go higher. I'd watch out for that. And then vice versa. If yields could come down lower and bounce, uh, that could free things up.
JPM holding. Banks are still just demolished. The banks got demoed, bro. I think I'm going to add a little bit to that. No, two bucks. Okay, I added 100 shares of Bank of America, 32.89. So now I just have 500 total. I think the 400 was weird. Uh, Raul graduated to arson. <laughs> You're crazy. All right, Chad, get ready. You're going to have an ad hit. I'm just, well, tell me if it does. It's 1128. So get ready. Bank of America, I've just been buying shares. I've held it for like a month or so now. Uh, and I've just been buying the dip. I bought some yesterday. And then we just sold off 3.5%. So I took another 100. I just grabbed Bank of America. You saw 10 full ads? That has to be like a movie at that point. Mm. Okay, the yen is still near the lows. Where is the yen actually? Yen is down almost a percent. Aye, aye, aye. We need a little bit more on that. Yep. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. And bonds have stayed pretty stable this whole time. Yeah, right on the dot. That ad got you good. That's good. That's good. Embrace it. Embrace it. Zoom on the low. I thought that was Zim. What time is it? It's 1130. 30 minutes till power hour. Holy shit. So I guess we're kind of uh, we're running here. Mm hmm. Good look on the heads up. Yeah. So we'll see. I'll see if I can change it, but just watch out for that. I'll let you know. But that definitely seems to be the trend. Everybody was going crazy at first. I was like, what's going on? Tesla flush. A little bit. A little bit. Tesla's actually decent. I mean, it was leading down all the way. Tesla looks like the damn 10 year right now. ETGX, that one's still on the high. So see if the bonds, if bonds could bounce, I think will be good, but you didn't break it here. You're double bottom near the low, but you're working so hard to go up, and then any upside can literally be Raul'd in a second. I'm looking the Bank of America ship, ship uh, shares for a flip. I mean, hopefully by the end of uh, Powell and all of this, and depending on how we move, I'm, I'm assuming they'll be able to outperform, but... We will fly we will find out. Oh, serve. That thing's up forty percent. And then we got out of unseen. The Troika get the rug pull today. What was the other one? I think quote. That was the bio play. I bought 100 shares of that today too. 
Oh, watch out. Reds are creeping in. Oh, wait. We do get the budget, uh, the Biden budget, huh? I forgot about that. Yeah, McConnell says Biden budget full of items that won't see the light of day. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we got a bill. We're going to mandate, mandate, mandate. We're going to mandate. Everybody gets a $100 ice cream sandwich stimulus, huh? What's wrong with that? I don't, I don't, I mean, I should, I, I, the cream, the ice cream makes people happy, huh? And you know, happy, happy Americans build happy cows, and happy cows come from, from Wisconsin. Come on, I don't get what, what, what are the Democrats trying to stop me for, huh? You're gonna spread the, spread the joy of the Napolitan. Come on, Napoleon even had ice cream. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't we? No, seriously, I mean it. Come on, it's not, it's not hyperbole. It's, it's not, no, no joking around. The union, the union labor is going to understand what we're talking about. So come on. That's it. We need your vote today. You got to email your congressman. Say, hey, why the fuck do I have so many ads on YouTube? And get me my ice cream sandwich stimulus. Today. Now. I mean it. I really mean it. Sorry. 39.85.31. You have hit a new low, Chattadonia. That's it, bro. This is death. Death Enders, they gave you one more exit at the end of the speech. And then that's it. It's gone. Tomorrow's going to be a shit show. We still got an hour and a half, but I already don't like the looks of this. That means we're going to probably fill the 3980. And then if you have the same sort of pattern that we have all the way down here, it's going to go down to uh, 3960 potentially. And then, of course, Weight Watchers at 6 bucks now. The bull case here is that data comes in that doesn't look as hot and then fed future odds drop and then everybody gets relief on not pricing in as aggressively as they are right now. Biden voice beats Niger. Hey, wait, 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 call, I could call out the, mar the, mar the, mar the way the market's moving now. I could, I could give you the upper the updation. So listen, that's so S&P today. Jerome Powell came, came out. And he was uh, talking about uh, the, the, infl the inflammatory pressures going up. So that's why the, the stock market's like the body. And when you have inf inflammation, it's not good. So that's what happened. And he said, hey, if inflammation increases, I'm going to have to come in with more Tylenol. 50 basis points of Tylenol. And that, that's what happened today. So I, I got you on that one. Don't worry. I'll give you more updates here. As long as YouTube doesn't give you, give you an end. Uh, the, 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 they don't make your promotion, promotional product service placement. Yeah, this message is brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not. We're going to sue them. <laughs> what? I don't even know. Schumer wants info on Norfolk Southern regulatory actions. Dude, that GATX, that thing hasn't even moved. And then new low again, Chattadonia. All jokes aside, 3984. So you're breaking 398 on the SPY. You're about to. Twitter had 253 monetizable daily active users in Q4. Morgan Stanley TMT conference. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for the 10 year next. I think the dollar's scary because the yen, but yen kind of chilling out. But let's just see if bonds could come up. And there you go. Mm, another one. Another one. 3984.92. 3985 on the SPX. Where are the futures at? 3987. Still fighting. Apple holding some upgrade gains. Banks are coming back down. Apple's hitting a new low. We got to watch in the video too. Because if any of these leaders start giving up, maybe Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat already came down. And then Meta was one of the leaders in the morning too. But if those start to give, dude, Weight Watchers. I want them kicking myself. 
put it on the watch list, but damn, it was already up 40% in the morning. bonds the 10 year doesn't but the short term bonds do match what happened so that's what we got to wait for and just whatever happens with the longer see i don't like that though so that little bounce if the bonds start to flush i don't think that bounce i mean i think it's just going to do it every single move is already done uh earnings are pretty much done i mean we have like crowd strike today and a couple of others but for the most part i don't even want to look at ww oh man bro that thing's gapping The Weight Watcher news is they bought this company that gives prescriptions to uh, Ozempic. Intel wants $5 billion more in German subsidies for chip plant. That's coming out now. They said we want $5 billion. No, this week, this is just beginning. This sets the stage. So bonds a little lower. That bounce candle or that, I don't even, I don't even know if I could call it a bounce candle. That's, I don't know if that's going to last, but I'd watch here. I mean, and it's about 20 minutes off of power hour. So it's either we're going to continue more downside or we're going to flip a trend here. But I, I doubt it to the upside now. I think that, and then Weight Watchers are just rocketing up here. Tumultuous Tuesday. There's Jerome, bro, the event risk. He really brought it out. He brought it out, man. Bring him out, bring him out. It's hard to yell when that 50 basis points is on the high. Bring him out, bring him out. Ooh. Um, 3985 the low is still your tenth of a point away from a new low right now i don't know how it's still i think it's just this little candle right here 3987 on the futures we heard about the shared appreciation uh dpa's cal hfa isn't it where like they like they split the gains with the property so they like give you like a loan uh i think you told me about this earlier it was you were lending tips, isn't is that what it is? Where like you get a loan and then they like give you like low down payment or they give you like a subsidized mortgage loan, but then you share the profits on the house. Scott Gottlieb on CNBC about Weight Watchers. Interesting. Why you like, oh, uh, it's been around for a very long time, has a good history, uh, solid yield, uh, even though it's commercial real estate. Uh, the thing I like about O is that a majority of their purchases have occurred in the last like 20 years prior to this one. So I don't think, oh, in a weird way, I don't think they're as sensitive to interest rates uh, just because I feel like most of their loans are already at low levels uh, and they don't have to deal with it. I don't like the fact that it's commercial. Uh, but other than that, though, it's like it is best in class as far as REITs go. And they have a long standing history in Wall Street. 
Two-year Treasury yield rises to 5%, highest since 2007. I'm at an O at like 53 or $56. I got in really low. Pfizer, damn, 3.3? Did Pfizer lower their yield? Wasn't it? Oh, no, no, it's 4.07 now. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I read the wrong one. Uh, no, I'd wait to buy O. I mean, it's, damn, it's yielding 4.79 here, which is great. But we bought it at here. Like, so, yeah, we got in, like, 56 bucks. So, it's kind of in the middle. It didn't bounce as hard as a lot of other names. But I think, oh, you could be very, very patient on. I waited, like, two years to buy it. Musk says Twitter lowered cloud spending by 40%. And then that PTGX, that thing's up, like, 50% all day today. So, this is the level. Look, you got a big order above here now. New low. You're breaking it out. Dude, the slightest pressure is just knocking this thing. So watch out now because we kind of chilled out here for the last like 20, 30 minutes. And last time that happened and then we started flushing lows, you started hitting new low every couple of minutes. Now 39.83, three points away from filling the gap. And then uh, next level is uh, 39.70. And then good old 39.60 returns again after two days. Womp, womp, womp. Mm. Biden's FCC pick Gigi Sohn withdraws nomination. AAP 4.5. And then bonds slightly went lower, but they didn't react much. And I now I think market, is it catching up with the yen? No, the yen is uh, a little bit lower. Yeah, no mercy from Raul. I don't have target in the long term. I know they've been going through stuff. What's their yield at now? 2.6? I need more. I'd rather take a safer name, even though target I think will be around. And then a little little green shoot, 3982. It's just one of those days you're like so close to filling the gap. I think we might hit it. But then then again, two days ago, we were what, one point away from 39 or 40, 40, 80, and we sold off. Target 50 times better. I do like them. I like both, but I, I do like Walmart a little bit more than Target. But Target, I'm a big fan of. I shop at Target, so... You know, I can't hate on them too much, but 2.85 is not that good of a yield. If there's going to be like sub 3% yield, I'm probably going to grab something with healthcare. I'm thinking I'm I kind of have an idea but I think we could wait a little this so I have one idea that will change my plan compared to 3m
but we're going to see. 3M and Altria. Won't let me super chat you to Hayden. I love you either way. God bless you, Hannah. I haven't grabbed more 3M. No, it's only a dollar below where we bought it. So, I, like I said, like 100. I know 105 is going to be a level for them, but if it goes down to 100, we're going to uh, add a little bit more 3M. Apple and then Intel, they didn't react to that German news. Apple's still on the low. Low ticker is picking up again here. You just hit that low mini flush, mini bounce, and still in the gulag. And then PTG hex all day. Going long on Carvana. I mean, if you want to flip it, I think you can. But in the long term, I just don't know how I feel about Carvana. I don't know if that's a name. I mean, you might see it here in 10 years. But, I mean, it's definitely not my favorite. And there it is, another one, Chattadonia. So let's see, I think 39.80, and then the question is, do we actually, do we keep doing it? Where was it? I think it was like 39. This is how we played out uh, ahead of 4,000. So we don't want to see this at 39.80. If it does, we'll go straight down to 39.60 because you still have about an hour left, an hour and 12 minutes. So 12 more minutes till power hour, and then you're going to start power hour going back to 39.80. MJ ETF. Uh, you could. You'll get moves off of that, but just be careful. Remember, we played like MSOS a couple times on the weed stuff. JetBlue CEO Robbins comments in interview. He says they're confident winning Spirit merger trial. What's gap top? I mean, we gap to, gap from. We still haven't, technically, we haven't even filled the 4080 gap from uh, two weeks ago. And then now you're in between, and then you're about uh, one point away, two points away from filling uh, the gap from post Bostic, which I think you're going to hit at this point. I mean, this pressure has been nonstop here today, and you're going lower right now. 3M dumping a little bit, Apple coming down a little bit. Top tick Tuesdays, they happen, bro. They happen. There is a Pfizer. Apple's 199 price. Watch Apple, though, just to lead. That's the crazy part. Apple's still really not that down comparatively. You're just back to the Friday levels. If Apple was down to where it was at uh, on Bostic, you'd be at 145. So that's still a decent amount there. And we are slowly working its way up. You do have Tesla holding us up here a little bit. And you're like right into the low candle once again, 393082 or 3982.6. So that's another new low on that one minute candle. NEM, I haven't looked into it, but I mean, materials or energy, those aren't really my top picks. So if anything, I'd want to go more healthcare, blue chip oriented, but I, I like health. I'm a healthcare over energy guy, essentially. It's got dividend. It's just not my main play. Just energy. I mean, maybe we'll see. If, I mean, if we really get a big, you know, historical shift here and energy kind of comes back, 
rather than just like boom and bust uh, then maybe but other than that though it's not really my uh, it's not my favorite type of play I'll build that out for the nephew I do I think 3m is great I mean they still have that downside risk here a little lower dude three weight watchers at seven dollars my goodness Nine. I'm looking at some healthcare companies. We still got a couple of days. We'll see how they play out. But that can open up the door here for some of the long term plays. Yeah, 3M strong, not any growth. I think the yield, I think their dividend has gone up. But I mean, there's a lot of issues with uh, 3M. But that one is just stability. And then spy just slowly bleeding out again. You're into another level. 39.84.75, on the SPX. So get ready for it. 39.81. This is it. We fill the gap. You are now back to Thursday's close. Uh, that was literally after Bostic took you from 39.40 or pretty much 39.28 that day all the way up here. Now tomorrow you're going to get another test of the 200 day. Ay, 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 thirty nine eighty one forty seven. That's in this candle right here, too. Mm. Yeah, but three M, they've been increasing their dividend. And they're expected to, but you just have other risks with uh, the other stuff, the weight, the the Weight Watchers, the uh, the uh, trial with the earbuds. Thirty nine eighty one now, another low. Meta, Apple, all of your big tech is starting to go in down with it, or even three M down down to one oh seven flat almost. Chadonia, wow, it looks so far from the morning. This has been a slow ride of uh, everything else. It's been a slow ride down of just level Raul minute by minute. Yeah, AMD is now giving up. That's below where I sold out of it. I think a lot of this stuff that was up. So watch out now if any of those names, a lot of them that were barely green have turned red. And uh, remember, like we said, most of the names were red today on the day. You only had like 40 names that were holding up. So now there's only 29 names on the S&P that are green. Cesar! My man, baby. <laughs> he blessed you too, Nick. God bless you. I am still in Manu, yeah. 3980, 82. So you kind of filled the gap a little bit lower. But I don't know. Maybe you can. Maybe you could uh maybe you could balance it out. I don't know. Does that count? 
nope, it's clear the chart wants to go lower. 39.8325 on the futures. 39.8070, 39.8068. I think the actual low is just like 39.81. So no, I think you filled it now. And so now 39.70 soft level, but the danger zone is 39.60. You start getting at 39.60, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you will quickly be testing that 200-day moving average. So that would bring us back to like 393.15, 393.45 on the SPY. Mm. Yeah, still flushing. I think panic sets in tomorrow when everybody talks about this. That's why I'm saying everybody's digesting this because it's like, no way this is going to happen. But then it's still staying there. And now this is one of those days where the market reprices in front of us. And I think the market's behind it, but now it's like you're already kind of deep into it, and then we have to wait till tomorrow. But then uh, preliminary jobs data, jolts jobs openings, that can give us an idea. But other than that, though, it's either you flush 3,900 by non-farms or we bounce off of that again and then try to make our way up. 3,980. So the low is 3,980, 31 right here. And again, a, a little bit of a vertical bounce there. But we'll see if that lasts. And then what time is it? Two minutes till power hour. You might get 15 minutes of green, and then we spend 45 minutes selling off. Otherwise, we might get one of those uh, in the middle uh, in the middle dances. And then maybe 39.80 will be the low. Maktin. Isaiah Khabibi. I hope that one lasts. Otherwise, it'd be very, very hard. Spy bull trap started December 19th. In a weird way. In a very, very weird way. <laughs> I mean, you only went above. You went above here by five points. It's good, though. I think Powell likes it. I think they've burned a lot of time. Oh, add time? Damn, all right. I'm going to go to the bathroom then. So follow me on Instagram, at the trading fraternity. You might be getting an ad, so you don't hear it right now, but I love you. And I hope you know you're blessed and thank you for supporting the channel. So now if you don't like the video, uh, apparently your ad will make sure uh, that we get our support. Amen. 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 All right. Follow me on Instagram at the trading attorney. I'll be right back. Uh, look, everybody wants to know what he has to say. Obviously, this is one of the most important edge funds out there, one of the biggest market makers. Uh, what are we expecting out of him? I mean, we know he made this big move here. He's been very vocal about kind of broader economic conditions. What are you looking for? Yeah, I mean, I think people are really interested to what, about what he has to say about Miami, about the firms moving their headquarters there, what it could mean in terms of its footprint for real estate, um, what it could mean for the firm, and also, you know, any insights as to how he thinks about Citadel moving forward as you look at the investment strategy, where they see opportunity, where they see risk. I think those are things that would be particularly interesting, certainly, um, to people that follow the space. And he had a very good year last year, didn't he? In 2022, he made a lot of money, which speaks to his hedge funds performance. Absolutely. So he was up 38% in his hedge fund last year. It was one of the best performers. Um, and they made a lot of money based on, so this multi-strategy, multi-manager hedge fund. So what they do is they trade across a bunch of different asset classes. Um, but what really helped them especially was their equities business did well, their commodities business did well. Um, yeah. And it produced, you know, one of the, the strongest gains that they've seen. Um, and it meant a lot for him personally as well because it helped him gain um, personally take home about $4 billion last year alone. Sweet. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of his deputies, or rather former deputies. Todd Barker, you wrote a story about him, of Citadel mm -hmm. alum, starting his own fund, and yeah. there's already seems to be a lot of people throwing cash at him. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, people that leave Citadel and start mm. their own funds, many of them have raised billions of dollars for mm. their new vehicles, uh, for their new firms. Um, Todd Barker is one where um, he's launching this firm called Freestone Grove Partners. It's a hedge fund. It's um, expected sometime later this year. But people are saying that uh, the firm could be one of the bigger launches that we see this year. And this is a very difficult fundraising environment. It's not yeah. easy to oh, yeah. start a fund in general, but yeah. certainly these days. But coming out of Citadel, having that pedigree certainly has to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Right? 
it. He ran Surveyor, which is one of the biggest equity units. Does Ken Griffin then invest in these funds? He's not known for typically investing in uh, many of the people that have left him to, to launch other firms now. Mm. He said he don't fuck with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we did get uh, consumer credit. Came in very low. But remember, last time it came in high, we were really excited. Dude, that's a massive drop. How is the market going to take this? Dude, consumer credit is tweaking. You guys remember that a month ago, we were super hyped on it. We were hyped on this run up here. It came up and then now it's uh, it's dropped dramatically. I think consumer credit now is back to uh, February 2021 or 2020 levels now. Uh, 14.7 billion estimate was 25 billion. And then the prior was 11.6 and they revised it lower. I guess it was already on the decline. That one's going to be interesting because market could react to it. I think that's the one when pretty much when rate hike odds are in at 50, everybody spins that however they want. But I don't know how the market's going to take that. Well, it means less people use the credit. So either they paid down debt or they added less uh, in terms of uh, purchases, but still pretty low. which is arguably more bullish if they paid it down. But I know we, I think we had this talk same exact time. It came out pretty high or last time it was still lower, but it was just higher than expected. But this time people were expect that's for January numbers. So all of that hot data though, all of the hot data we've been getting was January, but that was in uh January or February, but you would think consumer credit would be higher. The daily's ugly. It's just looking like one of those up and down. I hate I hate this setup. I mean, again, this does not look pretty. I mean, just all when it's all said and done, if this next week and a half goes the way it's been going now with 50 basis points, we're going to be low. Uh, that's I hate to break it to you, but it just all it just all depends on these next sets of data. I'm telling you, even after today, you know, we already were expecting a crazy March. But after Powell today and now what this means for the jobs report and everything else. Uh, no, it's going to be crazy. It's now, I would say it's probably twice as volatile as I was expecting 24 hours ago. There was there was only one headline. People were saying some traders are pricing in March, uh, seventy five basis points, but it's not. Even, I think it's at like maybe ten percent odds. But sadly, uh, wait till it just shows up on the chart on one of these. But there is a, a future for it. But right now, it's borderline non-existent. Crowd expected to move nine percent. I could give you crowd or earnings preview if you're into that. Are you guys into crowd earnings preview? Y'all been good on likes and sadly they've been making you pay with ads. So can I charge for likes still? Is that still something I could do or I don't know if I'm allowed to. Uh, but Chad, like the video. I don't, I don't, I feel really awkward now because you guys have complained about so many ads today, but you know, we're going to have to uh, refer you to our supervisor, uh, Mr. Ugle. Ugle. His name is Mr. Ugle. Uh, but anyways, uh, CrowdStrike may see another quarter of contraction in net new annualized recurring revenue when it rec reports after the bell Tuesday as macro uncertainty continues to squeeze corporates. IT budgets, uh, still Piper Sandler analysts highlighted sustained appetite for products like those offered by the firm during the first quarter, which could suggest a positive earnings surprise and at least in guidance after cybersecurity peers like Palo Alto posted across the board beat. Revenue estimate is for $624 million. 
Uh, Jeffries has a price target, 120 hold. Crowd should exceed fiscal fourth quarter consensus of 45% year over year. Although expectations are raised given recent outperformance and material upside is unlikely due to a pressured environment. Management was adamant several times last quarter that while macro had intensified in 2023, cyber budgets would still grow given the mission criticality or criticality, I think that's the word. They expect calendar year 2023 to be a tough year and more reliant on expansions than new logos, but over the longer term, crowd can execute better than most. Uh, Piper Sandler, overweight, price target 170. Though we acknowledge headwinds remain uh, present for all, we are confident in crowd's positioning as a consolidator with strong presence in large enterprise. Additionally, our review of jobs data shows a slower hiring pace to the end of fiscal 23, signaling a potential shift towards more profitability. With crowd currently at a discount to software peers with a similar growth level and FCF profile, we see strong value here and reiterate our overweight rating. There's 41 buy targets, six holds, and zero sells. Average price target is 23% from the current price. Implied one-day move following earnings is 9.9. Adjusted EPS has beaten 12 of the last 12 quarters. Shares are down 28% in the past year, while the SPX is down 6%. Ta-da! There's crowd for you. So crowd, they seem bullish. They seem bullish comparing it to Palo Alto. Doesn't crowd still have a shit ton of premium, though? Interesting. GDP, we have trade balance tomorrow morning. But all that's going to matter tomorrow will be ADP employment change and then job jolts jobs openings. Those are going to be the two big things. And then Thursday, you get initial claims and then uh, challenger job cuts and then Friday, non-farms. And then that's the money. Uh, there is Jerome Powell tomorrow, but I mean, he's already said enough here today, but if he doubles down on it, it'll get worse. Uh, otherwise, I'm sure today will probably be the biggest day of Powell. But then again, I was not even expecting what we got here from Powell. But other than that, it's going to boil down to uh, the jobs because now any jobs numbers and leading into non-farms, it will make uh, Powell's comments more potent or less potent. FDA worked with Fresenius Medical Care, which modified silicone tubing. I don't know what that is. Citadel Griffin says U.S. economy, 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 economy was traumatic last year. State approves 1.3 billion military sale to Japan. Uh, Powell, he said that uh, rates, uh, he said Powell says inflationary pressures are higher. And he said ultimate rate peak will be likely higher than expected. And that the inflation pressures that we saw from January and February pretty much aren't going away, which a lot of people were hoping he would say it was just the blip. Oh, CYTK. Craziest thing would be if Powell says dovish stuff tomorrow and we end up right where we started. Oh my gosh, yeah. You're right. That actually would. If Powell just totally flips the script and brings the odds down again, that would be insane. I think Powell just does nothing tomorrow. But again, I'm uh, that's it. I'm checking out. I really did not expect Powell to say anything today. I thought Powell was. I thought it was going to be like October, maybe because it's the beginning of the year. He used that opportunity, but I remember October's meeting. He kind of was just nah, and then he's just now like I don't know why he would even uh why he would even hint towards any upside when technically you could just let the data do it for you. So maybe he's warning us on the data. That's the, that's the only expectation I could see. Voyager judge says no evidence Binance acting illegally. Voyager judge, be judge begins reading ruling on sale to Binance US. Griffin says we have the setup for a recession unfolding. No, it wasn't. The questions didn't move anything, actually. So the first reaction was within the first 11 minutes. Powell didn't even start speaking till like right here. 
And then the only pop was when he answered by saying the data can move a lot, but it was right off, right off the pre-written statements. It was just those two lines, just talking about inflationary pressures being higher and staying higher, and then saying that the ultimate rate peak would be higher than expected. Those two things were very, very hawkish in writing, and then it just kind of changes a little bit of what a lot of people were expecting. U.S. to lift COVID test requirements on travelers from China. That's kind of bullish, kind of, a little bit. Washington Post is posting that now. So that could be some bullish news, but I don't know if it'll outweigh the carnage you've dealt with today. Yeah, tomorrow's Canada rate decision and Australia decided to pause. We're moving up. This is our third biggest rally all day <laughs> from that last Powell remark. So we'll see here. You're going from 39.83 to 39.9. It's not even 10 points, dude. Sadly, this feels so much bigger than what it is. But, I mean, here it was 39.86 to 39.93, not even 10 points. So really anything above 10 points happened at 9.30. And then that news is hitting as breaking. It's circulating U.S. Senate uh, or U.S. set to lift COVID test mandate on travelers from China. So that's your positive news here uh, at the end of the day. And we have 45 minutes left, actually. So we're almost at the gulag. First 15 minutes of power hour have been good. What news? The only news that just came out was uh, the U.S. is going to uh, allow Chinese uh, passengers to come from China without a COVID test. That just came out right now, like in the last 120 seconds. We'll see, man. We'll see. It's not even 10 points. You haven't had a 10-point rally in over three hours. So I don't even know. And even then, even prior to that, this one was big, but nothing else has been big. I mean, if anything, it's just been slow downside. Like, it's not like you've had any, like, gigantic flushes. Like, that one was kind of big. But besides these two here, it's it's been more compounding little by little to the downside. Rita, Apple's hitting a new low, so even Apple didn't get any of that bounce. Weight Watcher still holding. SC's been killing it all day. Even Dick Sporting Goods, they're able to hold up here. And then NVIDIA kind of not dying with Apple, but Apple is. Tomorrow, Big Red. We run the risk of gapping down pretty big. Uh, that's kind of what happened last time we were at the level. And then we either gap up or down above the next level of support. But then it it's all going to depend on what we get. You do got a little bit of data, but another day of Powell. And then I think jobs data tomorrow will be the real kicker. I don't know if they still make big red gum. It's a great question. Tune in, missed you all today. Oh, it's been a great day, a wild day. Uh, the fun fact for today is that Fed futures are now pricing in 50 basis points as the base case for March 22nd. So welcome. And now, oh, 14, 18. I think you need to get up to like 400 just to look respectable today. 
I did play the banks. I, I added a Bank of America shares at the low. I added a hundred more. Uh, like ten cents lower than where the stock is at now. Now on one point four three, Nasdaq one point one kinda caught up to spy. And then Dow Jones is down one point five eight. Any good shows I'm watching? Not really. I caved. I ended up watching, uh, what's it called? Outer Banks. I watched the final season. I'm not done with it, but my girlfriend gets mad. She don't like it. She thinks the show is stupid, and then she thinks I'm just watching it because of that one white girl. And she's like, you're only watching it because of her. I'm like, nah, man, it's a good plot between the Pogues and the, and the what do they call them? honkies i don't <laughs> i don't know what they what they call the other side but was it pogues and kooks i think mm -hmm. kooks and i'm trying to explain i'm trying to explain I'm like it's decent it's I, I haven't been paying attention though i put it on in the background a little bit I haven't had any good shows lately, actually. Jobs data will be uh, 30 minutes before the bell or fifteen uh, hour 15 before for ADP employment. And then 30 minutes after the bell, we get Jolch jobs openings. The same actress was in Glass Onion. That was her? No, I don't think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell that to my girlfriend because she loves Glass Onion. It's hypocrites. Hypocrites. You grew up in Outer Banks. I live in Alaska now. How does it feel? Netflix made where you're from famous. And you're slightly moving up. 39.91. This is decent. Now you could actually say uh, you've had a 10-point move now. This is your first 10-point rally since 9.30. You're still below the 4,000. It looks decent. I mean, if anything, I'd say half of this was even some of that China news. So let's see. North Carolina. My mom keeps bringing up North Carolina. She said, I heard it is the cheapest coastal town in the United States. Why don't you buy houses in North Carolina? And I'm like, Mom, because it's North Carolina. I ain't been there in a while. I don't, I don't think I've ever been to North Carolina, actually. Fayetteville 910, son. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know why is it like, isn't like South Carolina super expensive and then North Carolina still not? I wonder what's the dip, like what's the difference between a North Carolina and a South Carolina? I figured they like, they 50% the same. I don't know. That's just me. South Carolina is cheaper? Really? I always thought North Carolina was more expensive. And I thought, uh, isn't like Charles, isn't like Charleston, like super bougie? Yeah. And like Hilton head, it has Hilton, Hilton. Very nice. Very, very nice. Hilton, you know, Hilton, it's like a Marriott. Very good. Very, very good. All right. 
10 points and then red. Look at Raul. The order comes in, and then Raul just like, nah, man. We should pull back right now. The stock market is like your friend who, like, you think is going to go out, and then he says no right when you're about to leave. He's like, nah, man, I'm good. I think I'm going to just, nah, 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 I'm down to go. Nah, I'll just stay in. All right, maybe, maybe we could, nah, never mind, never mind. All right, man, maybe, like, if we go out, like, 10, I'm down. Nah, never mind, I'm cool. No, 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 let's go, let's go. We'll do it, we'll do it. Nah, actually, never, you know, actually, nah, I, I don't think so. That's how today feels. That's me. It's okay. That's me too, Chad. That's me too. Don't worry. Let's stay in, save up for spy puts. Like, not, not bad. You know. Origin, Origin, we're going to wait a little bit, but uh, I think it's decent, but I'm not ready to buy it here for a while. Fidelity is down. That's what you get for four and a half percent on cash. No, I'm kidding. I did not hear that. I heard, uh, I'm surprised no one talked about it. Wasn't there like a building that collapsed in New York today? And then Griffin Citadel is shifting position on rates every several weeks. Yeah, I saw a Twitter post on a building. Yeah, I don't know. I only saw it on Twitter, but I didn't see any news on it. Yeah, uh, earlier, yeah, four injured in building collapse in lower Manhattan. Four constructions were injured when a building partly collapsed in lower Manhattan. Commercial building near 126 Lafayette in Soho collapsed during demolition. And then there was 14 dead cats found in Queens. New York PD and ASPCA are investigating animal cruelty. Okay, well, that's enough searching New York for the day. You said, did a train run into it? That's that's dark and funny at the same time. I don't, I don't know. And yeah, that's crazy. I mean, traveling call. No worries, Uncle Terry. Hopefully you didn't. I mean, today just Powell came in with the hammer a little bit unexpectedly. Rate hike odds are at uh, 50 basis point now, and then that's it. And now we've been slowly just selling off from there. And even then, this was our biggest rally of the day besides the last statement by Powell, which pretty much put it in terms of the data. And how much time? We got 45 minutes or 35 minutes left. Raul, Raul, uh, I don't know, a little, it's looking, it's looking precarious, we haven't had, uh, we haven't had big candles in a while, like any of these, like even that little flush there was so small, it was like in slow motion, but I mean, be on the lookout for any big candles, we'll see. Uh, the banks are doing a little bit better. Amazon's not down that much. Apple and Google are. Raul is not. Raul had a day off. After Thursday and Friday, he came back Monday and Tuesday. He, he was well rested. I think the volume was higher. 
I mean, volume did break out here. Volume has actually been very sporadic because we're already at 82 million, 30. It's going to be a hundred million day. So it'll be one of the higher days. But earlier in the day, it was weird. Like half of this sell off was on low volume. Uh, and then it really started to pick up there towards the end. For a while now, it's been about like what? Maybe a week of banks going down. They were doing very good, but the banks have been getting murdered alongside a bond. They haven't been too bad. I mean, here's XLF. It's actually been one of the best performers here, but as of late, they've kind of uh, either done nothing or sold off. And this is XLF out of, as a whole. A lot of individual banks kind of doing their own thing, like Bank of America. They've been down most of the last week and a half, but Citibank has been going up. So it's a mixed bag. Was that NVIDIA on the low? NVIDIA is flushing through now. Google's at the low of the day. Here is Apple. Oh, NVIDIA does still have meat on the bone. Yeah, I'm kind of down with that low key. I'm not going to lie to you. Because 238 was the level. You hit it and didn't go above it. Maybe, maybe, and they filed that offering and nobody reacted to it. Remember that shelf offering last week and not one person said anything. It was down and then the China news helped it go up. I'm kind of down when the video is short. Only problem is you're going to bottom ticket right now. Yeah, but NVIDIA is right at Thursday level. Mm. I'm down with it too. I am. Oh, add time. Shit. My bad. My bad. I should have warned y'all. Look at the chat in solidarity. It's good to see. It's good to see. We're glad you're here, Chad. We're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys got to pay your bill every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes. Mm hmm. This is the trap zone. Amen. No, the ad just started going crazy today. I think it's just totally YouTube. I've never seen it like this. We've already had this discussion probably once every 30 minutes now. So I'm sure uh, we'll get back to it. Tesla's dropping now. Chattadoni. I'm kind of down. Let's see. I hope we get a little pop. If we get any pop towards the end of the day, I'm down to short in a video. Otherwise, we'll wait. Am I still holding that NQ short? I guess we'll never know. That's it. I can just tell who watches the watch list now. That's it. I don't know. Y'all play me like... I think we just might have to make the watch list like a stream alerts only thing. Because I think we have a clear, you know, we have the watch list gang and then you got your stream gang. We might just, we, yeah, you got busted, bro. And you still owe me $2,000 because real estate did not crash 12 months ago. So now that I know you don't watch the watch list, I need my money. I have to collect. Mm-hmm. We're going we're gonna to have to. And then we're going to start running ads and then we're going to sell out. I'm going to go get a sponsorship from Weeble. Fuck yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man.
lurkers love the watch list. I know I love the lurkers. I know the uh, lurkers. We don't usually have any issues. The lurkers are in the game. That's why they don't ask me the the watch list questions. We have revealed the non-watcher. Uh, some people could be uh, rolling over. I mean, the new ES is going to dominate for a little bit, but it will happen soon. No. Accidentally. Big pop. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. Let's see. What are the spreads looking like? Oof, dude, it's still four points. So I don't think people are rolling over yet. That's a huge gap between the two. And then the futures, the longer dated futures moved a lot more today. But that's a fat gap between the, the futures. That's still three points. It's been like that. Maybe towards the end of this week, we'll see people move over. I mean, volume is still kind of active. 18,000 on the next NQ contract versus, what is that, M23? Still 18,000 in volume. A lot of volume today. I think it makes sense why. Because you got a way fatter effect on the future contracts like further out than this one just because of, uh, I think, the implications of 75 basis points. 3992. Yeah, that is working. It's That's your first, like, pop, pop that you've had in a while. Yeah, did someone say pop, pop? What did you say about Pop Pop? I was uh, a little bit about Corn Pop. I love Corn Pops and Frosted Flakes, but I'll tell you about Pop Pop. I was, I was just a little boy. I came to Wall Street. I said, hey, I don't even see a wall anywhere. What, 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 who's a wall? And he said, John Wall. And I said, for the Wizards? What do you mean, John Wall? Then he said, boom, ankle breaker, crossover. Then he did a little in and out and threw the legs, and then he didn't pass the ball. He pulled up from the three-point line. I said, wait a minute, John, John Wall don't even shoot like that. He said, it's not John Wall, it's Gilbert Arenas. He said, what? And I said, well, it made, it made no sense. Oh, Etsy's on the low. Oh, man, are people selling their crochets? I just ordered a handmade crochet off of Etsy. It looked good. It looked like a little unique flower. Oh, no, how are they, how are they, the, the, the stash is going to make it move to my, it's a, my, my, my mamba, the black mamba. I told you, we're going talking about basketball, but Etsy, they're dropping there now. I don't know, no, this might be hot. To, it might be a little hard to, 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 to tell you what's going on in the market like this, but still, <laughs> it's wild out there. My goodness. But anyways, the whole point is we need to bring Novak to Kovac to the NBA. Yeah, that's why we need everybody needs to vote. Okay, come on, I mean it. Seriously. Closing at 4,000 will keep things spicy. Oh, no. <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be a shit show no matter what. That's it. That's all. That's it. No matter where we close, tomorrow is going to be a shit show. All the way up until Friday. And then Friday will be the shittiest of shit shows. That's all. It's already there. That You are going to have 24 hours now of mother effers going to bed and thinking about 50 basis points while everybody goes back and forth talking about what's no landing, hard landing, soft landing, and they're like, is it really happening? It's not going to happen. It's going to happen. And then you're going to get the data, and then that's it. I don't know. What's, I mean, the day, it's, it's just going to be a shit show. You have the odds of you might melt up depending on how China plays out in the morning, then sell off right before the bell, then get bid up at cash open. Then 30 minutes, an hour later, Jerome Powell starts talking. Then the jobs report comes in. Whatever direction it comes in, it's going to have the, the, the chance to move us probably a solid half a percent 
uh, if not more. And then we're just going to play this game back and forth. And then if it ends up being bad, you're going to have a move towards the levels. Then you break the levels. Then the 200 day, if it bounces up, everyone's going to argue. Then the Fed futures are going to move. Then it's going to move up, but not hard enough. And then you're still going to have another data set the next day. I'm t it's going to be bad, bro. Yeah, here for the chat show. Uh, so I just get ready. I mean, I'm telling you, I wasn't expecting this today. Uh, I was expecting a way more neutral Powell. It came out with a hawkish tilt. And uh, just after today now, you know, adjusting my expectations, I already thought Friday was going to be the most important event. But now I think to, to the next two days, three days are going to be twice as volatile as anybody was expecting. I could guarantee you nobody in the market saw this one coming. Otherwise, the Fed futures wouldn't be like this. So this could always retreat, and that's what we're going to look out for. But when it's all said and done, everybody got caught on their on, on the offsides on this one today. Uh, no, I don't think there's any way, shape, or form. Uh, and there's no 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 discussion about it. Everybody was caught offsides today. Otherwise, the Fed futures would not have done that. And now with the Fed futures there, I don't even think everybody has processed it. And I think a lot of people are hoping that the data in the next two days brings it back to where it was. Because if it's not. Uh, don't underestimate, this could get worse. So you know how we've been talking about it could have been worse? Well, Chad, today could have been worse. Does anybody know why? This could still get worse. And now also it could get a lot better. So I'm not really, uh, again, I definitely after today, I feel more nervous and I feel more bearish than probably any other point in the last couple of weeks. However, I'm still borderline ag agnostic towards it because I do understand it can get a lot better really quickly, but it could also get a lot worse. And why? Yes, it will be the data, but there's something you, you've you dealt with it before. We've talked about it very briefly today, but there's one more thing that can happen that is, this is where it gets really worse, where it gets actually like significantly worse. And then now you really start talking about fear in the market. Let's see if they let's see if the Chad knows. What could get worse? So today could have got worse. It didn't get there. Today was bad, but it could have got worse. Not Volmageddon, not the dollar. That's all part of it. So I won't I won't rule that out, but there's something there. 50 basis points technically is already fully priced in. So if it's, as long as it stays here in the next coming days, that's the, that's the bullish side too, is that 50 could go out the window. We talked about it. It was a headline today. Yield curve's already shitted on, triple digits. There you go, Nikki. Yeah, bro, 75 basis points. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you have a shit ton of time between now and March 22nd. If they were willing to run this shit up from 10% to 70% in two weeks, with most of this happening in a day, if Friday is bad and then Tuesday is bad, there's nothing stopping this from going to 75 basis points, sadly, I do, which I think is ridiculous. Uh, but that is where, like, it could be worse. That's where it gets worse. That I could, I could clearly identify, and we've seen that happen before. I didn't have any news on Etsy when I looked. They are still dying down 1.8. So the whole idea is that, you know, just how quickly it went to 50, you got to realize what happens when this shit stops out at 99 or 100. It goes to the next set of odds. And then everybody is going to start talking about 75 basis points. And that's where I think it gets really bad. Uh, so that's why it's like today could have been worse. But that's where it gets worse, even though kind of the unforeseen kind of occurred today. I think this is going to put the Fed to a test, but... We'll see. Uh, but credibility, as long as they follow the Fed futures, they have some credibility. Because at, 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 when it's all said and done, the stock market is pricing in 75 basis points now. It happened quickly. But if that could hold up over the next two weeks and they do it, I mean, it's not as if the market was caught off balance, uh, depending on how the market reacts here in the next couple of days. But it's a very fine line between following Fed futures versus credibility of doing what they actually say. The Twitch wants 75. 
I'm still in disbelief. I don't know. This is the first time I've been like this in a while. I can relate now to some of y'all, though. I remember last year when the odds would go up, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, they're doing 50. And some of you would be like, no way they would do that. I, I feel you now. But thankfully, we have two weeks and three sets of data. But I get it now. Ken Griffin says, I would love to see Ron DeSantis run for president. Hmm. Oh, shit. It's 1245, dude. You only have 18 minutes left. Chattadonia, we're getting to the end. Uh, I do have meta shares, old ones. They're slightly down. This is the same move from September, which I'm terrified about. Because that's it. I mean, I'll just tell you now, chat. If this week does not, if this week plays out as worse as expected, you are just going to repeat what you've seen all last year. We're going to dump. I think we're going to get back to the 380s, 378, if not lower. If this, so if we talk in the next three weeks here, two weeks, if we have hot jobs, hot CPI, and then Powell comes in with 50 or 75, you're going to dump until Powell and then we'll bounce the day after Powell or so, maybe the week. And then we're going to just be in a whole new, uh, uh, a whole new area comparative to how we started the year. That's if everything goes wrong, which totally can happen now. But there's also now it gets to the point where things get so bad where you might be able to skirt in some sort of positivity. But that's not that that is my fear there, because I would have liked it to hold up a little bit better. The NQ is going to love it, but uh, it's definitely um, it's not pretty. There's only there's margin fees with buying shares, and that's about it, unless you buy an ETF. But most places are free commissions. So like all of my share trades on TD Ameritrade, they have no commissions. Tobacco down? I have no idea. Griffin says he doesn't agree with DeSantis on Disney overreach. OPEC opens environmental matters department. Uh, Zaza, ZQ. So slash ZQ, Fed futures, ZQ H23 is March. Uh, there's even like SR7 uh, for the SOFR rates. Uh, I don't care what happens. I mean, like, I got clapped here on this ES today, but even then I kind of view that as a non-event uh, just because I can make a lot more on the NQ. I got a lot of shares. I still have old shorts that are even coming back here, but I'm just going to ride with it. But uh, I don't really care what happens. I just want I want the conclusion. That, that's kind of how my trading is right now is like I think with I think if you have enough capital, you don't over leverage yourself. You can play both ways. You're going to be able to drop it off at various times. I mean, even then, I just sold out a couple of plays that I was down on for a while. And we've seen that happen over the last month or two. So we're just taking turns on that. But when it's all said and done, uh, I don't. I just want to skip to the conclusion. I need the final scene with Powell. What's going to happen? You know, when does the when do we get the yield curve normalized? When do they actually have a stable policy that doesn't fluctuate? Uh, you know, that's that's what we need to skip to. But in in the meantime. It's just either going to be about being patient for your long term or, you know, getting in on, on any of the upside and making sure you could uh, do stuff with that. Yeah, I'm going to ride the I'm going to ride the ES till the jobs report now. And then at that point, uh, if the jobs report's bad, I'll probably go positive on the NQ. And then now I'll have to deal with this asshole. They might just switch positions. But hopefully I should have cut it out today. I was talking about it. I had it. I could have cut it out with like eighteen hundred loss. I had it, and I was going to do it, and then I was like, ah, let, let's wait till it gets up, and then, then I got robbed.
Mm -hmm. It's called the click remote. Yeah. Well, we just and it just like it's like pretty much just don't get too caught up. I mean, it's always a good story. Uh, and, you know, there's different scenes, but just don't get too caught up thinking that this isn't going to have, you know, this we're not even near the conclusion. That's all like that's I mean, we had a good discussion today talking about the yield curve that hit triple digits today. Uh, and that's where uh, I'm kind of breaking that down there where it's just like, you know, we brought that up eight months ago and now it's almost 12 to 18 months since the first yield curve inversion. And, you know, that's going to create its own little outline there more or less. And then we're coming down here, man. Three minutes till 10 minute rigged and you are running into the lows. Oh, man. So even that second bounce got wiped. Okay, I did it. 50 shares short of NVIDIA, 233.62. I think easy $5 of risk back to 238. I took it. 233.62. Oh, Etsy's at the Morgan Stanley conference. Oh, is NVIDIA X dividend tomorrow? No. Oh, no, it's today. Whew, so you're good. We don't have to pay for that. Griffin trying to negotiate a chat GBT license for Citadel. I shorted NVIDIA here at the low. That's the only part I don't like about it being a schmuck at the bottom, but I think over the next couple of days, I wouldn't mind holding this. I think it has a good risk to reward either way, unless it gets squeezed. Uh, 10 minute rigged. Coming in. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, all right. The volumes actually was higher a little bit ago, slightly pointing down. And you're still like, what? Another eight points from the low six points now. I don't know. Tesla. No, Altria. I want a little bit lower on there. So there's the video with the candle too. Tesla as well. Watch Apple. Are you sure you could get equity gain in Divi? Yeah, you just sell out the day, like, you sell out right the day before X dividend. So X dividend goes in, you have to buy two days ahead. If you sell one day before X dividend, you should get the dividend still. But if not, you'll just get the equity gain, which should be decent. Yeah, market on close, 1.8 billion to the sell side. Well, let's see. Etsy's even on the low. You're six points away. I mean, we've moved up. That was your biggest move up. The down points have been a lot faster. So we're going to find out. I still have the EPV. I don't know where that's at right now. Uh, it's actually up a decent amount today. We recovered the loss, but still actually not too hot. 
But yeah, I'm still in that one. And then 10 minute rig, slight point and a half down. Yeah, closing into low. Well, last time we were closing into lows was last week. I mean, you would kind of like, or that one little, f just one minute flush there, but we'll see. But this, either way, 39.80, I mean, the chances of gapping down to 39.60 are very high for tomorrow. I would put that on the table. It just depends. We got to see the China session now. And then if the global currencies keep tweaking off of today. Uh, UUP, I kind of want to, but it's just hard to play. UUP doesn't really have, like, I even want I was hoping I could get a butterfly or something. No, I'm still in the EBS. We're riding that one through. EFLO. It's a good cash one. Oh, this one's just floating rates. It's very similar. But this one is just more variable rates. So I think you could get a little bit more, but then you could also get a little bit less. Uh, but it's not bad. As long as it's just uh, short term. That's what you got to make sure of. I like MO better than uh, BTO or even Philip Morris. Nah, UUP is going to be difficult because it's cra in a weird way. The irony about playing UUP is holding your dollar. That's the funniest part about it. So, like, you got to realize, like, what we're doing with Bill is benefiting off of the dollar. That's that's what it comes down to. Holding your cash has been the best trade so far of this year in a very weird way. Because now if you compare it for this last three months, if you bought a three-month bond, you would have gotten 4.5% borderline made the same amount on the market but with zero risk towards it and then now anything to the downside so I, I think you, if we could get a leverage play on the dollar it could be good but at that point if you really want to go long on the dollar just go short on the yen if you really really want to look at it so uh but for the most part holding cash is a good enough uup play for now Datadog or DraftKing? No. I have DraftKing in the long term. So there's NVIDIA a little bit lower. One more minute or 20 seconds until the final five, Chatadonia. So get ready. Get ready. And here it is. Oh, big buy. Big buy for the final five. People love to talk about the money they made. Nobody want to talk about the money they say. What song is that? That's Juice World. In future. I love that song. Let's go, 10% Alex. <laughs> hey, man. That's on my workout playlist. That song's fire. It's called Realer and Realer. Juice World in future. Just go look it up. Go look it up. Amazon. Amazon was green earlier in the day. Let's see. Tesla. Apple got a pop. A lot of volume came in there. Tesla's flushing. NVIDIA's flushing. We already got a dollar share on that one, so that was nice. Dude, we're about to close at 70% odds, dude. That's the craziest. That's the craziest, dog. That's it, because it's not... Remember, anytime we've shot up like this, it usually goes down by the end of the day, and it's not. So, wow, we have a lot of digestion between now and tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. That's a good song, man. It's a good song. Oh, man. Snitching strong. I know. Maybe he is, honestly. I'm very nervous towards that, but in a weird way, maybe this is Powell's way of letting us know. CPI and jobs are about to be super hot. But we'll see. Let's just get a stupid pop. Let me get out of this. I'm going to close that other one. Should have done it early in the morning. Now I got to pay the bill. I'm not going to move out anything today. And then we wait. 
uh, you have like one or two days to maybe get a bounce. Otherwise, if this continues, you're going to see the market reprice because that's it. Just what happened. The bonds have all repriced today. So if anything keeps continuing, I mean, the, the market has to catch up. The market is the only thing that is technically uh, not repriced to the same element as bonds or anything of that nature, even the damn dollar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're making our final approach as we make our final approach. You guys are holding on to any bags. Uh, please stow them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through the aisles with a trash bag if you'd like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal in the description, that's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m., 6.10 out of sunny San Diego, California. As we make this final approach into San Diego International Airport, it's about 58 degrees and sunny. Uh, looking like a good day, uh, unless you got an ad, and you're probably going to get one here in about a minute, so be cautious of that. But other than that, pal, destroyed the market with one fatal swoop. We are no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required, but we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out. As always, we appreciate your guys' business. If you're interested in your Cole Rapid Awards program card, please flag down your flight attendant, and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the Colt, and hopefully have a wonderful evening. Okay, get ready. Your ad is coming up. Your ad is coming up, and it's time to bring it home. Oh, no, we're landing. They said the stock market wasn't landing, but we're landing. Oh, we're landing, bro. Oh, here it is. You better bring it home, Chattadonia. You don't have much time left. You better bring it home and get ready for tomorrow. It was already crazy today. One minute. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've made it through a surpriser. Rate hike odds are going through the roof. The volatility for jobs report has just increased tenfold. So you better wrap it up and bring it home. Tomorrow's going to be crazy. Then the next day after that. So, Chad, you got a finalizer play. You got CrowdStrike earnings after hours. That's about it. But this is the final moment. You got to bring it home right here. 20 seconds remaining. 20 seconds remaining. What are you going to do, baby? Bring it home. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Ding, 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 ding,
Thank you for being here, Chad. Oh, 3.2 on the lot. Hit them with the horn, baby. Let's go. <laughs> God bless you, and That's so sad. I got that many likes with that many ads today. So I, I hope tomorrow's not like that with the ads. We'll see. But even then, man, thank you for sitting through today. Thank you for watching the ad. Thank you for being here. But, you know, really, my big thanks goes for everybody out there, man. I hope I made the most of your time, especially the people who contributed and have made this a great experience every day and have really been a part of the community, man. God bless you and thank you all. Thank you for all of your time. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I hope you were able to learn some stuff today. But God bless you and thank you. And we love you, baby. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. That's it, man. That's it. That's the day, bro. That's the day. But, Chad, that is the day. I love you all. God bless you guys, and thank you once again. Check out all the links. First link for the Scream Alerts Boot Camp and Real Estate Course. Second link for the Nightly Watchlist and Main Channel. Y'all ain't even watch it, bro. Y'all asking me questions. Y'all ain't even watch it. It might be a members-only watch list. I don't know. So just make sure you're subscribed. This might be your last opportunity All right, to get the watch list. You know what I'm saying? It might be the last opportunity. So I say you better be on there. Second link, nightly watch list and main channel. Third link for the membership badge. Fourth link for the merch, ladies and gentlemen. Check out all the other new channels out there. Cold Real Estate, Cold Cars, Cold Music. You got Cold Real Estate tomorrow. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. It's the private one. Don't fall for the scams, okay? That's it. Don't fall for any of the scams. We love you. God bless you. That's it. You'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. But check it out there, how option pricing works, 1,000% gainers. Great option tutorial. It is timeless. It'll still teach you a lot about the game. And then how we set up our long-term portfolios, baby. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> amen. Shout out the long-term. It's looking beautiful. And even if you got the cash and covered calls, you ready to go, baby. You ready to go in, in the game. So check that one out there. And then finally, the prayer request, wah, baby. Amen. 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 Amen, Chad. So fill it out. Me and my mom pray for y'all. This is what we believe in, man. If it can't flow through you, it won't flow to you. I'm praying for every single one of you out there, man. I really hope that you catch a prayer. I hope that you can send me a prayer as well if you ever want to do anything for me. Uh, but this, this is something we do, man. And we believe in it, and it goes a long way. And thank you for praying for me too, man. I, I, I had to let some of the chads know, man. Y'all prayer requests have been working. I've been praying for all of y'all. I've been rooting for all of y'all as well too. But same thing goes both ways, man. So thank you if you have been praying for me and you've been looking out me in your thoughts and prayers. I really appreciate it, man. So I could always use another one, but God bless you if you have. And I'm praying for y'all too, baby. So let's get it. God bless you. But Chad, that's the day. That is the day, man. That is the day. That is the day. I got to see. I don't know. We got some time. We got a little bit of time. I'm going to see. Let me play you some uncle. Uh, and then that's the day, though, Chad. You better be here tomorrow. You better be here on Friday. Uh, you better be there on the watch list. We're going to see. I don't know. Depending on the watch list tonight and how it performs, maybe we do make some changes. Maybe. Maybe. That's it. Maybe I, I'm a oh, crowd strike earnings. Oh, yes. They were feeling bullish on it. They were feeling bullish. Where is crowd strike? Stitch Fix had earnings, too. Oh, that's a big one, 4%. Crowd, uh, they beat revenue by 10 million. EPS came in four cents above. They see 2024 revenue. They guided slightly higher. So we're going to see how that one plays out. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Salute to Battleborn for the membership. Yeah, shout out J2 in the, tw in the Twitch. Everybody who contributed. Edgar Caesar as well today, too. I know Jake from State Farm. So in love, man. God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen, 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 amen. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to be right back here. Give me a second. God bless you. There's CrowdStrike. They beat. They barely beat and barely guided up, but people are liking it there. People are liking it. Yeah. I'll be RB. Please hold. Go music. Yeah. Been in your bed you bullish, but baby, I'm not from Chicago. Heard me talking about Ivy and dripping in the bag. They thought that I came from the hospital. No, I just came back from trading. Chest to the sun, no vacations. I'm really not trying to be flagrant when I tell you that most of my calls will be naked. Funny when I make a bad play, I get a standing ovation. It's like I'm addicted to antibiotics to try to get rid of this clap. But fuck it, I always come back in the AM to the GG. What's that stand for? I 
I am not a drug dealer, I'm a landlord. I'm a tenant in the roof. That Mercedes Benz don't need one. I went from Bailey to Bel Air, from the slums to the field to the top of the hill to a street where you can't park a car without a parking pass. I'm just trying to chill with my boys in the island off the coast, bar hopping like a Alcatraz. Watch you make moves like a salsa class. Plus, I got so many bars like the one minute chart, I already know you can't handle it. You ain't making moves, you a mannequin. We got that flame, that candlestick. They ain't got that flame. Tell me it's a cult, not a game. Walk through the mud and the rain, just bring a little hope to the people in pain. I don't want lies, I want honesty. Negative vibes bother me. Stay up on your grind until you make it out of poverty. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get in my bag on heavy. I'm zoom, zoom, zoom to Fetty. My pockets look full, not empty. You loaded, I'm loaded. We never gon' fold, you know it. That's fast right there, go quote it. It's coke, 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 we go it. Different level, it's level. I'm told, they watching, we popping like options. You know, it's real, it's really real, like Philo time. Cause you can't help but make a meal if your people blind Restless, cause I've been around it, I just, I just want the lessons Cooking up, cooking up, like I'm making breakfast Boy, I'm eating good, but you know I had to bless it Looked inside the mirror, told yeah. my demons, hit the exit mm. That was Benny, that was level, fuck the demons, fuck the devil Throw the pebble, be successful, you can't tell me, code ain't special I got rich, I made a stencil, like a chair, it's really simple The framework is in the lecture Ay. Like curry on the chain, my brother, you know what? I know you know the name. You ain't never seen my face, probably watch us in the game. Did it with a couple plays, let me kick a little lesson. You ain't never gonna chase. What's yours? You always get what I'm really trying to say. Longer that you want the stock, more that it's getting safe. You like to say, I ain't trying to make you stay. Hey, I'm hitting plays, I'm hitting waste. Your portfolio all day, smiles filled with mostly grace. Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. You probably know the names. You probably thought that you should wait, then win and bought a course to trade. Benny, get some clothes and buy the clothes this shit and Clap them if they talking on some hopeless shit Cause I've been there and going back I told y'all that I'm focusing I know they getting mad The news is fair as well as motivated <laughs> Let's go and a shout out to the vets Hit the players, then we send it in the jets Don't be shy, you can send a prayer request And the list got everything you missed <laughs> Love y'all baby It's a cup 2020 Talk to me in 2030. <laughs> you know what it is, baby. Cold music 2020. We coming. Watch out on the radar. Tell them I just want the Lexus. We out here making moves, baby. Let's go. Mm. Oh, be small. So let me eat. Chad. Chattadonia, like that. Tell the people that Chattadonia is back. Sorry, I needed my E40 for that. Chad, I love this. It's Philo time. It's Philo time, man. God bless the Chad, bro. Thank you, too. You know that? Seriously, I, it sucks that I tell you thank you every day because I don't ever want it to lose uh, any of its meaning. But, you know, I, I really think that if you're here at Philo time, man, God bless you all. And for real, man, thank you guys for just being a, a solid ass group of homies that I could actually share things with and that I could talk to, man, you know, and just overall, man, just never being like weird. Uh, like, you know, some of y'all switch up and y'all act hella weird at times. And sometimes, you know, you talk about Philo and then people try to use Philo against you at a different time when it's not Philo. You know what I'm saying? So like for real, though, just God bless you and thank you, man. I'm glad that we actually have people who look forward to this moment. Uh, and it is quite the quite the moment, you know, because it's like I get to just like think I, I, I kind of like it after hours. Because it's like, I, I be thinking all these crazy things all the damn time, bro. So it's good because we get to just like go through the end of the day. And then, boom, I'm going to hit you with something, okay? I'm going to hit you with something, okay? I got I got it for you, though. But, Chad, for real, God bless you all. Thank you again. And, you know, just shout out to the Chads, man. And I, I really hope, uh, you know, I, I'm praying for all of you, man. I hope all of us can continue to be enriched in many ways and focus on, on growing in many ways. While at the same time, too, being a... Uh, accepting of the journey and destiny that we all have and a being accepting of how everything takes us through twists and turns to like actually get something real out of it you know what I'm saying because uh, that's the best thing man I don't know because if you're here this far uh, I think the number one thing I could say is that it's real uh, and I'm not talking about me as an individual I'm not talking about you I'm not talking about keeping it real I'm talking about it's real 
in the sense that you've seen everything and you've got to go through ups and downs. You've got to have good moments and you've got to feel like what it what it feels like when it's good. You've got to see it turn around. You've got to feel it when it goes bad. You've got to, to feel it when you make a comeback. You've got to do so many things and go through all of it. And I'm like, that's real. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, you're going to learn this and get something. No, it's like you got a real experience out of it. You're getting real on both ends of the coin. So I think it's a blessing, man. And I, I hope you guys never forget that. Uh, Cause like I'm saying, man, uh, the life in, uh, you know, if, if what we are given is what we are given, that is the will, my friend. But what I'm going to tell you today is a little weird. You know that what I'm going to tell you today is a little weird. Okay. Cause it's kind of a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a little bit of a remix on a philo I've given you in the past. Okay. And some of you may like this. Some of you won't. Are you ready? I would always tell you guys. Go with what you know and not what you feel. Does that sound familiar? I think Uncle said it. He says, it's more about what you it's not about what you see, yeah, it's more about what you know. That sound familiar? Now, I still believe that is very important. And honestly, I think uh, you know, dealing with life and dealing with money and finances, uh, that's a very important lesson for real. Uh like what you know is always always more important than what you feel. But I got a I got a message for you today, and I don't know who this applies to. I do know it uh it it, it applies to me because this kind of uh stuck out to me and it had me thinking. And I heard something. I, I heard a phrase. It was a very simple phrase, but it made me uh, scratch my head a little bit. Are you ready? Are you ready for that phase, bro? Or phase phrase? Here's what I came to tell you, Chad. Thinking and feeling. They are not senses. Y'all don't feel me, Chad. Y'all don't feel me. You don't even know what I'm about to tell you. I'm clapping for that. Very simple. Chad, both your feelings and your thinking are not senses. It's a trip, actually, if you think about it. No, no, no. Think about it. What are your senses? Why did God give you what you have? You have a nose, you got ears, you got an eye, you have fingers, right? You have nerves. Those are senses. You, you sense certain things. Take a deep breath in right now. Tell me what you smell. Some of you, it's your body odor. Some of you, it's a candle in the room or whatever else you got going on there. Maybe it's food being cooked. That smell. What do you see? That's another sense. You see the screen right now. Guess what? Thank God you have senses. You know why? Because you could hear me right now. Oh, isn't that weird? You see a screen, but you listen to my voice. Trippy. Trippy. Mm. But I thought this was in interesting. I don't know. Have I ever told you? I could give you a whole nother philo on this one. Did I ever tell you uh, in college? I had a, I had a, I wrote, I wrote an essay and it was a crazy ass essay because it was talking about a itch. You guys know like an itch, you, you know, when you get like a bug bite and you scratch like an itch. You guys know what an itch is, right? Or like, I don't know, maybe you roll in grass and you get all itchy. You know what I'm talking about? An itch. So guess what? This is part of the paradox. Do you realize that itch is one of the trippiest things in the human body? It's a trip. Because what is an itch? <laughs> you can't really define an itch. It's not a sense. So, you know, touch, smell, feel, see, it's not a, it's not a sense. They call it, uh, itch is very phantom like. I don't know. It's weird. I, I don't know. I wrote, I, I remember this was one of my a great concept in college. I remember I first heard it and I was tripping out. I wrote a whole thing on it just because it's the whole idea that an itch is kind of its own sense and feeling, but it's not. It is like a touch, but not really. <laughs> You touch something, you feel it. Uh, itch is very, it's a sensation, right? It's very weird. So why I'm bringing this up here, because I think senses are important. And I want, I hope this can make you more well-rounded. I hope you don't get too emotional. I hope you do build up your intellectual capability uh, and know how to go with what you know and not what you feel. But there is always going to be a limit to everything, right? So like I've told you, thinking and feelings are not senses. So, Chad, do you know what I'm here to tell you, man? <laughs> I'm 
my simple message for the day is very simple. I'm telling you to use your senses. And I'm, I really want two things. I want two things I want you to pay attention towards out of your senses. I want you to see and I want you to hear. And like I said, I don't know who this applies to. And I don't even know how it applies to me. I do because all I know is after thinking about this, I was like, wow, I want to see more. And I want to listen more. And this is really getting me along the lines of logic where there is a lot to see and a lot to hear, but just don't underestimate. What you know it will take you a long way. What you know, controlling your feelings will take you a long way. But you also have to be able to see and hear. And I hope you could use your senses more. And it reminds me of the verse of the day yesterday. I don't know, was that the verse or did I just read that on my own? I was reading 1 Corinthians. I think it was the next one. It was talking about, it said it don't matter. You could be have the gift of prophecy. You could have this. You could have that. You could be the greatest at this. You could do this. But without love, all of it is meaningless. Oh, man. Oh, man. So that's what I'm saying. You could have knowledge. You could control your emotions. But are you neglecting the other senses? And are you picking up on what is in front of you? Are you listening to the signals there? Hopefully you're not listening too close and making everything a signal. That's how tinfoil comes about. Hopefully you're seeing what's in front of you. You know, that's one of my biggest fears. You know that? I hate it because I'm a stubborn ass individual and I hate it because I tell God, I say, God, I see what you do sometimes. And I, ho I hope I listen before you got to crack down on me. Y'all, y'all don't feel me. Fuck out of here. Because that's like seeing, you know what I'm saying? It's like I see the iceberg, but sometimes I don't react until the iceberg has already cracked me. Oh, they don't feel me. Somebody feel me in here. Somebody's like, damn, Josh, facts. And some of you are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh, you liar. So, Chad, I think it's pretty exciting, man. This is definitely should not condemn you in any way. I don't know. I hope it motivates you as much as it motivates me because for real, man, it's just like use your senses a little bit, okay? Make sure you're listening. Make sure you're seeing out there. Be in the game and pay attention, but remember, thinking and feeling are not senses and just it goes down to the logic. We have these senses for a reason, so make sure we're using them. And remember, you got to stay well balanced. That's another thing because that's what I'm telling you. There's a lot. This is like one of those little babushka dolls where you just pull out another doll and another doll because the concept here goes crazy. It has me thinking about a lot and it's thinking about how to be well rounded and the sp stuff we could be missing out on and what we're not seeing. And I'm telling you, I could go down the list, but I think it's very, very simple here, man. As we move forward, I hope you watch your habits, right? And I hope you see what's in front of you. I hope you listen to what's in front of you. I hope you listen to good advice while it's there. Uh, I hope you don't listen to the bad advice while it's there. And I hope you find this balance. But overall, man, just use your senses and make sure you're listening and make sure you're looking, okay? Amen? Amen, Chad. Take that one to the bank. That is your philosophy, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Amen. 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 Amen, baby. Chattadonia, but that's your feel. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get excited. I hope it I hope it I hope it re enchants you. I hope I you know that's it. I hope we could get maybe we get the re enchantment feel back on. Cause I just I don't know. I hope a, a new gaze, a new way to look, a new way to listen. I I hope it gets you excited. So cause I I hope it helps you realize maybe there's more to the world than you see right now. And maybe in the environment that you're in, maybe there's a lot more. You were just looking in a different way. Or maybe you were just listening to the wrong person. Or maybe you were just listening. They're all, oh, come on, man. <laughs> amen. Amen. I hope they feel me. So, Chad, that is the philo. That is the day. Go read the books, Richest Man of Babylon, Proverbs, New Living Translation, and The Strangest Secret in the World in Chattadonia. I love all of you. Thank you guys again for being here. And just don't ever forget why we're here. And while we're in it for the long haul, God willing, while we keep going and while we got to have love on top of everything. But that faith, hope, love ain't never going out of style. And the greatest of all of them is love, baby. Why? Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory. And through the grace of God alone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh
So, Chad, I love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Get ready for the shit show, bro. Get ready for it all. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I don't have the earnings on sound. I think it's good. We'll find out. Either way, you'll get it on the watch list. You better be there on the watch list. That's it. You better be there. I love you. God bless you. Amen. And, Chad, I'm out. Peace out. Goodbye. So tell me what you want. I want to build back better. <laughs>